the simple act of running is the purest expression of movement a time to calm the mind but energize the soul this morning uh, from uh, Cape Town in South Africa, 16 degrees Celsius. There's a slight wind, 18 kilometers per hour, and they say that there's no chance of rain today, which is a welcome news for anybody that remembers the uh, 2012 race. And if the weather stays like it was yesterday when I was running my first 56, we could see a course record being broken. This course record for both the men and women in 2014 is worth an incentive of 1 million grand. A very good morning and welcome to the live broadcast of the 2014 Old Mutual Two Oceans Marathon. My name is Valen Kirby and it's great to have you in our company as we bring you everything that you want to see about the race up until 11 o'clock right here on SABC2. Now Cape Town is the design capital of the world. And on that note, the theme for 2014 of the two oceans is designed to run. Of course, our bodies are the perfect piece of engineering for performance. And today, 27,000 people will be taking on the voyage between the Atlantic and the Indian Ocean. Now, that number is split between two races. The half marathon, there's 16,000 people that will be taking part. And it is a record field in the ultra, the 56-kilometer event. Over 11,300 people will be taking part in the race. You can also take part in the race by getting involved uh, with us via social media. Use the hashtag on Twitter, OMTOM, O-M-T-O-M, to send any of your messages that you would like to about the old Mutual Two Oceans Marathon. And then, of course, what we've done this year is also introduced Instagram. So you can use exactly the same hashtag, hashtag OMTOM, and then we can also be bringing up those pictures. We're going to be getting into that. But let me introduce my uh, two a studio guest. They're part of our world-class commentary team, a man that's been commentating road running for almost three decades now, Ian Laxon, and a man that's got two gold medals here at uh, the Two Oceans, Donovan Wright. Gentlemen, what a fantastic morning it is, and of course, we are crossing things that we could see a record today. What a wonderful day. This is the most beautiful marathon. We love coming here every year. And, of course, the added thing this year, we're going to be talking all morning about this record. And it's, it's, it was announced last year. And ever since then, the runners out there have been thinking, can we do it, can we not do it? The women, the men, one million rand for the, for the winner if he breaks or she breaks the, world, uh, the, the, the course record. So that's something we're going to look forward to. Lots of attention. But, of course, the weather, Donovan, is going to be a big factor. Yeah, Ian, we're going to be here in the cup. And as we look at the day that Thompson won, the record was held up at 3.0344. was the ideal weather. And for the day, it means that these runners have to be a bit more to get the weather to be able to you speak about the weather, Donovan, and that was something that the defending champion, David Gatebe, said throughout yesterday's press conference when he was asked about whether he was going for the record and whether he was going for the win. He said it all came down to what the weather conditions are like because last year it was very, very windy. Let's take a look at the marks that our runners are going to be going for if they want to be winning that one million rand incentive for breaking a course record. Of course, they've been standing since the 80s. The men's record is that of Thompson Magawana, a 3.03 and first Panamava's uh, mark it set in 1989, a 3.30.36, which is a fantastic run from Firth. But Ian, you were there watching Thompson's run. You remember it 
very clearly in 1988. I do. In those days, we had mobile commentary. So I was sitting on the back of a motorbike, and I was with him literally from the gun to the, to the tape at the end. And it was the most remarkable run, because Megawana in those days was, was completely without fear on the way he broke the world 50K record. And he got further and further and further ahead. And by halfway, he was you could hardly see the second people. He, f he charged up Constantia Neck. And I remember going over the top of the neck. He, he did a windmill th with his arms. They were, they were, he had so much energy, and he charged all the way down. And it's not surprising that that record still stands today with people like, like Marco Mamba and Georgie and all those guys. They haven't even got close. But Ian, I must have known that the vorige record is by Brookside um, geëindigd. En wat een groot verschil maakt. Wat denk je is die verschil in tijd? Well, let's just, what happened at Brookside was the old Finnish venue. And Brookside, if you know Cape Town, is about a much lower altitude than where we are at UCT. Uh, you know, maybe 50, 100 meters lower. So when they ran down the last four or five kilometers, it was pretty much downhill all the way to Brookside. Now they make a left turn and they come up the M3 freeway. So the altitude is a little bit higher. So it does make it more difficult. Hard to tell. I would say maybe worth a minute, Donovan. Yeah. Excellent. A minute. Yeah. Which, which is quite a bit when you're thinking about it, and it's quite a lot, w the pace per kilometre that you're going to have to set over 56 in order to break Especially this Especially at the end. Especially at the end, yeah, absolutely right, because the second half of the race, that's where it's all happening. You almost have to take the Two Oceans Marathon tactically by looking at it as two different races, what you're going to do in the first half and then what you're going to do in the second half. We've been chatting a little bit about that one million round incentive and what it's going to take from the runners to actually be able to break that and if we'll be able to see that being broken today. But then, of course, on top of that, there's prize money for the first, second, right up until the tenth runner that crosses the finish line here at UCT. First prize worth 250,000 rand. Donovan, I'm pretty sure you would have liked to have seen that when you were running. <laughs> Er is nog aansporingsprijzen van die persoonlijke borden van die atleet. Dus so, voor die algemeen ten atleet wat wen vandag in een recordtijd met 1,5 miljoen rand wegloop. That's, that's one thing that we don't often see is the fact that a lot of our elite guys are running for clubs and the clubs have similar incentives often what the clubs do is that they'll match whatever prize money the runner brings. You know, those, those incentives are, 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 are contractual and secret, so we don't really know what they are. But without a question, this is the most valuable prize in South African athletics, period. You know, you can take any road race, any track race. This is the, the most valuable prize, provided they get the record. Provided they get the record. What are they going to have to do in order to get the record? How are they going to have to go through halfway? The men. Let's, let's focus on the men. Well, if you look at the men, we've done some mathematics. And you need to to give them a little bit of a fade factor in the second half. Firstly, because you get tired, and secondly, because the second half is much more difficult. So I work out that they need to break 90 minutes for halfway. They need to get there under 90 minutes. Would you agree with that, Donovan? Yeah, uh, as I look at my own job, we have 66, 67 years old by half path, and then under 90 minutes by, by 28 kilometers. So 21 kilometers more than 66. Um, net so under 90 minutes for, for 28 kilometers, and the great point for us is on train 216, 215, dear the marathon mark. So, what did you say through the marathon mark? 216, 215 um, for a standard marathon, but 42 um, kilometers is. And then we begin the wet loop, when we get Constantia Neck, and 14 kilometers then now. My goodness, it certainly is not going to be easy for any of the men that are looking at breaking Thompson Magawana's record. But of course, it is worth one million rand. These two gentlemen are part of our world-class commentary team. As I mentioned earlier, they'll be keeping you company throughout today's race. But then also at the start, we've got Oli Zondo, who is uh, going to be giving us a feel of what it actually feels like. I know yesterday when I started my 56, Oli, it was beautiful weather. I was just wearing my, my running vest, and it was absolutely fantastic. I see that there's just a slight wind. What's it like there at the start? <laughs> Indeed, Valen, we are here at the Newlands in Cape Town, and I can tell you, just looking at the athletes, the intent on their face, they're very focused. It is an electrifying atmosphere. And speaking to some of the athletes, they've just said that the conditions are favorable, bearing in mind that we're not anticipating any rain and that there's just a slight uh, wind. So let's talk about this 45th edition of the Old Mutual Two Oceans Marathon. And in true style, Old Mutual 
Adidas and uh, Ian Forey from the Golden Spur have come together to make sure that we have an astounding event. The one thing about this marathon this year is that the entries closed way before the closing date, which just goes to show what a global phenomenon this marathon has become. 16,000 people will be starting this 21-kilometer race. We absolutely cannot wait. I do have a feeling that this world record will be broken today. So um, I can also tell you that at 3 o'clock, at the earliest by 3 o'clock, the athletes were already here. They, they are actually very focused on today's marathon. So let's go back to you, Valen, in studio. Thank you very much, Tony Zondo. She's going to be chatting to a couple of the runners a little bit later on, just before they get on their voyage. And there's a lot of people that are taking on this task for the very first time. Looking at the novices, there's 38 percent of that 16,000 field that we're taking on the 21.1 kilometer race that are doing this for the very, very first time. And there was, they used to be thinking that you know by introducing this half marathon, it would take away from the ultra. This year's ultra has got a record field, and of that record field, there's 36 percent of them doing it for the very, very first time. It's an absolutely fantastic race, and we're going to be bringing you some more exciting things after the break. Do stay with us. For any road marathon, people gather on the start line to share in this collective energy. Could there be a better way to retire? The neighbors are friendly. The sun is my alarm clock. Old Mutual let me experience what my dream retirement would look like. Owning my own game lodge. 40 years before it happens. Everybody has dreams. Let us help you plan for yours from today. Welcome back. You're watching SABC Sports Broadcast of the 45th running of the Old Mutual Two Oceans Marathon. There are two major sponsors of this event. Old Mutual, who've been with the race for the last 15 years. And then just a short while ago, it was Adidas that got on board as the technical sponsor. And on this note, they have got a competition where you can win the latest technology in shoes and watches. They want to know, when did Adidas become the official technical sponsor of the race? Is it A, the 2013 race, or B, the 1993 race? It's as easy as SMSing the keyword Adidas, followed by your name and your answer with an A or B, to double three seven six three. Double three seven six three with the keyword Adidas, your name and the answer, whether it's A or B. When did Adidas first become the official technical sponsor? The race is so much more than just about the high performance of our elite athletes. It's also about the many, many people that make up the race and those that support the race. Runners have got a great heart and to that end, they have three official charities. Yesterday at the press conference, they handed over checks of 100,000 rand each to the three different charities that the Old Mutual Two Oceans Marathon is supporting. One of them is Sand Parks. Take a look at this. Yeah, and Sand Parks Honorary Rangers is a national volunteer organization that's very active in conservation. Everything we do is for sand parks, and there are regions in almost every single national park, including Table Mountain National Park. We are active in big projects like alien invasive clearing, and we raise huge funds towards uh, major projects like counter poaching of rhino. And in 2012, uh, we raised in the order of 44 million that went towards sand parks. Old Mutual Two Oceans Marathon has um, a wonderful partnership with the sand parks Henri Ranges in Table Mountain region. Now it's a partnership stretching over three years and to date um, the value of that partnership, the money that they've put into the park has been over 300,000. 
Um, last year, we created with their funds a restoration trail which identifies very special endemic species that are likely to become extinct. So what I think is so strong about the relationship we have with Old Mutual Two Oceans Marathon is their participation in the park. And we couldn't do the projects we have done without their support. And uh, prior to that, we had planted trees, indigenous trees on the slopes of Table Mountain, particularly in Cecilia Forest, or what is now Cecilia Park. 2014 is a, a project to do with youngsters, an enviro environmental education of youngsters. And this project is about upgrading the People's Trail Hut, which is on the back table, in a very visible node. And about 3,000 youngsters visit that People's Trail Hut and overnight, for many of whom it's the first time on the mountain, first time they've come into contact with their cultural heritage and their natural heritage. And that is very, very important. And some of those youngsters go on to become conservationists. So this is a very powerful participation in um, the youngsters in conservation. The Running for the Mountain initiative basically encourages anyone who uses the mountain to run or in fact is simply passionate about the mountain to, as the slogan says, put your money where your feet go. And any contribution made goes directly back into conserving the mountain, in particular the paths that are used by runners. We estimate we have about 4 million users every year. Obviously not all of them are running, but they are all making use of Table Mountain National Park. Trail runs have increased in popularity substantially over the last four years. Mostly they happen on the northern side, so Table Mountain, Rhodes Memorial, Lion's Head. Loads of major trail running events happening on the mountain and then just individuals enjoying the mountain, just running. So I'd just like to stress once again, no donation is too small or too big. Go to www.sandparks.org, click on the little running for the mountain logo, takes you to the bank details and make your deposit. Where a lot of people actually get to find out more about the charitable causes that the Old Mutual Two Oceans Marathon gets behind is at the Expo. This year it took place at the Cape Town International Convention Centre. And for many runners over the half as well as on the 56, that is where the journey here at the Two Oceans really begins. That's where they get registration, they get their numbers, they get their timing chip checked to make sure that it is registered to their race number. And there's just an absolute buzz. I was there on Thursday afternoon. It's wonderful. You get get to get in touch with some of those runners that you've met on route and it really is the beginning of all the excitement of race day take a look at what happened at this year's expo Marathon to the Sunflower Fund. We're encouraging to compete in our Miles for Mara campaign, which is basically to ask people, friends, relatives, companies to sponsor them per mile. We convert the, the kilometers into miles for them. And basically, we ask them to obtain sponsorship for us. That money will be used to uh, recruit more donors to join the South African Bone Marrow Registry. Foundation is uh, one of the official beneficiaries of the Two Oceans Marathon this year. It's also Old Mutual's official beneficiary for the marathon. And the beautiful thing is that what we do is we give school shoes to primary school kids that are from rural areas and underprivileged. And uh, funds from within the organization, within the marathon, are going towards children getting a brand new pair of school shoes around different parts of South Africa. Our involvement with Pink Drive, first and foremost, is an important one as we are the Department for Women and Children and people with disabilities. So the fact that Pink Drive does answer 
um, and especially cancers that affect women, it is important for us as a department to deal with issues of women's health. But also it's important for us from a children's perspective because when parents die, especially when children become what we call maternal, uh, maternal orphans, then they don't really make it and they contribute to the different social challenges that we have. So as a department, we felt it was important that we support Pink Drive, that we get involved and ensure that um, Pink Drive grows and they are able to reach those poor women in rural areas and the track can, so that they can be early detected because we believe prevention is better than cure. Yeah, it was a brilliant time. I mean, I was there on Thursday and I got an opportunity to walk through a couple of the stands. You saw there the little penguin. Yeah, it was, she was real. Her name was Kai at the San Cobb stand. And San Cobb are one of the official charities of the Old Mutual Two Oceans Marathon, as well as Put Foot. So those are the three that have been supported by the runners who take part in this race. There are 16,000 runners that are doing the half marathon. It is the biggest half marathon in Southern Africa. It attracts a top field because there's also very lucrative prize money up for those that are going to cross the finish line first over 21.1 one kilometers but they go off in two batches 16,000 people is a lot of people to be getting through that main road in Newland so they have batches or rather seedings A to D going off at six o'clock and that is just a couple of minutes away and then they have the second batch going off just 10 minutes later Tolly is at the start line so let's get a feel from her once again as we're just seven minutes away from the start from the first start of the half marathon Yes, indeed, Vela, the countdown has begun. And you know, the one thing about the 21-kilometer race is that it's not just for the seasoned athletes, you know. They are those that just came here to just have fun. And with me as one of the 16,000 competitors, uh, Claudia, and I'm going to be talking to her. Claudia, is this your first time taking part in the marathon? Yes, it is. We need to get to use the lag. We all be sure to get to use the lag. Yes, you part a healthy lifestyle. No bang it is on this from Pilang Ashley. So I think this is the best way of starting it. Yeah. And then, man, you must suspect my conditions. Do you think as of now that we put it when they are racing? I'll tell you, from we are going to get along about the weather. Yeah, but I actually is cool. So the weather is right. It's nice and cool. So I. Why are why? All right. And then mind you again, what time are you looking at? Maybe two hours. Oh. Well, <laughs> then, perfect. We wish you all the best. And Valen, that was just Claudia just saying that, uh, you know, she's taking part in this marathon for just the healthy side of living and making sure that uh, she's doing the best. And now we've got Daniel. Daniel, is this your first time taking part in the marathon? Uh, this is actually my fifth duration. And what makes you keep coming back for more and more and more? Uh, I think I just really like the, the atmosphere and the vibe and it's just it's just such a great chaos with everyone standing at the start line and all my mates running with them. I just I just dig it every time. All right. And then let's talk about the conditions. Are they going to be helpful for your race today? We're actually talking about now. I think it's really nice. It's not too much wind. It's not cold. Don't need to be wearing black bags to keep us warm. So I think it's going to be a good race. All right. And then halfway through, what are some of the things that actually keep you going? Because I can imagine that's the time when your feet are just giving up on you. Yeah, I think we got awesome support. I think it's one of my favorite parts about two oceans. So many people just cheering you on. Um, and otherwise, it's just a good, just good, like personal drive, just kicking on and pushing, pushing forward. All right. And then, Daniel, we need to know which time are you looking at for today? <laughs> I don't know how strong I'm feeling, but we're hoping to be just last year. So maybe a 128, 127. It's the dream. <laughs> we'll see. That's a good time, and we'll be behind you all the Thank way. You so much. Best of luck. Velen, you've seen it. People coming for different reasons, charity reasons, some for the competitive nature of it, and others just to maintain their healthy lifestyle. Let's go back to you while I find some more. Well, thank you very much to Kori Zondo from the start line there of the half marathon. They're going to be getting underway at 6 o'clock, the very first batch, and then the second batch of runners getting underway at 10 past 6. Now, in studio, I'm joined by a lady who's won the ultra. She's also been in the top 10 a number of times, Helen Luca. Helen, thank you very much for joining us in studio. It's great to have you here. Now, we've got one million round up for the person that can break the record. And when that record was set in 1989, you were behind Frith. Correct, but quite a way behind Frith. <laughs> 
but um, yeah, it was a lovely day for running. That's all I can remember. I can't remember specifically about the conditions, but they must have been good because I know I remember running and thinking I can get, feel great. It's, I can get stronger and ran faster towards the end. And I think that obviously was the same for Frith. So, but she set up a fantastic time and I think it will be a challenge for the, the girls to beat that today. All right, well, we're going to be chatting more about the ultra marathon, but the focus now is on the half marathon. There's prize money up, and also there's a top field that, uh, that the race has once again attracted. They're going to be looking at the conditions. Who do you rate, Donovan, for the half? Bristol's um, Stephen Makoka, he's from the World Championship in the half, he's a 60 minute half marathon. And he's often made Gladwin and Mzazi in a very good form, and also Joel Monier. So het is in alle drie ons gaan een Zuid-Afrikaanse winnaar het. En Steven is ook een record hoor in 63 minuten. Onthou die, die route was van ander verlede jaar. So beslis Steven. Do you think they can go faster today provided that the weather plays along? Omdat die competitie so intens is vandag, um, glo ek hulle kan een bykie vinniger hardloop. Maar ek dink jy hulle sal vinniger as 62 minuten kan hardloop op hierdie route nie. Het is baie taai en die wind baie verskrikkelijk vandag. Yeah, all right. Well, let's take a look at how much a first place is worth in the half marathon over 21.1 kilometers. Like I said, it's lucrative prize money, especially for a half marathon, Helen. I mean, we've got uh, 25,000 rand up for the person that can cross the finish line first. You don't often see that kind of prize money for a half. No, it's good money. And I think it's also, it, it has become quite a prestigious event to take part. And that, that actually carries a lot of weight with athletes. It's nice to say you've run a good race, but if you can say you've done well in the Two Oceans 21, it's, it's good on your running CV. All right, and one of the favorites definitely for the women's race would be Renee Kalmer. Correct. And she, yesterday, listening to her, she's confident, she's focused. She's just come back from the World um, Half Marathon Champs three weeks ago, had a very good performance there, and she's looking for a podium finish, if not a first place. All right, Renee Kalmer is going to be running in the race. Her sister's also competing, and yesterday at the press conference, Renee said, yeah, I'll stay with my sister if she can keep up. Zoli Zondo is at the start line with Renee Kalmer. I don't think there's going to be time, eh? Yes, I'm with Renee Palmer, and she's doing the race for the seventh time. What is it about the Old Mutual Marathon that makes you come back? Oh, it's just such a special race. I mean, it unites people from all over the world and South Africa. So, yeah, last year I was second, and I'm hoping to finish on the podium again. And what sort of preparation goes into such a marathon? Um, there's a lot of training going into it, but, um, yeah, also as off to the organizer for putting together such an amazing event. Best of luck, Renee. We wish you all the best. All right. Back to you, Valen. Thank you very much uh, to Troli there. We can hear the sound of Nkosa Sikelele e Africa. That means that the start of the half marathon here at the Old Mutual Two Oceans Marathon is about to get underway. Let us uh, link over to our commentators now as they take us through the start of the half marathon. Well, thank you very much, Valen Kirtley. And uh, that's the shot down on the main road. A little bit uh, lower than we are. We're at the UCT at the finish. But, uh, that's the massive crowd. Remember this year for the first time, the half marathon will go off in two batches. It simply is too cumbersome to have so many runners on the road. There's 16,000 in the race. Around about half of them will be off uh, in, uh, in, in a couple of minutes for the, for, the, for the half marathon and 10 minutes later the second batch. But all sorts of favorites up there. They are starting, in fact, at the Golden Spur, which has uh, been uh, looking after some of our media folks today. So that's the start point down on uh, the old main on the main road and uh, queue and i think that the important thing today is the conditions there will be no rain it's as clear as a bell the stars we can see uh, it's pretty dark out there but the wind is blowing yes definitely and uh, i think if the race had been run yesterday we would have seen a lot of record times uh, perhaps but today as you said the wind is out but uh, you know just as strong as the wind is uh, the field yet we've got the likes of uh, Gladwin Mzazi, as mentioned earlier, Stephen Mokoko, who just came back from the World Champs, and likewise in the women's race with uh, Renee Kalmer and uh, Jenna Shalinor, the two ladies who represented South Africa. Well, Renee Kalmer in, in, in fine shape. She ran the Spa Ladies Race here a couple of weeks ago and uh, was still tired from the World uh, Half Marathon, but she looks uh, she looks in pretty good shape. I saw Diana Levo-Palula also in the start. She won the Spa Challenge down here. We'll see how she goes over over 21 Ks, but uh, Peter Debile is with us also today. Uh, just an absolutely stellar field. 
khosiame e yan kham magole ke on ke la magela mo mo songwa letsatsi la go mpiene ba bogedi ba etso ke lebeletse jalo lebelo leno la dikilometer di le soma mabedi le ngwe bongwe le le tlhe go simolang go nefela janong lebeletse jalo ba o mamaratwe ke bone ka gale ba bewang ko maemong a kwa pele sa tsoga bona jalo puisano le rene calma ke mongwa ba tabogi ba ba diphatsa ba re solofetseng go bona go le gontse go tswa mo go bona fela mo se mo se tlhentse tsipitileng re bone ba tabogi ba etsa jalo bo event fan black zinte ke ni we kha mogolo re tenda nya hora go tswa kwa Zimbabwe e le bone ba ba ga ba dira jalo ba ba simolla lebelo fela ka gangwe re tla bona khaisano e ga gametseng ka mo ba nne ra go lebella jalo bo tlole sa chali ke mongwa bo mamrato re lebelle ga pele bo calvin pangiso ke mongwa ba tabo gang re tla bona gore ba tla tsaolla ka mokhontse ja ie well off they go and that's the start and this is an absolutely massive field if you divide the 16000 by 2 there run about 8000 of them queue in, in that front bunch and i sometimes feel quite sorry for the woman i saw marit from malta and the colmer sisters and jenna chalanor fighting for position it's a bit tough for them in the front isn't it Definitely, Ian. Once that gun goes, you really, really have to run fast. Uh, most of the, the athletes there, the first kilometer will be the fastest probably of the of the whole race. It is a really, really big field, 16,000 athletes. And the uh, interesting statistic, Ian, more than 30% of them novices. And the other interesting statistic, uh, Kieran, is that 51% of them are, are, are women. So in this race, half marathon running for women is, is absolutely massively, it's growing fast, it's very popular. Compare that with the 56k ultra marathon, 28% are ladies. So the women are now coming into 10ks and into half marathons, and I'm pretty sure it might be even up to 40, 50% in the ultra. But right now, I think the other thing we need to understand, Kieran, about this course is the wind is not such a big factor in the half marathon. They run into it and then they get into the suburbs through Constantia, whereas in the marathon, ultra marathon, they go all the way down to False Bay, and it is a bigger, a way bigger factor in that race than this one. Definitely in the, the wind in the half marathon won't be too much uh, to the athletes as, uh, as you mentioned, it's in the suburbs. Uh, last year we saw Stephen Mokoka setting a course record of uh, 63.35 and then Biru Meseret Mengistu, the uh, Ethiopian national who ran a 72.42. So Peter, those are the times that the athletes will be looking for this year and uh, Stephen Mokoka again in the field this year. Two weeks ago he ran that 60 minutes in the World Half Marathon Champs and uh, definitely someone to look at the course record today again. Okay, Kion. Ni khonse fela jalo ba bogedi ba gaitso Steven Mokoka ke mongwe wa ba re ba lebeletseng ni singene fela gona le ba tabogi ba bangwe se bo siso nzima ke mongwa ba re ba lebeletseng bo bo simane ba etsa jalo bo la ke mohale ke bangwe ba bana ba re ba itseng thata tsogolo jang ga re lebeletse lebelo leno la di kilometer tse soma mabedi le bongwe ra go lebella gape gona le ba ba botlana ba ba etsa jalo dikete di kanna thataro re lebella gore ba tlatsa maka mo khontse jang fela ke a itse gore lebelo le ke lengwe la mabelo a simolang go gona thata monageng me e bile le tumelwa ke ba tabogi ba le bantsi se kholo jamo le patella bo memo di kilometer di le le some di ka nna tlhano ga mogo le di le some a mabedi le bongwe well 2 minutes and 40 for the the first there you can see the 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 first group is now cleared the start line so it's a run about call it 7 minutes and a bit of change to go before the second bunch goes off and uh, and by then these guys will be at least run about a, a k down the road so <laughs> it's going to be something of a thing for the leaders in the second bunch they're probably going to run into the back of these guys but in previous years it's been very much a massive crowd at the back you can't get going and i think that's going to be way better this year Definitely, and, and also one of the reasons why the course had changed uh, in the previous half marathons, the athletes used to run the first four kilometers of the ultra route, and now you see that after about two, three hundred meters, they take that right turn. But as you said, two minutes 45 uh, into the race for the first batch to go, and uh, yeah, definitely the leaders are way past one kilometer already. Go se amere tla bona ka mogoba tla tsa manka teng mo lebelong leno ke leng khoso ya di kilometer di le soma mabedi le bongwe fela ka mogore lebeletseng ka teng ya no ba simolla go thepologa jano ba ba beilweng jalo kwa maemong a ko pele ka ntla gore ke batho ba le bantsi ba ba tabaga mo lebelong le di kete di le soma le borataro le kholo le soma le bobedi me ke batho ba le bantsi ba ba tla tsoga jalo ka di mokana di ka nna pedi ba ba kwa pele ba setse bantsi ba ba fitile jalo mo ba thepologang gore ba tla ba tsene mo tseleng ba kgone go tabaga le go sutela ba ba setseng kwa morago Rata bona lebelo le le tlatsa maka mo khontseng jang fela ke lebelo le lengwe ke lang batho ba le bantsi
Well, four minutes into the race now, and uh, we see that mass of uh, athletes making that right turn. There. That was the first batches from A to D, and uh, Peter, in uh, five minutes or so from now at 6.10, the rest of the field, the E batch will go, about uh, another 8,000 of them. Well, love pictures of the 2014, sorry, Two Oceans uh, Half Marathon. 16,112 runners, as we mentioned earlier there, and uh, a big, big field today. Record in the Half Marathon and in the Ultra with just over 11,000 athletes today. Rebelletse ka mokhoba tsa mangateng fela stopa sa bofelo ke tsone jano sa go feta fala jano sa go feta fo sa feta nteng me re tla bona gore stopa seo ga se feta go tshepo ga fo e tla nna gone jano ba simolla go tsena motseleng e ba supang gore jano ba ka simolla jano ba sutla jano ba simolla go tabo gare bona ba tsamaka mokhontsi ya Well as I disappear into the darkness into the uh, suburbs of Cape Town we go back to Valen Kirtley in the studio Thank you very much, Ian Laxton. We'll be joining the commentary team once again as they take us through the second start of the half marathon. Of course, the half marathon goes, they have two different batches, one going off at 6 o'clock and then the batch, which is, makes up the bulk of the, well, rather the other half of the field, they'll go off at 10 past 6. Stay with our live broadcast. We've got a competition coming your way. If you missed the first competition, lots of giveaways. So do stay tuned. Could there be a better way to retire? The neighbors are friendly. The sun is my alarm clock. Old Mutual let me experience what my dream retirement would look like. Owning my own game lodge. 40 years before it happens. Everybody has dreams. Let us help you plan for yours from today. Welcome back. We just saw the elite runners go off in the half marathon. It's still very, very dark out there. And that's something that a lot of people don't realize. Actually, for the first hour, because sunrise only happens around about 7 o'clock here in the Western Cape. So for the first hour, these guys are running in the dark. Yeah, for sure. It's a bit darker. We will see you next time. We will see you next time. We will see you next time. I've asked already. Donovan reckons it's going to be Stephen Mokorka. Your winner for the women's race in the half? Well, I've just been listening to Donovan. He's, he's persuaded me. He says no Paseca. So I, I don't know. I think it's going to be a close race between Leko, Rene, and Mapaseka. I, had, I don't have a favourite. I think it's just going to see what happens between those three. It certainly is going to be a very, very good race with the kind of uh, South African runners that we have taking part in the half marathon. It's not only our runners that are going to be crossing this finish line, first, second or third, that are going to win. You can also win at home, thanks to Adidas. You can win the latest technology in shoes and watches. You just got to answer this easy question. In what year did Adidas become the official technical sponsor of the Old Mutual Two Oceans Marathon? Is it A, 2013, or is it B, 1990? You can SMS the keyword Adidas followed by your name and your answer, whether it's A or B, to 33763. Some great prizes that they've got on offer, so do get involved. 
You can also get involved with our broadcast in another way, and that is by using Instagram and Twitter. Use our hashtag OMTOM, OMTOM, for Twitter as well as on Instagram. It's just as easy as that. Hashtag OMTOM. There you go. Here's a couple of people that have already been tweeting in. Frantic start at the beginning of the race. Slept through three alarms, but ready in six minutes. Of course, that's a, that's that last minute wake up that you get it's not something that you want on race day though and it's it's in that kind of panic that you don't really want <laughs> to actually be able to start the start the race the atmosphere out at the start line is electric woke up extra early to watch uh, team samke so lots of people also getting up and i think that's something about this two oceans marathon because yes it's about the runners but it's also about all of the support that's offered to those runners it's the family that have given up weekends for their runners it's the very early mornings that the runners have put in because there's really just so much about this race isn't there helen yeah it's special and i think it's become such a uh, a fixture and people coming from all around the country they it's a, it's a a weekend away and they make the most of it coming to cape town and all the other activities around it's, it's a running festival it certainly is and there we see the second start of the half marathon that one just went off 10 past six these are the guys that i would say a lot of those 38 percent novices have actually make up Probably a large bunch of this field. Well, what very interesting is that 51% is that in and fifty percent fraud is what um the half marathon has to do. And as we look at 16,000 people, 11,000 people, and the full marathon, 27,000 people, 27,000 gesinne, um, beer people, and um, hardloop gesinne, what in the wedloop look is groot. Helen, I think this is something that's quite interesting. You know, a couple of years ago when the two oceans half is getting really, really big, people are saying, well, it's detracting away from the ultra. And we actually see this year with a record feel in the ultra that that's not the case. I think it's a stepping stone. A lot of people come down to Cape Town and they find their feet. A large percentage of the 21 kilometer runners, well, are, are unlicensed runners. So they're not formally belonging to a club. So it's almost like a little bit of a feeder system. They'll run the 21, they'll get a taste for it. That's their first challenge ticked off. Now let me take on the 56. So I think you'll probably find that many of these guys who are novices today will come back at some stage and take part in that 56. You mentioned that it's a festival of running, and that's exactly what it is because the whole family gets involved. Yesterday here on the UCT field, there was a 56-meter nappy dash. There was a 300-meter toddler trot, a 5.6-kilometer fun run. And then, of course, there were the trail runs. Now, when I crossed the finish line, after I finished my 56, there were a couple of trail runners that were also there. And they were like, hey, what did you do? I think there's also just that interaction between runners and knowing the different options that running can afford you and that the event can afford you that also gets you quite hooked. Yeah, two Oceana Marathon um, makes it now for all of us to come to the end. I look at the hours that are up and the kinder afdeling. I think the kinders are up, but the hours are up. And now we have also been able to see that we have work um, for other athletes who can go 10 km and the 21 km that we have been working on yesterday. Uh, for seen. And then what many people don't know is that on um, yesterday, Friday, was daar 56 kilometer wat sekere mense kon hardloop jy ook uh, veilen. How does how does this compare to when you were running Helen? Well there was just the 56 and I think it was you, you came to Cape Town and you ran the 56 there was you no know, other consideration and I think it's added a lot of value because you get couples and families and and now it's sort of the one partner might run in the 56 and maybe you know the husband will run in the 21 or vice versa so it gives everybody an opportunity to do something it certainly does loads of runners going off there it's the second start of the half marathon and you know these to get an entry for this half marathon is really very, very difficult. And they actually even said, I mean, it's disaster management that they have to cap it at 16,000 because if they could, I bet you that this half marathon would be over 20,000 people. As we net kijk, there are more than 2,000 international athletes that here today also take. So it's a world um, opportunity to come to the car.
It's like a lottery. I think the day that they open up the entries, you sit on online and you and you just keep trying to get in. And um, huge disappointment for many people that, that uh, don't get the entry in in time. All right, we said that you can get involved with the broadcast by using the hashtag OMTOM, and that's on Twitter as well as on Instagram. Here's a couple of the things that we've picked up on Instagram using the hashtag OMTOM2014. Feels like I am a kilometer away from the stars. That's somebody's uh, Fahi Mud at the back of the line, and I think that's how you feel, you know? The, the field is so big, 11,000 people, and it takes uh, over 10 minutes to just clear that start line. So when you're saying that, you really do feel very far way back. I mean, I don't think it's not an experience that you elite <laughs> runners have had. I know. I'm getting there. But it's, it's like, you know, they have special places for you to go. And it is quite important for everybody to sort of start off at their pace. Also, you, if you go in, into and try and sneak in a batch ahead, you just get a bit overwhelmed by the pace of the people around you. You get pushed and shoved a little bit. So... It's wise to, if you if you think you're going to run two and a half hours, go and start in the two and a half hour batch. So it's a bit fright. It can be a little bit overwhelming if you're not used to that crowd. And the people push and they want to get going, you know. So it uh, can be a little uncomfortable. I will never forget in 1996 my first year of the to five years. Um, to ek daar kom, het is al soveel duizend mense voor my, kon nie, kon nie geloof, ek was laat vir die, vir die begintpunt die, ja, so, uh, allemaal probeer vroeg ochend op die lijn kom, ja, en wat ons moet onthou, moet die groei van die wetloop, 16.000 mense, het neem jou tykje om oor die, oor die um, begintpunt te kom, en dus so kom dit opgebreek, as in twee begintpunt tye vol, volgend. Yeah, and you also just need that time to just reconnect with yourself and almost close your eyes for a little while because there's just so much going on at the start line. You have the cock crow, you have the national anthem playing, you have people all around you. Sometimes somebody will just break into song, somebody will start dancing. There is just so much excitement and really to be at that start line is something magical. As you describe, mens, mens kan dit jy beskryf nie. Jy moet op die lijn kom staan, so die mense wat nog nie gehaard loop het jy, ek nooit leid volgende jaar, Kom schrijf in en kom hardloop en kom absorbeer um, net die, die wonderlijke atmosfeer die we toe is aan. All right, well, we've been speaking about this race and how magical it is to be at the start line and to actually just take on this world's most beautiful voyage between the Atlantic and the Indian Ocean, which is known as the Old Mutual Two Oceans Marathon. But it wouldn't be a race if it wasn't for the sponsors, so let's hear from Adidas. So this is our second year involvement with the Old Mutual Two Oceans Marathon and this event is not just now about the, the ultra on the Saturday, but really this event has become a, a festival of running. So it starts on Wednesday today with the Expo. Um, Friday now has uh, an amazing event where we have fun runs as well as trail running. And then Saturday now there's the amazingly popular the half marathon and then obviously the ultra. So for us it's an, it's an incredible opportunity to engage with 30,000 runners um, and really to, to show what Adidas has from a running point of view and our running products and to engage with, uh, with these 30,000 runners on the day. Um, we launched Boost last year which is our energy boost model and uh, that's won an award in, in 2013 for the, for the best new running shoe. And we've now rolled that out last year. We had one ladies model of Boost and one men's model of Boost. And now this year we have five men's models of Boost and we have five ladies models of Boost. And our, when we launched Boost in our Supernova shoe, our Supernova won the editors, Runner's World Editor's uh, Choice for the best running shoe in 2014. We also have a, a watch, so which we're launching, which is called, um, which is called the Smart Run Watch. Um, and that watch now measures heart rate. It measures your dist average distance and pace. Um, you can load your music onto it, um, and it all works wirelessly off one device on your, on your arm. Um, so no heart rate straps, and it picks up everything off one, in, in one device. Huh? As you know, I, I, I don't know if you do know, but our major athlete is, uh, is Wilson Kip. Um, and this guy is absolutely incredible. Um, he won Berlin. record holding 1 million rent for grabs. Pizza, 1 million rent up for grabs today. 
Do you think they can do it? Khonse fela jalo kwa go nna popo taile tota kion is going to be very difficult really. Um me e bile re tso ga jalo mo mosongwe no go feka pay for me e tla re ka gongwe khante jana ka ntla gore dikio e go solofetse jalo maemo a bosa go fitlela di grata di le soma mabedi le borobedi re simolotse jalo ka di grata tse somele borataro e tla nna one a sia metseng le belo le le gore batabogi ba ka nna batabogi ka mokgosi ya me. Fela go na le ludu ke mama bolo yo le ene re skitla re mokgapela kwa tjoko yo na le sia be mo le belo le mane mphate nna basadi le bele tse jalo bo Adinda Courier ke re nkon faro mentor le gas ke tla fenya le belone o temo le tsa sinda go mpieno fela jalo le Zola Petersen Well, those course records were from uh, Thompson Magawana back in 1988 and Fritz van der Merwe's uh, women's course record coming in 1989. So it just shows you how long those records have stood. But the difference today, we've got the likes of David Bomasai, the Kenyan, who ran 2.07 for the marathon in uh, 2011 and was fifth in the world championships. We've got Hendrik Romala, former New York marathon winner, Gert Tess, 206 marathon runner, and uh, there's a lot of top guys here today that we've never had before. Yeah, now we have also the debutant from Russia. We've got Svetlana Samova. Uh, Svetlana Stanko. Tabakulu hape ta pita ki ona ya hore ha o lekola o sheba o tla fumana hore ho teng ba rwetsana ba hapile top 10 eng ya le monse fitile ba ba hlano ba bona ha ba yo me o teng tsatsa o tlo tshireletsa sekola sena se lenga senga putso gore is there anybody that you actually looking at that can amaze people tonight or today kion Yes definitely uh, the whole uh, top 10 men from last year's race are back in the field today and as you saw that graphic there with uh, Thompson's time the the third fourth and fifth fastest times ever in the two oceans marathon that being Marco Mambo Moses and Georgie and Mabutile Lobopo are in the field today they're running the race they know how to do that it must be mentioned that uh, Thompson's record Peter was run on the old course the the start uh, same place as where it is today, but the finish, a lot of downhill in Thompson's day compared to the Apple and the Union Avenue. But uh, the guys are in the field today, and they can definitely do it. But uh, is the wind going to hold them back or not? Kosi ya mekion reka bana kore a pefo ene tan na lesi ya be mo kore ing reko to e solo fetu mo le tati na kompiano e ba tabu ki bana ba tabu kela ni milioni wa diranta kahu me ba kai roba me mo e to ene mo fegi mo le tati na kompiano le bila tijalo ba tabu ki baba farlo kani le pata la basadi bo olesi e kama ko le eliana re le bila tijalo bo mamra lo chakwa mo le pata la basadi bo suba samkelo mo ya kuto ba zimbabwe le ne ki mo wa bara solo fetu kore akadi la matiti mo le tati na kompiano. We've just been joined by the former uh, Two Oceans runner, Kibua Jaloka, Donovan, who's already fat, so we're here. At the end of the day, Jaloka has a little bit of a selling element to the Milano, Mote, New Lens, Hosonzo, Huchisa, Cape Town, Yabata, Me, Maimo, Alhodi, Molona, and Fila Nicomieta, Wahori, Rekarebone, Zeta, Sendi, Zahale, Donovan. Yes, James. Thank you for the first time. I don't find the community on the marathon. What's the name? The first one is the first one. Het is interessant om te weten dat um, drie Sint-Amerikaners hard op vandaag dat die het is al record is. Kula, Honajal Mitsutsu, Isaliona, Eds, let's sing Libilo, Lele, Holo, Lissalis, Litsu, Let's Pay, Likiri Kilometer, Rase, Mashuma, Mashan, Lumitsu, let's sing Metabet and Neng, Ruhu, Putsona, Kiona, Ya, Milioni, Eta, Sing, Hapu, Kiba, Shijuling, Reba, Reba, Robert, Record, Tatilina, Lakajin. Ebele lebelo leno le na le theme ya lone e bedu amfela go te design to run me re solo fetse ba tabogi ba ba taboga njalo mo lebelo leno la bongwa ga wa soma a mane le botlhano re le lebeletse jalo khaisano e gagametseng a re bone gore ba tlatsa maka mo kgontseng jang fela design to run ke lebelo la theme ya monongwa ga jang ha re shebe ha joale tsorelo ke Jonathan ha re shebe ha joale tsena ga tlhe fetele joale bo bo yena Valen a hlabe malala laut Valen take it over All right so that was almost uh... 10 minutes to actually just clear that start line of over 11,000 people that are taking part in the Two Oceans Marathon. This is the 45th running of the event, and it started out as just a warm-up run for the Comrades Marathon. It's amazing how South Africa's race calendar is really based around the Big Sea, the Comrades Marathon. But the Two Oceans is really forging itself. It's, a, it's now an event all in its own right. It's become this real festival of running. It is, and I think you've, we, there's a quite a lot of... A lot of overseas runners have come to take part in it. It's got that reputation of being the world's most beautiful marathon, which it is. Um, and it's quite different to the two oceans, I mean, to the comrades, you know, from a tradition perspective. It's still a special event. It certainly is. Now, I 
I got the opportunity to actually take part in the race yesterday. Uh, one thing that the Two Oceans does is they really celebrate uh, diversity and inclusivity. So for those runners for religious reasons who cannot run on the Saturday as they acknowledge it as the Sabbath, they give them the opportunity to run on the Friday. Now, they allowed me, because I'm working today, uh, to also run with them yesterday. So there was a group of less than 100 people that were uh, taking part in the event yesterday. It was about 40 of us over 56 kilometers because they give both the opportunity for the 56 kilometers as well as the 21 to actually take part in the race. And these are just some of the photos that uh, my second took while we were busy running. And it was actually so magnificent. I mean, it was so tough. It is beautiful, but man, is it tough. And I don't think that that's something that, you know, you get to appreciate until you've actually done it. There's my very happy smile at the end. And after that, I just kind of hobbled along. And I'm still hobbling today. That's why I'm really enjoying sitting in this chair. I think what's so great about this race and something that a lot of people don't understand, it's almost like you have to have tactics for both halves of the race for the first half and then for the second half because they're really very different. You would have found that out yesterday. It must oh. have been quite difficult running with out the crowd support or did you have people cheering you on? Um, I mean, th the guys en route were fantastic who were there and because each runner, because it's not supported, you know, as the main race day is, each runner has to have their own second who is giving them food and water along the route. So the seconds all kind of like cheer for the runners that they keep on seeing coming past them. And there was about 10 kilometers that I ran with uh, another gentleman from okay. RAC through, through Musenberg and up to Fishhook. But a lot of the race is on your own which i think adds a, a different dynamic but still it was just absolutely amazing to be able to go and run on the route and the weather yesterday was just perfect for running yeah well there's a little bit of a breeze now which might might be quite nice but some of those runners we saw had long sleeves on looked a bit chilly but as you said yes it's definitely a race of two halves and the first 21 kilometers of the of the 56 is very very quick and you actually have to be patient and and hold yourself back because you can easily run your personal best time for 21 kilometers you can get carried away with the occasion you feel fantastic it's slightly downhill and then you turn off after fishhook and that's when the climb starts so it really is a very tactical race that that you've got to run if you want to be successful. Now, how do you ensure that you don't gi you don't give too much in that first half that is nice and flat, and as a runner maybe from the high felt, you're really enjoying that sea level oxygen that your body is boosted by. How do you ensure that you don't uh, you don't give too much, but you also give enough to be on target? Well, you've got to plan your race. You've got to a know your potential and what what you can run and not get pulled along by the other runners as well you know so there's this and the longer the distance that you're racing or the, the event is taking along like in the 56 you'll run it quite differently to the 21 where you will push a little bit harder as we can see I think some of the 21k runners now really racing working off each other because they've just got to hang in for a much shorter period 56k quite different all right, let's link over to our commentators now to take us through what is happening. The visuals you can see on screen, this is the half marathon, 21.1 kilometers going through Southern Cross Drive. So let's join our commentary team. Southern Cross Drive. Donovan, how are you looking at the race up to so far? Yeah, that is Southern Cross Drive here in the Klaar the first group gesien. Daar is al klaar mannen wat afgevallen het. Lucky Moale het afgevallen van die van die pas af. Ik zie Joe Monnie en Brendan Dick Monning is allemaal voor in die eerste groep en daar is een groot verschil al met die groep wat weggebreken het van die andere atlete. Gonzalo Donovan, me jakal se tot vijf jaar. Joe Monnie, kijk maar wat daar boekje bij rilen. 
gapele ga o fetileng ene le mosimane wa qole ya nna bone ba ba bona mai mo antha le a bo bedi fela fa le gore o mo mai bonga kwa pele se sera gore Joel Monye mabelo ana di mitara a di kilometer di le soma a ma bedi le bongwe e batla nna mabelo a gagwe a mba moratwe fela re tla bona gore o tatsa maka mo go ntjang ga iso na gagwe tlanna e gagametseng khatlang le bontsima ga mo go jalo le bo la ke mohale yo setseng go bona gala gore ke team o tlanna le mathatanya na mo tsa monya lo ne le belo le fela ga go nna jalo re lebeletse jalo mosimane go tswa jalo mo Helena, just mentioning the darkness that we see there in the uh, half marathon of the old mutual two oceans marathon. I think that's something that a lot of people don't really appreciate. I mean, I ran 10 kilometers almost before we even really just enjoying the full sunlight. And these guys that are doing the half marathon, I mean, most of their race is being run in the dark. I mean, now we finished uh, just in 20 minutes running along this grass behind us. And as we can see, there's just a little bit of a, a light glow in the in the sky. So yeah, to race your whole race in the dark is quite strange. So, but, but nice. it is cool. It is yeah. cool. I mean, that that's the benefit of it is that it's nice and cool. You're not expending mm. extra energy by you know um, extra sweat because it's because your your heart and your your body are trying to deal with the temperatures mm. of outside. It's just purely what your body is um, yeah. is using up as energy. Yeah, it'd be, it's optimal running conditions this morning. So it's nice for these guys. Be interesting to see how they find the the wind if it's made much of a difference, but it's not too bad. And in the, and the beauty of these guys is that they can actually run in a bunch and sort of work off each other, protect themselves from that wind, leave some poor fellow in the front to take it all. <laughs> All right, well, the sunlight is just starting to come up behind us here on the UCT grounds. So there's some people that have been up for a very long time, and they've been getting interactive with social media using the hashtag OMTOM2014, which is the hashtag you can use on both Instagram as well as Twitter. Here are some Twitter messages. Good luck to my parents. Run for your lives by Justin Henry 06. Uh, Milo Joe saying, uh, experiencing serious FOMO for not participating in OMTOM 2014. Well, you've always got next year, and it's definitely something that you should perhaps take up because it's just an absolutely wonderful vibe. And who w wouldn't want to be running in that beautiful scenery there? Olwetu is saying it's amazing to see that there are 70-year-old people who still participate in marathons, whereas some of the youth don't bother. Well, perhaps this is your opportunity to get all your friends together and to say, hey, guys, instead of sleeping late on a Saturday, let us get out and let's actually do something. Maybe like a park run. Start with something easier. Just a 5k. Coxat saying, watched the two oceans records being established all those years ago. Both runners were flying. Hope it happens again in my lifetime. Well, I wonder if that one million run will be enough to actually get those runners to be able to do something very, very special today. 2014, good luck to the guys from Josie. I know you're going to be killing it. Yes, well, coming from the high fault, you do enjoy the extra oxygen that your body gets to get while you run down at sea level. Watching Arm Tom 2014 Half Marathon cheering on my daughter, Tamini. All the best of luck to Tamini. Perhaps, Dad, you can join her next year. Haven't even made my bed yet, but I'm glued onto the screen. Well, Helen, please stay right where you are because there's just going to be so much more. And I think as commentators, Helen, each and every single one of us that are working on this race, we're just so excited for this just to get mm. underway because we want to see the battles that are going to be oh. taking place. Oh, yes, that's this year, there's lots of different elements to, to the run. And that one million rand uh, prize, if you can break the record, make, it's going to make a huge difference. All right, somebody's saying there that their wake-up call this morning was a helicopter and all the cheers from the start line. Yeah, I'm sure 27,000 runners make a little bit of noise, don't they? Yeah, <laughs> not, not a good morning to sleep in, so get out and, and cheer these runners on. I think what we saw there from some of those Twitter messages was people saying that some of the youth aren't even taking part and you see those that are in their age still taking part in running. But I think that more and more people are starting to become conscious of looking after themselves and being yeah. a part of something that's greater, expressing the ability of your body. Oh, very much so in, the, in, in running. In ten, I think the, the, our 10K running, our short, shorter distances are quite healthy in South Africa for a long time because of Comrades in Two Oceans. They're a little bit neglected, but 
we, we are seeing a lot more people getting out there and giving it a go. And then they, they'll eventually end up here. All right, well, you got to run because your body was designed to run. That, of course, is the 2014 theme here at the Old Mutual Two Oceans Marathon. There's an opportunity for you at home to win, not only to get involved via social, social media, but you can also win some awesome gifts from Adidas. A smart run watch, perhaps, or maybe a pair of energy boost running shoes. It's as easy as answering this easy question. When did the... When did Adidas become the technical sponsor of the race? Was it last year, the 2013 race? If you think that's the answer, well then select A. Or otherwise, do you think it is B? Did Adidas become the technical sponsor in 1993? You can just SMS the keyword Adidas followed by your name and your answer to 33763. And that's how you can win either a smart run watch or a pair of energy boost running shoes. All right, those are some fantastic gifts. I wouldn't mind entering. I don't think we're allowed to, though, no, Helen. I don't think so. Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I think something when it comes to running is that a lot of people are like, oh, well, you know, I don't have a heart rate monitor. I don't have a watch. I don't, you know, I don't have the correct shoes. But I think the thing is, you know, just get out there. Just start doing something. I think that's the beauty of the sport. You actually can get out. It's minimal. You just need a pair of shoes. The biggest challenge is just to have the desire and make that effort. And I think just get out there, do half a kilometre and build up every day. But the, the simplicity of, the, of running is actually what makes it so appealing. All right. Well, that's what makes the sport appealing, but really what helps to put together an event like the Old Mutual Two Oceans Marathon is the board and the body that work tirelessly to actually put the event together, to make sure that it runs smoothly, runs without a hitch, and especially when it comes to something like the Two Oceans Marathon, where it's really a festival of running. It's the 56, it's the 21, it's the fun runs, it's the trail runs, it's the special Friday run. It's really a festival that incorporates a number of different events and that's all thanks to the body that works behind putting this race all together let's hear from the chairman of the old mutual two oceans marathon everybody enters this race and a lot of people say this is very expensive but dear athletes a portion of their money we give back to, to the community we have started an initiative called the two oceans marathon initiative where we, this is a charitable organization within the Two Oceans, um, and where we identify three charities. This year we have identified Sandcock, which deals with penguins. We have identified Putfoot, that puts shoes on our children, and we've identified uh, Sandpox, we're putting back into the environment. Our philosophy is that we just don't want to have people come and run, but we need to give back to, to, to the community. And every year we decide before at our strategic meeting which charities or which organizations we're going to sponsor, where we're going to ask the athletes to donate money to give to these, you know, to these charities. Um, we also have another charity, which is a bigger uh, charity, where we're going to take children from our fun runs and nurture them through their schooling, their tertiary um, education, into university and giving them programs where they can become better athletes because we want to have these athletes winning the ultra, the half, not foreigners f out of other countries, but we want to nurture these athletes to go th through there. Starting from uh, Friday, when we have the first race, the Nappy Dash, to our prestige race, the Ultra Marathon, we expect them about 50,000 plus. That includes our friendship runs, our fun runs, our, our half marathons, our, our runners, and, and, and it's phenomenal that, we, that our, our, ultra our Ultra Marathon was sold out four weeks before cutoff time. We, we got our 11,000 at least that, that will be taking part.
All right, there's so much history behind this race now in its 45th year. That was the chairman of the Two Oceans Marathon. Now, I've had Helen Luca in studio who has had a multiple number of gold medals. She's also won the race. A final comments from you before you go and join the commentary team about whether or not we're actually going to be seeing that uh, course record broken and who your favorite is in both races. Well, in the men's, I think it's wide open. It's going to be really interesting. I think there's going to be a lot of people falling away. Very hard to predict. I think we're going to see Elena Nagalieva win the women's. Quite a tough one. I don't think we're going to see a new record, though. All right. Well, Helen says she doesn't think that she's going to be a course record in the ultra. But perhaps there may be one in the half marathon. Because, of course, we are following what's happening in the half marathon as well. So let's take a look. Well, let's rather join our commentators who will take us through what's happening in the half marathon. Gentlemen. Well, Jean Laurent, le Laurilet, Diotle Yeah, Kirin. Well, it's certainly getting light here in uh, in Cape Town, and uh, it's 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 quite late in in the year for the Easter weekend, so it does get light a little bit later. Uh, there we are on the leader in the half marathon, and that's uh, uh, Kirin. Let's have a look and see who that is. 53 minutes running into the 2014 Old Mutual Tuition's Half Marathon. And your leader in the transient colors is Stephen Mokoka, the winner of last year's Half Marathon and a course record of 63.35. And uh, definitely this year showing that uh, he's out to do it again. Well, Stephen Mokoka really has had a fantastic year. He's at the World Half Marathon Champs. He's, uh, without a doubt, the country's best half marathon runner. And uh, here he is again. Uh, we can't see the runner behind. It looks like he's got quite a big lead. Well, Stephen Mokoka is such a versatile athlete, Ian, ranging from the distance of 1,500 meters on the track all the way up to the marathon. He was the uh, winner of the 2013 Shanghai Marathon last year in December, running a 2.09 there. But uh, Ian, he's got a PB of uh, 60 minutes, and uh, his time in last year's race, 63.35. So it just shows you the severity of the course. Well, 63.35 he ran on this course. Not an easy course here, as uh, the following chasing runners go through. So uh, if anything, around about 63 minutes will be good running today. Yeah, 63 minutes, uh, just over three minutes a kilometer in the uh, race there. But uh, as we see, a beautiful shot there of the overhead. That uh, will be the leaders of the uh, 56K, Ian. Yes, out they go, and it's getting lighter. They're heading down towards Musenberg. The course, of course, uh, goes straight down towards the, the ocean at False Bay. And the first time they see the ocean, the Indian Ocean, in fact, is at Musenberg. Then they make a right turn, run along uh, the sea. But that is the ultra marathon. And uh, Hody, that lead group looks like about... Uh, 10 or 12 runners. Maybe one will pull out uh, quite soon from here. Uh, uh, Yes, definitely, Hody. And what's interesting to see here is to see the uh, press truck just in front there with all the cold journalists on there. I've been on there a few times. The interesting thing here, Ian, is only, as you mentioned, a bunch of about 10 athletes, normally in two oceans, is in the beginning, there's a huge bunch of around 40 to 50 athletes. So that is indicative of a very fast early pace. We don't know exactly. And as soon as we have a feel for the pace, we do have spotters out there and there are a couple of uh, ch uh, chaser uh, mats on the way and we'll see exactly how fast they're going. But as the shot widened out just at the bottom of the screen there's the second bunch so people are positioning themselves and we've said this queue and all the way through the build up to this race that the tactics today are going to be fundamentally different from the last few years because of that record and uh, that is the lead bunch well, very interesting lead bunch. We have the, the uh, athletes in the Max Delete colors. On the left-hand side, Charles Gianni, and the very interesting athlete, Moses Njodzi, on his uh, left-hand side. Former winner of Two Oceans and uh, the fourth fastest ever time. Well, Charles Gianni, of course, is, uh, is famous for his front run. He's done it in Comrades Marathon. Lovely guy, but I must say that Charles Gianni is not the kind of guy that I would have had perhaps in my top ten. No, definitely. Uh, he's more of a comrades runner, but he does have a, a good time of a 2.16 in the marathon. But we can see the guys coming from the back there. We'll see the, the type of athletes like uh, Mabutile Labopo, Andre Foyun, those type of strong runners coming through, and uh, it's going to be make or break.
o ka bona mo ge di gore ba tloga ba itukisitse ga botse masogana ba bolela faka Charles Chianwe le gore go ga ntshiretse ba gore o felletse le ro shoma ga botse mabelong a moguto e faela le ba kenne go tla ba boima it looks like tough now um uh, you know. Well, there they go, down towards Musenberg. Uh, at first light here in the old neutral two oceans. Two groups, and that second group catching up on the leaders. And uh, the pace obviously very quick down there. Uh, looking for that marathon. Thompson Magawana's time of 3.03 is in their sights. Uh, so they do have a bit of a head when looking at those trees. It's difficult uh, to see much movement there, but we'll wait and see later on. Well, in the uh, pictures, the lead bunch in the front there, and uh, the athletes on the far left of the picture, just behind Charles in the Max Elite colors, Khatez, the fastest marathon runner in the field today, the 1999 uh, Tokyo Marathon winner, which incidentally that time, 2.06.33, still the course, uh, Este course record, and uh, David Khatebe as well, the defending champion right there. David Khatebe in the bunch, but there's Khatebe, second from uh, the left there in the red and white colours. Khatebe, uh, the uh, South African marathon record holder, very, very fast runner, and uh, but he's now over 40. But he is not scared of anything. He will be up there for as long as he possibly can. But to go on, I'm not David Khatebe. I'm going to go to the metro. 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 Ma emo abone ho om om ditam mo ilor ho ibeli di kilometer aje ma sumetlan. Ika ba ilor ho ota shuma ga botu chile ma emo ngabutlan ho ma fike marathon ho mer levele chore. Ma kamu ngai mingwa ga isamu di mela gosene ni ho levele chile vo Johannes Kekana ma mingwa ga ma sumeneti. Ake ba bone. I don't see Kekana and 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 Muzingi in this group. Well, we see the, the front bunch there. A lot of the athletes from the uh, NetBank team, Max Delete and Impala. On the right-hand side of the screen, Ian, uh, David Katebe in the Impala colors. He was the uh, surprise winner in last year's race. And we also see the likes of Mark Vokoroni, uh, Munyarati Jari, and uh, Colin Makaza in the Toyota colors. But as you mentioned, Hardy, uh, Johannes Kekan and them, I think they'll be hanging back a little bit in the back of the bunch. They've been here before. They know what to do, and they know how to do the business. Well, David Fateve's time last, uh, last year was 3.08.54, and you may recall that the conditions last year were also very, very windy. But, uh, he needs to find about five minutes or so quicker than that to beat the record this year. So, as we said, it's, it's pretty still early days, but now that lead group, Hody, is uh, something like 25 strong, big group in front. It looks like they are not mad, they are not bad. 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 They are not Yes, 34 kilometers is very early, as you said, Hodi, to, to go ahead. But what uh, actually was quite a funny story was that the athlete who came second, there was such a big bunch of athletes that they were not even aware that David was ahead. And he came through waltzing into the finish, the uh, local Western Province athlete in Tandazo Klina. And when he got to the finish, he said he had won. But they actually said, I'm sorry, you actually came second. Well, prize money, 250,000. There it is. That will happen irrespective of the finishing time. But, of course, uh, the big one million rand incentive. They're heading up now, Q, and towards the 10-kilometer mark. And uh, they need to be there in around about 32 minutes on the schedule for the course. Now, we'll try and get a split at 10 kilometers, but that is the key one. The men need to be there around about 32 minutes, and the women somewhere around about between 36 and 37. And that is pretty swift running. Definitely, Ian. I mean, you run a 36 or 37 minute 10K as a lady, and uh, you're cracking towards the top 10 in one of the uh, competitive uh, ladies' races around the country. But uh, definitely, that early pace, it's going to be very. Uh, we have to see what the weather would be like. As you mentioned, that uh, the wind is quite strong today, but as you said, there are 32 minutes for the men and around 36, 37 minutes for the women. Very fast running. Heading down now towards the Musenberg area. The, the main road goes absolutely straight from the Newlands at start, right about 10 kilometers ago, right down. And they will be, uh, at the moment, a little bit sheltered from the wind, although it does come gusting in. It's, uh, that is now the leader in the half, and no surprises there. Definitely no surprises, Ian. Stephen Mokoka, one of South Africa's 
greatest, greatest athletes of uh, the start of the millennium. And uh, he's within the last uh, kilometer of the race now, Howdy. That's the final climb up into the, the track. And he's got about uh, around about a minute 30 in order to break the record. It's going to be touch and go. Nito go bontsha bile a sa akitima ka go iketla yena Stephen Mokoka e bile o pele ga bona eh o bontsha le gore motho mo ka feletse le rokgona go roba record he looks quite uh, comfortable in his race Definitely very comfortable athlete Stephen Mokoka he's been SA champion in distances from uh, the track of 1500 meters all the way up through to the marathon but here we see Stephen Mokoka coming through and he's gonna miss the record because he still has a bit of a downhill into the uh, UCT grounds here and then he has to run across the stretch of two rugby fields I think it's uh, for him it looks like a reasonably comfortable when I think the second runner was something like 50 60 maybe 70 meters behind him well there it is but but it's a lot further perhaps than it looks on television and Stephen Mokoka fresh from the world champion the South African team there got fourth place and that was a really great performance by our men in the world half that was in Copenhagen so they all did well but Stephen Wakoka was the pick of the bunch he must be in the top uh, 20 half marathon runners in the world I'd say Stephen Lesejo Makoka in the colors of Transnet coming through to defend his title how do he was the winner in last year's race and uh, great run by Stephen today Nito Kurile Akiti Marabote, Stephen Roleka Rosirilicha, my Moraroa Pelo, maybe or Honor Felicia, a Felicia or Monaro, Osanale, Smart, or Yamafello. He runs faster, he now starts to run even more faster. What an exciting run! He's an absolutely brilliant runner. So here we go at the end of the 2014 uh, Two Oceans Half Marathon. Stephen Mokoka, the winner last year. He did it uh, last year in uh, just over one hour and three minutes. Today it's going to be over one hour and four minutes. The winner this year, once again, Stephen Mokoka. 64 minutes and 13 seconds unofficially we see uh, Wilson Kipsang in the blue track seat there the world record holder but uh, the next athletes coming through Joel Mone, Gladwin Mzazi and Benedict Moeng closing out the top four well, Benedict Moeng, of course, ran the Xiamen Marathon in China on the 2nd of January. That was courtesy of the Conrad's Marathon. So good for, to see him down there. But Stephen Mokoka, absolutely in a class of his own. And uh, there he was, the winner again. And uh, that finish now is getting a little crowded. Definitely, uh, we saw Joel Mone there in a sprint finish, and uh, he might have taken the third spot, the same as last year. But we see two of the uh, NetBank athletes coming through. The uh, Ethiopian, who was favoured, Ian, really, really fast runner, also with the 60-minute PP, finishing uh, just in front of uh, Jose Tosane. Well, the club competition very, very strong, and uh, the clubs really battle for for uh, dominance here. But that is uh, one of the Ethiopian runners. But, uh, the conditions here are pretty good for half marathon running. It's quite cool with that breeze blowing and I don't think uh, Hori that the, 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 these guys were troubled too much by the wind this is where they experience a lot of wind in 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 um, ultra marathon cure definitely how the the uh, half marathon sheltered by a lot of the suburbs but uh, the athletes making their way down through to Musenberg we see the 11 kilometer mark 35 minutes uh, 53 seconds so uh, in that means that uh, probably through 10 k's they went through just over 32 minutes well we're hoping to get a split on that 10 kilometer um, distance because that is absolutely key to uh, to do that remember that we said that these men needed to go through in around about 32 minutes and uh, they are running a little bit into the wind so we need to take a little bit off that but 32 minutes for the women the around about 36 minutes and 30 so at the moment uh, the women should be around about 10 k's but that is the lead group in the men's 56 k and the man up front is uh, charles gianni running in the max elite colors he's got a couple of gold medals in uh, the uh, comrades marathon over the years charles Gianna loves running in the front very very strong runner and i must say he looks particularly good at this stage 
Kiana Chelsea and Wadi Wara Hope, Le Home, Otora, Wancha Rora, we get Lille at Pacava Fitile, the Kilometer Jail, Somi, Homera Viala, we take a Rore, Via Pelignana, Lerelor Tavana or Nakava Salakaranaco, Yaukarova record, Reva Yapel, twenty eight kilometers, the first twenty eight kilometers, it's a failure level, so it should be very easy to run for the first twenty eight kilometers. Yes, the first uh, the first 28 k's is pretty flat. They're still going down towards uh, Musenberg, and those bikes you can see, well, there they are. Those are the um, in the two oceans, uh, old mutual two oceans. They have bikes indicating the first, second, third men, the first veteran, first lady. So that's what you see those bikes all along the route. Well, Charles Gianni, the uh, Max Elite athlete, a very versatile athlete, Ian. He has a 217 marathon PB, and uh, we see the leaderboard at the 11K mark. Stephen Di Corbo in front there, the winner of last year's City to City marathon, making his presence felt early on. And we see Charles Gianni, Chad the uh, SA record holder, uh, Fiesa Jayi, one of the Ethiopians in the net bank colors, and then Edwin Chimombo from Zimbabwe. So that's the lead group at around about 11Ks. And uh, I would say that uh, without an exact split, they will give or take 30 seconds on, uh, on target for that, uh, for that time, that 32-minute time at 10 k's. And right now, that group running carefully. A couple of those guys will be running in the pack to get out of the wind. They do get shielded a little bit, don't they, Kieran? Definitely. And uh, the more... Um could I say knowledgeable runners, the likes of Gertes and them, you see them tucked in there, getting shelter from the other athletes and athletes like Charles, really using a lot of energy. But how the Charles Gianni, he is a 217 marathon runner. He's gotten gold medal finishes in the Soweto Marathon, Johannesburg Marathon, Comrades Marathon twice, but just not the two oceans. His best time is uh, 13th in this race, but uh, could today be the day that he cracks that top 10? I was watching the, the trees in that, in that chopper shot and there's quite a bit of movement in those trees but they weren't kind of leaning over so there's obviously a bit of breeze blowing down in that area it's uh, it's, it's it's very much to, to later on they can make a little left turn um, boys drive uh, goes up that mountain in the background they'll, they'll go past that and it's flat 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 all the way down to Musenberg and over to the right is, is way in the far, in the far distance to Kai but there on the left hand side of the screen you can see the corner they turn around that's false bay and uh, they will be looking to see how many white caps and waves are coming flying off false bay to see how windy it is well, they're not yet at the point where they've still got a standard marathon. Remember, with 14 Ks behind them, they've still got a standard marathon to go. So it is still quite early days. But remember, we have uh, this exclusive race day competition brought to you by Adidas and five lucky winners, uh, Smart Run Rot, a Smart Run Watch and Running Hamper. Further five runners, a pair of Energy Boost running shoes. So remember, you need to understand when did... Adidas first become official technical sponsor of the Old Mutual Two Oceans Marathon. Was it 2013 or was it 1993? So SMS the keyword Adidas followed by your name and the answer to 33763 and you could pick up one of those prizes. Back to the race now. And look on the left there, Q, and there's a lot of movement in those trees. It's blowing a real wind down there. Definitely, that wind is really picking up and... Uh, Yesterday in the press conference, there was a lot of talk about the record. Haldi, the weather conditions were perfect. There was not a breath of wind, but uh, today it's out, and it's going to be quite interesting to see. Are they still going to try for the record, or is it going to become more tactical and just go for the 250,000 Rand first prize? Moya ke thuba elo ikholo moya ke ona bo thata jo bo kholo ke wen re lebeletse gore ba ba lebeletse ona record re ba ka e roba e fela ga ba ya le ba tla ba ba tseba gore maemong a pele ba tla no e kholetsa diketi tshe magolo a mabedi masome tlano really the, the the weather conditions should be a concern but they will try hard to get the 1 million rand 
or one million rand up for grabs for that record of uh, 30344 by Thompson Magawana in the men's race and then as well in the women's race from Fifth Van der Merwe that uh, three hour 3036 Ian coming from 1989 and Thompson's in 1988 a long long standing record well it's not surprising that those records are still standing because both those runners on the day broke the world 50 kilometer record on the way so you know that's not that's not mickey mouse so those records have been standing since before 1990 and uh you know they've 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 had people going at them for years and years and years and years and really good runners but interestingly the second fastest time ever was johnny halberstadt who ran before so in those 80s boy they had some good runners in there Definitely the uh, 305 from Johnny Hobbs. That the fastest athlete on this course is uh, Marco Mumbo when he ran that 305 in 2005. But the uh, first athlete from uh, the half marathon today, Diana Lebo Palula, in the colors of Max Delete 72.39. She is going to miss the course record, but a very fast time still indeed, backing that win up uh, two weeks ago in the Cape Town 10k race. That is an incredible performance by Anna, Diana Lebo Palula, very much known as a, as a track and cross country runner, also goes up to the 10K distance, but she has completely metamorphosed herself in 2014. I had a chat with her at the end of the Spa Women's Challenge Show, which was two weeks ago, where she beat everybody, including Renee Calmer. And I'm amazed to see that Palula now has shifted up to the half marathon distance and is able to beat uh, Renee Calmer, who was uh, the top South African performer in the world champs uh, a, a few weeks ago. So well done to her. She's now training out of Pretoria with Michael Seme, and she said that she's never trained so hard. She's never done so much quality. So I think this is a remarkable performance, and I think this is going to be a lifetime best by some distance. Metrona Palula Otora Ashimilera Votsikena Levo Palula Ramotseva or Kitima Modi Trek and Fella Rabello, one or Kitima Ravo Nolo and Ike Kile, if you like to tell a level of Nolo Nolo, Fenya, but for Sana Levo and over Rene Kalma, Kitta Wanchore, Renale, Kora Renale, Talente. So that is a lifetime best for her by some distance. And uh, Wilson kept saying there on her, and she can't believe it. It really is amazing. And there's Karma. And uh, I think that Renee is going to be just as surprised as the rest of us because Karma really was the hot pot favorite. Definitely. Renee, uh, a former winner of the Two Oceans Half Marathon. She finished second here last year in 74.52. So 74.20 running faster today, but just not good enough for the win. Diana Lebo Palula running a great, fantastic race. You'll see there the colors uh, that Renee is running in is, um, is Modern Athlete. So that's her new club, which is a publication. So second for her. And let's have a look at who comes in the top five. The uh, next athlete coming here, the Ethiopian, uh, who was uh, also two weeks back in the uh, Cape Town Spa Ladies race, coming second there, running a 33.05 and 74.75 minutes today. Great run by her to take third. That's Gamede. Gamede running a lot in South Africa now. She's third here today. She was uh, second in the Spa race uh, two weeks ago, and she won the Johannesburg leg of the Spa Challenge way back in October. So Gamede, um, I think it's Haitembu Gamede from Ethiopia. And uh, Mapaseka Makanya coming in. And uh, always uh, very, very uh, easy to pick up. Now, Mapaseka Makanya was the winner of the Spa Grand Prix last year as she picked up a motor car. So the competition fierce, but Mapaseka, not really a half marathon runner, more of a 10K specialist. Yes, Mapaseka, that's a huge PB, 75.33. Her only recorded half marathon before that was uh, an 86 minute in the Jersey South, but she's a very, very good runner. She won the uh, SA 1500 meter title recently, and uh, last year the Gauteng Marathon, so great, great run by her. Well, that looks like a visiting runner from uh, outside of South Africa. We'll just need to get her, her details. But Christine Kalmer running... Uh, in the colors of boxer, that's Renee's uh, younger sister, Christine Kalmer, where she'll come into shot in just a sec. Lavinia, 
We'll get her name in a sec. Lavinia coming in, then Christine Kalmer. Christine is one of the few athletes in South Africa, few elite athletes, got a full-time job. She's an engineer, and she trains really, really early in the morning. So the Kalmer sisters are very consistent over the circuit in South Africa. That's Christine Kalmer finishing now in around about uh, sub-77. Very high-quality women's field today. Definitely, and uh, we still yet to go to 77 minutes, and we've had around six or seven athletes through uh, Lavinia last year coming fourth, and uh, there we have Jenna Chalanor, 76.58. Really great race by her, and uh, backing it up from the World Half Marathon Champs three weeks ago. Yes, Jenna Chalanor is another runner that has uh, improved dramatically in the last year. She's been training uh, in, in the Enduracad situation under Ilana Mayer's training uh, academy, if you like. But back now to the 56 kilometer, and uh, they're heading towards Musenberg. Well, uh, Haldi, they are still definitely very fresh. Uh, they will be approaching 15 k's just down at the corner where you see the uh, beachfront coming through there by Musenberg. If the guys are starting to feel strained now, Haldi, I think it's going to be a long way to the finish. Well, the woman that we didn't quite know who it was in the half marathon, that was Lavinia Haitope. We need to get her name. The uh, running in the black with a little headband, we saw her finishing the half marathon, and she is a Namibian. We're getting back now to the main event, the 56-kilometer uh, race. That is uh, the turn off to Boys Drive there on the right hand side, just outside the uh, Musenberg precinct as they head down. Big group, a uh, couple of uh, guys out front. There you can see them. There's the press truck out uh, in the front. Guys must be a little chilly, I suppose, down there, but they're used to it. We won't say how they warm themselves up, but they have a lot of fun on that. And that's Charles Gianni once again in the lead. We see Charles Gianni, but a very interesting, Ian, if you look on the right-hand side of the picture, the two athletes, the one in the net bank colors, Marco Mozibuko, just in front of him, Mabutile Lebopo, the 2010 Two Oceans winner and very, very big uh, favorite for today's race. This is very interesting to see. Mabutile Haldi never, ever goes to the front unless he knows today is his day and he's up front. We're yet to see a new, new face it's up front knowing very well that the one million rand is up for grabs. Well, they're not exactly new faces, but they are perhaps surprising faces, especially Mabatila Lobopo, who normally doesn't uh, doesn't do much front running and uh, we thought this that the tactics may be way different this year i must say that we're still really quite early in this race so let's not count our chickens yet but uh, once we've now got i can see one two three four guys that are breaking away from that that lead group there they are there's gianni on the right labopo a couple of guys the net bank runner and then the main pack so maybe a couple of guys just testing doing a bit of pushing but is surging early on kieran it's really interesting to see uh, Mabutile up front there in the uh, colors of Max Elite. He was the 2010 winner of the Two Oceans Marathon. And uh, Ian, interesting that he turns 40 this year in December. And then last year in December, he won the uh, very tough high-altitude Mokotlong Marathon in Lesotho in a course record of 228. Let me repeat that, a course record of 228. He's a 213 marathon runner, just showing you how hard that course was. Yes, Mabatili Lubopo, and uh, he has a brother that runs in these races as well. And uh, Gianni trying to hold on to a water sachet there with, uh, with some difficulty. One thing uh, interesting about this race this year, talking about water sachets, is that uh, they're going green, is, is the old mutual two oceans. And on the whole entire Chapman's Peak part of the route, there are no water sachets. There are no plastic out there. They're actually having biodegradable paper cups with water in. So there's a bit of information going green. Environment. 
Joining us now in commentary is Helen Luca. Helen, uh, just a little comment from you about the win of Diana Lebo Palula in the half marathon. Yeah, very impressive. And I think it was quite good to see the number of women coming in running fantastic times. And uh, it look, it, it's a good grounding for South African running. And I think we're going to see such an improvement in our marathon times, etc., based on those performances today. Well, let's uh, stay with Charles Gianni for a while. The Bopo on the right, Gianni on the left. That's uh, the two leaders heading down uh, towards Musenberg. We'll be back with the 2014 edition of the Old Mutual Two Oceans Marathon just after this. And once a year, for over 30,000 runners, this becomes their amphitheater. It's ShopRite's big Easter promotion, where we've bought more than ever, so you save even more with our low prices. Like a 250-gram tin of Rie Coffee Instant Coffee for just $24.99, and two litres of assorted Ola ice cream tubs for only $29.99 each. And with a range of more than 200 different kinds of Easter eggs, there's even more reason to come and shop with us this Easter. ShopRite, lower prices you can trust. Always. Ching, ching, change. Helen, how do you how did you see the 21 case going? Uh, the, the 21 kilometer, I think that the ladies ran extremely well, well, all, and the men as well. Um, I always sort of keep an eye on monitoring how uh, the performances of the women. Very impressive. I mean, I, mean the, I think the top 10 all came in way under 80 minutes. Um, good signs for the future of road running. And those women eventually coming through to run the 56 and maybe getting that million rand one year. So... Yeah, great. It was As, great. Especially because Mapa Sega was, was her first yeah. time doing this. And Talented. she's on top ten. Yeah. Bab Tulani, we, we're looking at uh, Diana Lebupalula. This is this is her second race, two oceans race, and there she is, who won it. How do you think the preparation went Uguti Abelaga Kona Nam Challenge? Are we winning the race? I think some of us aren't aware that she has got a very good coach. The coach who was actually looking after the lady who won the gold medal. I mean, in Olympics, I'm talking about Casta Semenya. And the coach who's looking after is Sam at Techies. He's a very good coach. Helen, let's just look at the, uh, the, the, the race that we're here for, especially the ultra marathon. 45, 54 minutes have went by, and we're looking at people like, people that we've talked about haven't been there. We yeah. haven't seen most of them that we've been. David Kantebe, haven't, we haven't seen him. Where, where do you see the race going after 54, 55 minutes? Well, I think as you can see here, there's a few guys who have sort of decided to take it out there and um, maybe chasing after the uh, million rand uh, on offer for breaking the record. If you wanted to get that record, you had to have commitment from the beginning. And those are what those guys have done. Then we see the bunch a little bit further back, just being a little bit tactical, maybe thinking they can pick the others up or just come through and perhaps pick up just sort of the first prize money, which is 250,000 rand. The other thing that you learn is that there are few Kenyan runners here. Do you see any chances with, because we always know where they are, Ethiopians, where they are, there, there must be a winner between them. Do you see any, ch any, any chance with, with Kenyan runners? Kenyan runners 
perform when they run as a team. Also, as South African, we'll have only be able to do well when we run as a team. I just wonder if all that group that is running over there, they've got a plan. They know that they are chasing for the record. Who is maybe possible to run for a record? If that's the case, then we'll have a good time. But if they are just running without teamwork and they're just hanging on there, it will be very difficult for them to break a record. Mohi jole kahanse rebuwa utla huma kalaure record tu na yutoa kai record tu kile ni ya rebuwa jalo kijitete Thompson Mahawa ni kasi limo sasa siki tima shume rebu matume arobedi limetu irobedi inaele record tu ni kilomita rata na tima shume amashano limetu itileting mauti ngai linga kona hui matari horate taru limetu tu emiraru limetu tu anema shume amani limetu emene irir karibu na horobe na utla se hui tahale mki mangi utla se ngai tibo neti baure unkali bilolena di kobe utendi tijani vanzo basile ba mati sana kapele kama anem and if if we, we go around Helen and look at Dikobe and Tijani, do you think any chance or it's one of those where after 30 Ks they'll start going back and the best runners will come forward? Two Oceans is a very tactical race and I think it's a little bit early to make a long you know, a prediction at this stage. It's, this part of the course is extremely fast and the, they, the test will come once they sort of have run through Musenberg, they turn right into Fishhook, and then you start the climb. So a little bit early yet to say exactly how this race is going to turn out. This is the best race ever. It happens every year. It's the two oceans comrade it's the two oceans marathon, sorry, twenty fourteen where we're looking at it. And the Maisenberg, as you're saying, where after after the Maisenberg the roads start changing. Where do you think will be the easiest for them after Mazenberg? Well, I think after the, 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 the challenge with a race like this is that you've got quite a lot of support, in the, particularly in this area where they'll be running up and approaching the 21 kilometre. And um, then you move into an area called Sun Valley, which is sort of quite, it's quiet. And people don't, aren't sort of expecting that area. It's almost one of these unknown patches, and it's the patch from the 21 until you meet, until you get to the 28 kilometres, where you, then you start that little base of the climb onto Chapman's Peak. And I think that's when we will start to see this race really shaping up, testing the people on the hills and how they can um, do the second half of the race. Harle kule hona jwa le hore bena ho tahle ho etsa haledi fe ho bane hara tsona ka o fela ho ntse hona le batho be le hore mabitso a bona ke a tseba halang ha re celebrity o teng ntate Bryce Fordyce le a soka a bona hala le bilonela le loholo empa o teng ka rolona mo o teng re tsebang hore ha re bua ka mehla ka Bruce Fordyce re bua ka mohlodi mampudi ya ile nga wina comrade marathon maghetlo a robong ka o fela ntate thulane everybody's here Zolabat is here. Bryce Fordyce is here. What, especially Bruce Fordyce? What, what can you, what can you, what can you say about him? Bruce is good for comrades. For two ocean, it's another thing. It's a, a total different race. It's 56 kilometers. It's a fast race. I mean, in a race like this, you have to run a very good marathon. And for you to be able to run a very good marathon, five weeks before two ocean you should know what you are capable of running a marathon then you'll know that you are determined to run a good two ocean if you haven't done that you'll have doubts and because we'll come here not knowing how fit you are for two ocean and two ocean start after 19 kilometers because you start climbing right up to Chapsmont Peak. After Chapsmont Peak, we have got that challenging downhill before Constantia Neck. And then you work the hard way all the way to the end. And we have done a proper training. Believe me, we'll have a good train. But if you haven't done a proper training, we'll have a difficulty. Well, we see uh, two leading ladies on the screen at the moment, and these are the Ethiopian women who have really come down here. Their goal is to get that million rand, and they, they were very quiet about what they were going to do or how they would approach the race other than just get out there and run. The one lady we see on the screen in the front has a very good pedigree, has a 226 marathon to her name, but that was done way back in 2008. So she certainly is the most talented runner in the field, in the women's field, but however, her performances were quite a few years ago. 
Chaloti ki ena yanze ngama tapele hajwa le mutu horeng ena elongo le mutu tulu mungai sale bakena jalo le bilone na le le holo la di kilomita rata mashuma mashano le mutu etsleting me ndato tulane if we look at both ladies like Helen said they are from Ethiopia Ethiopians have got those names when coming to long runs or, or marathons do you see any chances with both of them? Toshin is a total different race to a marathon you have got 14 kilometers extra on it. And for you to be able to carry yourself on that, you must know how fit you are. In most of the races they run overseas, they are quite flat. And to Ocean is not flat at the end of the race. And to run that record that Fred has run, it's quite a challenge for them. Because I doubt very much if they will be able to run faster in the last 14 kilometers. Well, these ladies seem to be running quite a good pace. I've worked out for them to break this record. They've got to average eight kilometers every 30 minutes. And I think that they may be approaching the, you know, sort of possibly have just gone through 16 kilometers. We'll get a bit of clarity on that. And if that's the case, then they are on record pace. And here we are now. We can see in our picture some quite familiar faces when it comes to running the uh, two oceans. There we've got Alina and Alicia Nugalieva, and I think just tucked in next to her is Nina, another Russian athlete who they fear as to be their biggest competitor in today's event. So in this bunch, we have a race heating up, and then I think they'll also be wondering whether the Ethiopian competitors, those two ladies that we saw on the screen previously, can maintain their lead. Helen, can you say they do have chances, Elena and Olesia, especially if you look at the times that they've been running and defending their, their title. Now that they've been running an hour and two minutes uh, ahead, do you think they still have time to make the time that they've been doing all along and or improve it? I think they'll run very much what they've run in the previous years, which will be around um, the 3.35 to 3.40 mark i don't believe that they will make the record and in fact they themselves have said that they didn't think that record was attainable for them so it will be an interesting race but they know that if they can they're quite happy to pick up the 250,000 rand first prize purse the advantage or disadvantages of running a biggest marathon as a first race of the year to run such a race like two ocean as I said earlier on, you should have run already a marathon. In a very good time for you to go for a record here. And most of the athletes that have run here, I doubt very much they have I mean, shown that they can run a good time for a marathon. But the winner of the two ocean has run the Omtitlam in 301, which is 50 kilometers. So I don't know whether he's training for comrades or he's training for this race. If he's training for this to break this race, he can have a good race. But again, it's too early to, to ocean because he should have rested a bit because it's an extra eight kilometers. But if he runs for good comrades, then he doesn't know exactly which race he's preparing, he's preparing for. So Taninru who puts a son of Mohi, Mono Molinten, La Penguri, Record Tokyo, Na, a singing in Kadia Tenza, by Atlete, Aruna, Slingamata, Mona Hubana, Man Hubana, Yailing, Iroba, Casilimosa, 1988, in Elena Thompson, Mahawani, Moteng, Ilingamata, Kilometer, Razena, Zema, Shuma, Masano, Limitu, Silating, the Horace, Taro, Limitu, Miraro, Limitu, Zema, Shuma, and Limitu, Mine, Ha, Barretta, Ninting, Inse, Tere, Kimoretta, and Afrit, Fan de Merve, Eoyena, Ailing, Ayeta, Casilimosa, 1989, Ailamata, Kilometer. The importance and the charismatic of this, uh, the, the record holders. Do you think possibly somebody will break it today? Well, uh, the graph on the um, screen at the moment is going to sort of um, indicate to us just where we are sitting with regards to to the time and 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 if they are on target for the uh, record 
so far, I don't think really the record is in stake. Because we must remember, Thompson passed the 10 kilometers at 30 minutes. And the 21 kilometers in 66 minutes, under, I mean, under 67 minutes. He was really going for a record. And today, we haven't seen anything that shows us that the guys are training for, I mean, they are going for a record. And one other thing, I don't know whether they are training, I mean, they are running to break the record or to win the race. And also the fact, the weather, the beginning of the race, the first 12 kilometers or 15, guys were running against the wind. And I don't know whether, I mean, we passed that 30 kilo, I mean, that 10 kilometer or 15 kilometers in a record time for us to be able to get it. Oh, we didn't. Kilebilola <laughs> As we see now, it's going down. Helen? Yeah, no, the, the, this part of the route is very nice. It's undulating. It's it's quite um, quite quick now. But these two, two ladies from Ethiopia, the one, um, Shatia Gamesh, she actually her, ran a good marathon in Hong Kong last year. She ran a 235.18, quite humid conditions. She placed third in that race. But that's, that gives her quite a good platform to, to come in and run this two oceans. And I think the interesting thing with these athletes that have come through from Ethiopia is that they've actually paid for themselves to come and take part. So to to win prize money, to, to go for this incentive of a million rand, there's a huge reward for them. So this is why I think, apart from the fact that they're talented and they're good runners, they're really running with determination because they've, they've sacrificed a lot to be here and to be taking part in this event. World Championships the other person Helen that we can talk about is Shitai. Do you do you think Shitai has got she's got the, the, the possibility of being on top ten? Oh definitely. She she's got the potential. She's got the fastest marathon of any of the ladies in the field. Albeit was in Paris, I think, in about 2008. But she's run a 226 marathon, which is world class and if you think in the uh, up in um, Europe at the moment, last week we had the London Marathon. We've got Boston coming up. We had Rotterdam. Those, the, those are winning times. The 220 to 225. So this this lady is classy. So, but it was run a few years ago. Whether she still got that speed, we'll wait and see. Baptilani, the other thing is with the weather, we ha the weather was too beautiful today. Do you think with, with the wind still going strong, it's still giving, especially the guys, because they, they're looking like they're having a hard time going with the pace. Do you think that is giving problems with them? Now it has improved, but earlier on it wasn't good. They were running against the wind, and of which I believe they lost a bit of time. But now they have actually recovered at that time. But one other thing we need to make everybody aware, if you have run a marathon four years ago, a good time, it doesn't mean you will have a good race today. For you to be able to run a good time, it's determined by the event that you have run prior to the race. And these ladies here, I don't know 
whether they are capable to run that ultra marathon at the pace that they are running in because to me it's like they are running a marathon Basadi ba ba bedi bantu mbashi le ba hata kapele kiena shita yimoholi chelito ba shahanjalo Ethiopia Helen talk about this Well I met these two young ladies yesterday and they, they were very reserved and and keeping everything uh, to themselves but my goodness these ladies are tiny I think that they're under five foot and I'd hate to think how little they may have weighed but very 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 petite woman. Um, by far the, the, the smallest, I think, in stature of any of the girls taking part in the 56-kilometer race. And TV doesn't actually uh, allow one to just to see and realize how small they are. It's always an advantage to have a lighter body in ultra marathon because you are not tearing those muscles very much. And I think we are aware what happened in London Marathon and of which we are very fortunate here in South Africa to have Wilson Kipchita. He's tiny tall but he flows even if he walks and that's an advantage in ultras it's also an advantage also in this race in two oceans and we can see like now the guys are really making sure that they are making the race i mean interesting and they are taking the lead and saying those who wants to follow follow us if you want to break the record if that bunch is really want to break their record, they should be utilizing these guys to try to get closer for them to be able to break the record. But if they ignore and they worry about the win, they are not going to get the record. Well, there are two uh, runners, Gilbert and Dero, and uh, Simon there with him. There's the two of them. And the, the, the chasing pack, uh, Donovan, looks like it's, it's quite a long way back as they go through Fishhook. Ja, en ik denk dat voor de kinderen van Lom niet zo van het hart lopen. Hier is Gilbert Mutandiero, de broer van Elijah Mutandiero, wat ze weet om haar toon gewend heeft. Zo alle hart lopen verschrikkelijk van haar hier in. They certainly are going quickly. And uh, at this point in the course, they, they're coming away from the ocean. So the wind might be a little bit behind them, although you never really gain uh, with, the, uh, with the wind what you lose running into it. It's so uh, now. The women, of course, are, are, are altogether a different race. The Ethiopians are up front. But let's focus on these two guys. Mutendero, the, the, the Mutendero brothers are very, very competent runners. They are competent, but I don't know whether they have got an experience of running this race because the way they are going, I mean, it's looking very interesting and they, they make p the race possible for anybody who wants to win it. At the same time, the guy who wants to break the record to say, guys, let's go for it. One million is offered. For if it's an offer, so we have to take a chance in making sure that one gets it. Yeah, Tulani, a little trends, um, 68 minutes, the half marathon merk gegaan, and this a really good pass for a for a for a tight van dag, maar beslist nie um, record tijd nie. Maar soos jy kan sien, Gilbert Montandiro, sy ritme is um, al klaar bezig om een bykie um, um, pijn te vat. So ek voel dat hulle bykie te van een gaard loop. I don't know exactly at what distance they are on this time because that can help us to determine whether they are going for a record when they are or not going for a record. Yeah, they are amper by the 23 km mark. They are now near the Fiso Kopi Oomblak. Coming up, uh, not exactly towards the half, halfway mark, it's uh, now very strong running the guys in front and I would say that these guys are, are pretty much going for the record. We'll be back with more action after this break. A journey encompassing two oceans in one of the world's most beautiful cities. Cape Town, South Africa. For the world's most beautiful marathon. The following party election broadcast is brought to you in terms of the ICASA regulations governing the election period. The views expressed in this party election broadcast are those of the political party and not those of the SABC. If there is a poster child of forgotten people, Deep Slot is one. As the resident, we are sick and tired of the crimes which are happening here. 
every week there is a kid. There is a kid who passed away. There is a kid who has been found killed. Tuesday, 4 a.m., they found the kids in there. They were jumped in the toilet. They were raped too. And I feel pain for the parents. I feel pain for everybody living in Deep Sloot. We are just living like animals here. Locked in this room. Like, there's no safety here. <laughs> This party election broadcast was brought to you in terms of the ICASA regulations governing the election period. The views expressed in this party election broadcast are those of the political party and not those of the SABC. Back with the oceans, uh, the one ocean on the one side, the other ocean coming around at the corner. And beautiful conditions here, nice and sunny, nice and cool also. And remember for our viewers, we have our Adidas race day competition. And uh, 10 winners, in fact, are going to collect uh, a prize. What you need to do is uh, work out which year did Adidas first become the official technical sponsor of the Old Mutual Two Oceans Marathon. Was it 2013 or was it 1993? What you do to stand in line to win one of these prizes, SMS the keyword Adidas, A-D-I-D-A-S, followed by your name and the answer to 33763. That competition will run throughout the broadcast. Lovely prize from Adidas. Let's get back to the action. It looks like the men are a little bit behind record pace, Donovan. Yeah, business in my ik had verwacht dat hulle bekeer achter die route record sal wees, die wind baie verskriklik, maar binnen een paar kilometer gaan gaan wind van achteraf waai en wat een groot verskil gaan maak. Hier is Gilbert Mutandiro wat nou die voorpunt geneem het en ek voel um, vir vir 'n wedloop soos hierdie vandag een hart op hulle bietjie te vinnig. Well, I guess it's all about the record. So Gilbert Mutandero there running through Fishhook. He's got uh, around about 20 meters lead. And looking back down the road, it's a long way to the big lead pack. So a couple of guys are putting their foot down on the hammer right now, Tulani. And uh, how risky is that? Very risky. And uh, sometimes if you look at the way Mutandero is running, he's not running comfortably. He's not a flow runner. He runs, he, he's pounding actually helps the muscles. Style of running plays a very vital role when it comes to running ultra marathon and marathon. Well, the big lead group, uh, a little bit further back, those bikes you see just behind uh, the leader, those are the place markers. They'll be with the first man, second man, and third man. Those are the three. They've also got leading bikes with the women and also the veterans. And so it's really nice for the runners to have an idea, especially further back in the field, exactly where they're sitting. It's one of the uh, characteristics of the Cape Town races. They do that a lot. But uh, looking at the, in the background there, those bikes are going along a little bit quicker than the runners. It uh, just shows you how fast these guys are going. So it looks like we've got uh, a bunch of guys from Max Delete up front. Yeah, that's Geert Thijs, our South African record holder in 2.06.33. And what's interesting is today is that we have um, three South African record holders here, but they're all 40. It's is Geert Thijs, um, our marathon record holder, Cedric Hoff, the 5,000 record holder, and Hendrik Ramala, who are both our 10,000 and half marathon record holder. He's Geert now, in 40, op 40 years, heel voor, samen met Inos Matalane, zijn oefenmaat. Well, there they go. Gerte is a famous name in South African running, absolute legend. He's been around for a long time. And uh, Inos Matalani, the two of them trained together. And now, you know, you cannot ignore Gerte Stolani. He's one of his characters. He's over 40. He doesn't care. He just goes for it. Very determined athlete and a very focused athlete. I just hope he gets it right because sometimes when it comes to drinking, he has got his own ideas. We somehow let him down. We must remember, he has finished, if I'm not mistaken, second in this race. And he led Comrades the whole way. But I think we'll come here to prove a point, to make sure that it's either he gets a record or he wins it. But interesting was that Gert um, 309 gehad, what thanks to a world record for 40-jarige over the 50-kilometer afstand um, was. 
I think one of the things we've noticed in the last few years, or the last while, certainly in the Comrades Marathon, but it looks like now it's happening in the oceans as well, and that is that the runners in the late 30s and, and the veterans are very competitive indeed. Ja, om die veteranen titel vandaag te winnen, zal hij de, um, die wetloop moeten winnen. Want de baie van die atlete is oor 40 jaar of net voor 40 jaar. En het vat een tijdje in van de atlete om, om die, die ervaring op te bouwen om die wetloop goed te kunnen aardloop. I spoke to Wilson Kipsang yesterday about running the two oceans and he said that for him at least the difference between a 42 and a 56 is big. He said it's not just running a little bit further, he said it's a completely new approach and I think we've seen that now with, with guys that are almost specializing in the 56. If you take a guy like Marco Mombo for example, he's a good marathon runner but he's not and he's just specialized so people are getting into their niches and, and, and a lot of the veterans are now niching this race. Ja, en wat die wijsheid met uh, Wilson Kipsang's woorden gestaan aan ons allemaal was, is om te wachten voor die rechte oomblik. En uh, zoals um, ons nou kan zien, is het baie vroeg in die wetloop om die voortuig te nemen. Als ons net terugkijkt, kan ons zien een groot groep atleten achter Geert en Inos Matalani. Well, they're not even in halfway yet. Remember the 56K, the halfway mark, 28 kilometers. That comes just before the big climb up Chapman's Peak. And that is going to be a hugely important for us and for the runners to see how they're doing, how quick they're going, because they will need to get there around about 90 minutes. That's one and a half hours. So that's a possibly... So there they go. Target time for 25 Ks is 1.22. And uh, they must be pretty much on it. So if they get to the halfway mark in under 90, then game on. It's possible. And I can see that Hart is chasing, I mean, he's chasing it. But one other thing with that we need to know, in each and every event, it's a project, okay. or you have to have a structure or a program to train specifically for it to achieve the results. That will be relevant. If I say relevant, it's either you win it or you break the record. And if you haven't done that proper training well, making sure you are running the hills well, you are, know how to tackle the downhills, and you know how to pace yourself, you won't be in an opportunity of achieving those two results that I've spoken about, which is win and actually breaking the record. If we get pretty technical about this, that split at 25 k's on the target, they run about 20 seconds behind, but that is on an even split. In other words, you divide the 56 by the number of hours and it's an equal split. That does not allow for a fade over the second half and the hills. I would have liked them to see uh, uh, running around about 120. So I, I, on my reckoning, it's around about two minutes behind, but that's not that much. They're the masses. This is what the old neutral two oceans is all about. Beautiful morning, sun coming from their left, lifting up over the Hottentot Hollands Mountain, and uh, they're having an absolute ball out there. Ja, en dus die 11,300 mensen wat hier deelnemen van oor die land en ook internationaal. Het was meer dan 2000 atleten wat ons land hier bezoekt. Maar hier is die, die groot gedeelte van die veld en ons bouw twee oceanen rondom die groei van hier die gedeelte van die veld. Well, as, uh, as we watch the runners go past, this is all made possible for the last 15 years, in fact, by the old mutual our sponsor and uh, way back earlier in the week I had a chat with one of the executives up in Johannesburg. Uh, this is now our 15th year participating in this exciting event. Uh, all the, the marathon itself has been running for, for 45 years now and uh, as part of our 15th year celebration we've put some exciting activities and initiatives to excite the runners to go further and do great things. Uh, we put a lot of effort behind it, and it is our, 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 our quest and our initiative for engaging and getting closer to our customers. That's really why we do this thing. We take our brand closer to the people that matter most, and those are our customers. So the one million rand incentive is one of the, I suppose, carrots that we thought we'd dangle in front of the, you know, the, the accomplished runners in this event. And, and it's really to, to entice and, and, and excite people to go out there and break the records that have been standing since 1988 and 1989, so 25 and 26 years, for both the male and female runners. The current record holders are uh, Thompson Magawana, who clocked at uh, 3.03, and uh, Frith Fadameva for the females, who clocked at 3.30 in 1989.
I think it's generated quite a lot of uh, interest. I mean, we have had entrants from across the globe. We always have, have, have a significant uh, international contingent coming to the two oceans, but this year we've seen a little bit more. We've got a couple of Kenyan and Ethiopian runners who come in to race, so I think the prize money is creating a lot of interest. Uh, even local South Africans, I mean, I've read articles about Hertes uh, saying that, you know, this uh, you know, is, is creating the necessary motivation for them to go ahead and, and prepare better. Charity is absolutely important to us, and to that effect, uh, our nominated charity for this event is the Put Foot Foundation, which supports uh, underprivileged children who do not have shoes. Um, what we are doing as Old Mutual is we have committed to, uh, to match up to 200,000 rand of any money that is raised by our participants and they can do so by registering and a lot of them have already registered on their Run More Than Yourself uh, website and, and they pick the charity which is the Put Food Foundation. There are other charities that they can, can pick of course but the nominated charity for this particular event is the Put Food Foundation. Oh, this is a huge event Ian. I mean the event kicks off uh, with the uh, expo which runs over three days. On top of that we've got the the fun runs, we have got the, the trail runs, and we have got the international friendship run, and culminating on the Saturday with the 21 kilometer run as well as the 56 kilometer run. So it's a massive event. Overall, we've got over 28,000 people entering this event, and that excludes the 6,000 or so that we expect to be participating in the, in the fun runs. I am definitely going to be running the race. Uh, I am you know, we've, we've got a few days to go before the race, so I'll be doing the 56, uh, the ultra marathon, uh, and I'm looking forward to the excitement. I think it's the most beautiful marathon uh, in, in the world. Well, back to Musenberg, all courtesy of Old Mutual, and uh, it is just such a lovely day out there. These guys are the good runners. These folks are not uh, looking for silver medals, but they may well be looking for sub five, five and a half hours. Interestingly, guys, Valen Kirtley ran five and a half hours yesterday. We saw her earlier on, and she didn't tell us what time she did, but it was five and a half hours. Solo run out there, didn't stop the traffic, all by herself, amongst the uh, 20 or so people that ran out. I thought that was a pretty good effort. Ja, het is fantastisch om zo tijd te hardlopen en in toestanden wat je baas een paar alleen hardloopt. Ik zal voor kiezen om vandaag te hardlopen tussen al die rie mensen en dan verkies keilend te krijgen voor die wind ook in. Oké, wel, of course, our technical sponsor Adidas today, they got their competition with Ian talking about it, so if you've just joined us, welcome to you. And if you want to be one of ten winners, a smart run watch or some running shoes, 10 people. You need to understand in which year did Adidas become the official technical sponsor of the old Mutual Two Oceans? Was it 2013 or was it 1993? So what you do is you decide which year it was and you SMS the keyword Adidas. Don't forget Adidas, followed by your name and the answer to 33763. Do it right now and uh, you'll stand in line to win one of those uh, 10 prizes. And uh, Adidas, of course, made a big hit with us here. They really have been very, very active. They brought Wilson Kipsang out here, and uh, what a presence he's had, the world record holder in the marathon, winner of the London Marathon, and he'll be chatting to Valen Kirtley in studio just after 8.30, so don't miss that. A really absolutely iconic, tall guy, very, very good, well-spoken, speaks beautifully. But, uh, there we are, back with the leaders. Yeah, here is Geert Thijs, and you can see Geert Sotipas, that like all clear of Inos Matalane, a bit sickle, but it's interesting to see that Geert so fun of the Here was the whole flat part of the route. They begin now to climb. It's interesting to see Geert at his age, above 40 years old, a veteran, showing the youngsters how to run. But one other thing that is said, the guys that are supposed to be there, chasing that record. They are not with him. And he's a motivator to them to say, guys, let's go for it. And instead, they decide to stay at the back. Well, incredible. this is now seriously important because we're coming up to the halfway mark. We're not there yet. And all morning we've been talking about, you have to get to halfway in under one and a half hours to have a chance, unless something really amazing happens. And right now, the chasing pack is, is, was out of sight in that shot. Tace, uh, 
is, is up front on his own, well, not in his own, but he's basically setting the pace. And he's the only one that at this stage seems to be having a crack at that record. Ja, een maas meer waardig dat hulle omtrent so 2 minuute achter record pas is, want ons gaan nou die klim begin en dan sal nog Consens en ek wat voorle. Well, the Chapman's Peak is the first climb and it really is an amazingly challenging hill. It goes for a long, long way from sea level to a point if you've driven over it, it is just such a beautiful view. Why? Because it's so high. You can see for, for the, you know, 100 k's out to sea. So the climb up there, it's... Uh, they're hanging in Inas Matalani, still hanging in Neville Kertes, but doesn't he look so relaxed? We must remember that we are looking at an athlete who's an international experience, and he shows that he, that experience that he has got, I mean, he, he displayed it here, but instead of our athletes learning and saying, we will utilize that, and they, they are not. Ja, ik kon daar dat geert ook voor een zesde voorbereid en een het 20706 gehad bij Londen. Maar als je net achter achter geert kijkt, als je met die ogen kunt zien, is het om trente minuut wat die groot groep achter de aardloop en mensen kunnen zien. Inos Matalane is klaar bezig om te zitten, maar geert lijkt fantastisch. What a great big gap, and we went past the kilometer mark. I'm, I'm not sure if it was the halfway. It was a very quick flash. I'm not exactly sure. But they are definitely behind record pace. We don't know about the women yet. We'll uh, get back to them in just a while. But uh, we, need to, we need to get an idea of who's behind these guys because they're a lot of very strong athletes. And I think, uh, Tilani, what might be happening in the minds of the runners now is they're going, well, I don't think the record is on, so let's see who can win. And that now is an entirely different story altogether. It changes the whole thing, which somehow it's not good for athletics in South Africa. And the heart, we must remember, he's not running that fast in a sense that he really, he's overexcited. He just show guys, if you want to run well, let's do this. Halfway mark, through they go. Inos Matalani and Gertais a long way ahead. Look at that split. One hour, 32 and a half. Now, if you double that up, you're going to go to around about 3.05. That's what you're going to do. But they got to find another five minutes on the second half to get that record. Ik zal zeggen, we gaan weer in de omgeving van het 307-308 vandaag uitlopen. Uh, ons zal het afhangen wat die groep achter hulle doen. One hour 33 minutes into the race and we see that huge uh, group of athletes coming through the halfway mark full of uh, Netbank, Max Delete and Toyota athletes and a lot of the uh, Ethiopian contingent in there. We see uh, George and Shaliza, former winner of the uh, Two Oceans Marathon coming through but up in front it's uh, Gertes and Inos Matalane really setting the pace. We saw they, they went through in uh, 132.30 at the uh, halfway mark so not on course for, for a course record but uh, perhaps because of the wind that was out on the course today that uh, the conditions affected them. So Helen becoming more of a tactical race, more than a, a time trial. Yeah, very much so, but um, it, it's not that surprising, um, Kewen, and I think we were just sort of having a, a, a chat now about why the records of Thompson Magawan and Frith van Amerva are so challenging, and they've been, they've been set in 88 and 89, and we were making the comparison that in those days we were restricted to running in South Africa. So everybody with a bit of talent ran to oceans or comrades, hence we had such fantastic times. Whereas the guys today have had the opportunity to go and race internationally. Definitely, Helen, back in those days when the, the isolation was there, we had the, the likes of Thompson Magawane who literally ran a solo time trial going through 2.15 at the marathon mark en route to his 3.03. And uh, even the, the late uh, great uh, Zutadele Cinque who used to commentate with us, Helen, um, him and uh, Matthews Tumane running that 60-minute half marathon, which was then a world record, but just unfortunately not recognized due to the isolation. I think that is one of the reasons why this record has stood for so long. Yeah, and there we are. I think... Um on the screen now, we've got uh, some of the contenders running through the halfway mark. And in the uh, blue vest there, last year's uh, champion, David Katebe, coming through. So he's about uh, two minutes behind at, at this stage. And Helen, uh, not looking good in the, the title defense. No, but it's still early days. We've got two uh, quite significant hills for these athletes to climb over. We've got, they'll be approaching the base of Chapman's Peak now. And once they've gone down through Hart Bay, they, they run past the marathon mark up to 
uh, Constantia Nick, and uh, here we've got Hurt Tace, and he's one of these athletes that that we were speaking about. It was me Ian mentioned earlier that he, the veterans almost specialised, but I think it's a, a, an athlete like Hurt Tace competed internationally. He was running 206. If he was running able to run a 206 and or be in that form and run two oceans, he would wipe Thompson Magawana's record. Definitely, Helen. I think if Katis uh, ran two oceans in maybe 2000 or 2001 when he was running those 206, 207 marathons, we'd definitely see a much faster time. You must remember that Kat, that 206.33 record came in 1999, and uh, it was the same year when he was the first person ever to run under 208 twice in the, uh, the marathon in the same year. But uh, Stephen Mujingi coming through the uh, halfway mark just under the blue banner in the red uh, colors of Toyota. We must remember, Helen, that he won this race back in 2012, so today is not a good day in the office. Yep, um, but early, I think that, you know, these guys, we've got Hurt Tais out there in the lead. The guys that are in the sort of minor placings now are probably going to think, well, they know Hurt. He, he goes for it. We, we've seen him in um, the Comrades Marathon where he just put foot down, got to 56 Ks, oops, that's over, I'm stepping off the course. They know that's his character. They're probably thinking, well, there's a strong chance he's going to do this today. If he's hurting, he's not going to finish as soon as he starts get, getting into the minor placings. It doesn't really become worthwhile for him. It's very likely, Helen, um, a lot of the athletes might be leaving Kat because he is very outspoken and comes with these times that he says he's going to run. But the problem is, Kat Tais is a very versatile and experienced athlete. And if it's his day, like it was in 2012 when he finished fourth on his uh, debut two oceans, then if he gets the gap, the guys are going to have to chase really hard to try and get him down. Yeah, he's comfortable and, he, and he's, got, he's still got speed. And uh, there we have got the leader's board. Or Inos Matalane going through there with uh, Khat Tais. I'm not too sure why his uh, name's not showing there, but uh, Khat Tais was running with him. Then we have Ketame Tadese, Labenian Korka, who was ninth last year, Gilbert Mutandiro, early leader, Edwin Chimombo from uh, Zimbabwe, his uh, fellow countryman Kosi Yazi Sibanda, former winner of the Vic Falls half marathon, uh, Colin Makaza in the seventh place. Uh, he was fourth last year, and Henry Moyo, the uh, second place finisher from 2012, followed by the South African with Matibi. So a lot of uh, strong names there, Helen, in the top 10. The interesting thing, if we compare the um, competitors in the men's race and the ladies' race, all top 10 finishers of the men's race are competing today. Only five of the top 10 women are in this race today, for, you know, that ran or got gold medals last year. So that's that's quite an interesting comparison and quite a big fallout because you of the women that aren't running this year compared to last year. Definitely. And uh, as we see here uh, coming up the uh, climb now, take a lady, Inos Matalane. I wonder if he's uh, in second at the moment or if he's now leaving Khat. This is a brave attempt. The very same thing that you've been saying, Kieran and Helen, that Khat will go when when it matters most, he'll just go back. Because if you look at uh, uh, Matalane, he is leading. I think he is leading now with one hour 38 minutes that the race has been running, 56 Ks. And we don't know if Khat will ever come back. Like you said, with Comrade, there was some drama, drama with him where he was running and then he was left behind. And again, we must also remember the medical condition that he's going through. Probably that, that's the, one of the reasons that makes him to be somehow not be able to go up or downhill when it's necessary to do so. Well, he's our mystery man and uh, he gives us a lot of, a lot of topic to talk about. He's a brilliant athlete. We can never take that away from him. Here in this part of the race, we've passed, we've passed quite a significant point. It's been 28 kilometers. He's just passed 30. It's quiet. It's sort of one of these no man patches. He'll soon be coming up. It's the base of Chapman's Peak, which is, you know, we, we, we figured it's not a difficult hill to, to run up. It's quite a, a nice climb and that. But you often wonder these athletes, you get the most magnificent view on your left. But I'm not quite sure how many of them take the time to uh, glance over their shoulder and, and, and take that all in. Well, certainly it's not called the world's most beautiful marathon for, for nothing. The views are spectacular if the athletes had to look on their left. And uh, once they climb the top of Chapman's Peak, as you said, Helen, that long downhill into Half Bay, I think that's more uh, towards the back of the pack. The guys will go through there. And uh, I've heard a few stories as well, Helen, where some of the athletes uh, towards the back of the field, obviously, actually go for a nice dip in the, the ocean and then put their running uh, shoes back on and then carry on for the trot up to UCT. Well, I don't know how nice it would be because it would be very cold, but uh, at that point in time, maybe it's, it's nice. 
jona ka hari le rabona pejana hore huile ho ba le lebelo lena le half marathon ke kilometer tsa ma shume a mabedi le motsolo mong re bone hore ba le shume ba hlankana le ba rwetsana ba se ba fitile mo Oden Steven Mukoka a ile nga gona jalo ho itshireletsa sekola sena sa ile nga sa hapa sire monse fitileng le ka selemo sa 2009 me re tlatle ro fesona hore bena ke bo mamba le shume ba hlailetseng ka odimo di kilometer reng tsa ma shume a mabedi le motsolo mong ho re tlo tsebe hore ntwa e na elwa nne tsa tsinna ka jeno ba ke nsa di kilometer tsa o di tsa maile joang ta ba gholo gore le ba rwetsaneng taena le bo phalula ke le fahla la ha phalula le hlanso wetu le yena o hlaile jalo a sentse a mmatha pele mo teng mamedi wa ka a hleng a ba a tsa a etsa bonnete ba hore o nka lebelo lena selemon sena sa 2014 Thank you very much, Sticky Lady. With me, I've got the uh, 2014 winner of the Old Mutual Two Oceans uh, Half Marathon. This is his uh, third win, but his time of uh, one hour, four minutes and 16 seconds. Definitely the uh, slowest of the wins here, but a great race this morning. Tell us what happened. Uh, it was a great race, uh, having to run against the wind uh, with a huge group till 12, 13 kilometers. So it was. Okay, for some reason, but uh, I mean, at around 13 kilometers, that's why I decided to take a, a move to see if who is going to respond, who is going to come with me. And I realized that when I made a move, I mean, no one was coming with me, so I'm like, okay, probably this is a decisive move. So I would like to thank my coach and then as well as my training partners. I mean, seeing my uh, my training partners, the other one finished third and the other one I finished in fourth. I mean, I'm very happy about the outcome of everything. I mean, for my training partners as well as myself. All right, but like I said, it's uh, one hour four minutes is definitely your slowest uh, time that you've crossed the finish line first year at the Two Oceans. Your last two wins came in a sub one hour four. Is that because you're concentrating on the Commonwealth Games 10,000 meters later on this year? No, I wouldn't say that because I mean we started very slow. I mean the first 10 kilometers was very slow, and then I, I think we started building up the pace after. Uh, 11 kilometers, so that's where we try to catch up with the time. I mean, we are supposed to run. Uh, when I look at my watch, I mean, like even calculating the kilometers. I mean, if uh, I didn't make a decisive move around 13 kilometers, I don't think we were going to run a 64 minutes. So, I mean, the way it went, I mean, even the time now, I think it's good. I mean, going through 10 kilometers through 31 minutes, I mean, 64 minutes is very nice time. Great performance, Stephen. Congratulations! A hat trick of wins here at the half marathon of the Two Oceans. Brilliant stuff. Thank you so much, and all the best of luck for the rest of the season. That's Stephen Mokoko, who is the 2014 winner of the Old Mutual Two Oceans Half Marathon. You were speaking about making decisive moves. I believe that there's some decisive moves that's happening in the ultra. Let's go back to our commentators. Stephen Mokoko, who is now young, killing Jalo Lebelo, who is a taxi me hardula kashaba Jalo. Let's look at the route now. Yeah, these guys are running up Chapman's Peak. Beautiful, beautiful scenery, beautiful view. Um, we see a little bit of a break. I think that's is that hurt taste that's in the front, and he's actually looking strong. So, uh, and a bit of a lead breaking up, hey, Kieran. Definitely, we saw Inos Matalane really surging up there, but now it's Kat who's come past Inos again. But if you look in the back of the picture, there's quite a big bunch that is about to catch Inos Matalane, and uh, Tekeledi Kat at this stage is still looking really good. He keeps looking behind and uh, almost to say, "Come on, guys, when are you coming to run with me?" Like he usually say, when he goes up, he becomes it becomes very easy for him. The, most of the time, when he says, it's like when the downhill, it's not a good advantage for him. So now he was going on the peak and he just did it. Helen, we think, do you think he will, will keep the pace, especially after what they've been doing with Matalan? Yeah, with with Hurt, he 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 runs, he retains his composure right until he decides he doesn't want to run anymore. If he's not a great downhill runner, he must exercise quite a bit of caution once he's he's run over the top of Chapman's Peak because that's quite a down into um, Hout Bay, which is also becomes quite a dangerous area for many of these athletes. They try to pick up the pace to make up for lost time running up Chapman's. Yes, definitely. Once they get to the top of Chapman's Peak, and as we see that beautiful aerial shot of the the Chapman's Peak. It's about a six-kilometer, very steep downhill, literally as if you're running down Polly Schultz of the Comrades Marathon, downhill through to Half Bay. And uh, take a lady. If any of the athletes do go too fast down there, their legs will be like jelly. But uh, 
32.1 k's into the race, so that means that Fiat uh, de Caledi at this stage is about to crest the top of Chapman's. It'll be very interesting to see how he goes down the, that, uh, the other side of the hill because he's going to need to save his legs, especially after going through the marathon mark and then from 44 to 46 up the top of uh, Constantia Neck. Because it also has 14 k's to go to, to, to the finishing, I think what, what you're saying about taking care and making sure that he, he, he needs to be very alert when taking this step or this peak, he needs to know that he still has so much kilos to go. That, that's a fantastic shot, and I think you can see in the middle of the upper middle of the screen, you see that's where they've actually, I think, the part of the road where they've um, sort of built almost a tunnel to, to, to stop the mountain coming down. And if you recall, when the road was closed, the runners didn't have the advantage of going over this part of the route. They actually had to go up a copse of up the, behind the, this mountain. It wasn't nearly as pleasant to run. So it is nice to be back on the original Two Oceans route. Well, some of the tweets coming through, Stephen Mokoka is on a class of his own when it comes to the 21k race. That was definitely the case today with uh, Stephen totally dominating the uh, half marathon and defending his title from last year, albeit in a slower time. Even though he's not happy with his time, but the fact is he defended, that's all matters. And he's 25,000 rand richer as well. So good day in the office for Stephen for around one hour and four minutes uh, of hard work. And uh, definitely hard work because it's a lot of effort that these athletes put in running up to 200 kilometers a week. But uh, back to the leader in the uh, ultra marathon, Gert in the colors of Max Delete. Helen, that 40 on the side of his vest, indicating that he's a veteran. 42 years old, Gert, and uh, showing that experience might uh, be what it needs to, to, to count today. Well, in this race, along with Hurt, we've got some extremely talented 40-plus athletes with fantastic pedigree. Um, we've got Shadrokov, who was very dominant with... Um, in the shorter distances, has run some good marathons. We've got another brilliant athlete called Hendrik Ramala, who we haven't really seen today, winner of New York Marathon. Um, he's represented a South Africa in, in many disciplines. So a very, very talented 40, uh, race in the 40 plus. And in fact, many people say the 40 plus category is more competitive than maybe even the main race. Definitely, Helen. And uh, Gert has had a very, very long uh, history in road running. His first uh, marathon, Helen, coming when he was only 16 years old, running a 2.36. And uh, around four or five years later than that, running 209. It just shows the immense talent that Gert had. And had it not been for isolation, I'm sure you would have seen Gert winning many a London and Berlin marathon. Yeah, we would have seen that with many of the we the athletes of um, the, the late 80s, the 90s. Um, South Africa has a very, very rich running history. Well, some of the pictures coming through there from Instagram. 51% of this year's Two Oceans runners are females, so well done, ladies. And uh, definitely the women are doing it there today, Helen. Yeah, that was in the 21, 51% of the field being women. So, yeah, quite a remarkable statistic. Good change for the future. Definitely, and uh, we see a lot of those athletes coming through from the half marathon, and perhaps over the next uh, one to three years we'll be seeing them in the 56 as well. Yep, it is a stepping stone. Uh, they've... they've finished this 21 they've had a had fun they'll watch the 56k runners coming through and that will motivate them to get out there and attempt this and if we if we sort of look out the window of our finishing slot we just see these runners pouring in finishing this 21 and they all seem to be happy comfortable and really had a good time and most of them will be back here again next year let me just remind you, viewers at home, that the, the, the men are still, the men that are leading now, Geltes, Inos Matalani, Ketamata Desa, Lebenya Nkoka, Gilbert Mutandiro, Kibaba Mbabanna, Belongore, Bante, Balida, Hajwale, Bakensa, Lebelolena, Lelo Holo, La Tatina Kajeno, La Two Oceans Marathons, Elin Lona, La Dikilomitara, Sema Shumea Mashano, Lemetso, Etsiletzinge, Me, Jaloka Ha, Hile, Hawila, Habua, Pipijana, Butleba, Tselayena, Mo, Dengin, Tse, Hile, Imata Pele, Mirbona, Jalo, Gert, Teis, Ante, Hile, the beautiful of the road beauty definitely, of it definitely definitely a beautiful 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 scene of the athletes uh, they'll be cresting the top of uh, chapman's peak uh, around about 32 k's into the race and they'll have that long downhill going through but uh, that uh, lead bunch helen at the moment uh, breaking up there so that just shows that at this stage cat says uh, maybe making an impact on the, the guys they're getting a bit restless there well 
Nobody really knows how Hart is going to run, and that's a beautiful uh, view. But that's the guys would have to really turn over their left hand shoulder to pick up that that lovely shot. Okay, exclusive race day competition Adidas. Don't forget that all day today you can win one of ten prizes. Five of them are that smartwatch, and the others are energy boost running shoes. That is a beautiful prize. So what you need to do is you need to know which year Adidas became the first. Uh, became the, the first became the technical sponsor 2013 or 1993. So SM, SMS Adidas followed by your name and the answer to 33763. Well, we need to go away from the old Mutual Two Oceans for just a while. We'll be back with more action after this. Change feels good. Celebrating it with a gift feels even better. Change your tyres at IQ now and get an exclusive Goodyear gift hamper to the value of 300 Rand when you buy two or more Goodyear branded tyres 15 inch or larger. It's sure to be a change you can feel. Only at IQ, the number one tyre outlet you can trust. Get down, get down to the Last year, Sam found out that he had leukemia. At Reach for a Dream, we help children with life-threatening diseases to face their illnesses. Because children like Sam need courage and hope. And all the friends they can get. Welcome back to Chapman's Peak uh, in Cape Town, the 2014 Old Mutual Two Oceans Marathon uh, competition today, courtesy of Adidas. Ten uh, winners altogether, five of them with a smartwatch and five with a pair of Energy Boost running shoes. And to stand in line for one of those prizes, one of those ten prizes, you need to know which year Adidas first became the technical sponsor of this race. Was it 2013, A, or was it B, 1993? So get on your telephones and SMS the keyword Adidas, A-D-I-D-A-S, followed by your name and the answer, and that number, 33763. Out in the loneliness of uh, Chapman's Peak, beautiful part of the route. Well, earlier on, we had the half marathon finishing. Valen Kirtley has the ladies' winner in the studio. I'm actually at the finish line. Thank you very much, Ian. With me, I've got Lebo Palula winning the women's race in 74 minutes. Were you expecting that? Definitely, I was expecting that, but uh, I wanted to run 72. Hopefully, it didn't happen, but next time I will do it. There was a class field of ladies out there, Renee Kalmo, her sister Jenna Chalanoi, and you beat all of them. Yeah, my Paseko Makanya, the, 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 class, the, the field was very packed with top athletes, but I was looking more forward to run with them. Uh, but in kilometer number nine, that's when I started to tell myself, let me move. If they come, they will fetch me on finish line. What does this victory mean for you? Uh, it's mean a lot. Hey? Winning in two oceans means something that it shows that you're doing the, the, the good job with my training. You also have some support back at home, your sister, Lebo Khang, who you often uh, run with, and her little son, Pilani. Yeah, they always motivate me in training. At home, they tell me that I must go and train if I, if I want to do good. They're always motivating me, and she's doing good also. She's there. Hopefully, you're going to see her coming this year. We'll shine together. Lebo, is this the first of many? Uh, no. Will you be back next year to defend your title? Definitely. It's going to depend on my training. I just need to train hard. I'm going to come back to defend my title again. 
Lovely stuff. Thank you very much. That's Lebo Palula, the winner of the Old Mutual Two Oceans Half Marathon, winning the women's race in 74 minutes. Thank you very much, and all the best of luck for the rest of your season. Let's go back to our commentators. Well, Lebo Palula, of course, has been around running for many, many years. I remember watching her as a junior back in the 90s, and a fantastic athlete. And when she says no to the question, Oh, this is the first of many. I suspect, Tulani, that she doesn't want to run too many half marathons. But let's get back now to Gertais. And look at this. Down in towards Hout Bay, and there he is, out on his own. Gertais is just an amazing athlete. And the athletes who are prepared to learn from this could be very good athletes. You could see he's going all on his own. I just hope he's able to maintain that lace, I mean that pace and make sure then he doesn't get excited. He has got a possibility of winning that race. He's not running fast at all. He runs at the pace of winning the race, but not breaking the record. Well, let's have a look at that leaderboard. Some of the names, and I find this completely amazing. These are a lot of unknown guys. Tayson Matalani, we know. Gabri Celeste is one of those Ethiopian runners, as is Jay. And then we have the Kenyan Barmasai, Sabanda from Zimbabwe, Colin Makaza, another Zimbabwe, and Henry Moyo from Malawi, and then Edward Matibi. So very few South Africans in there. A really interesting leaderboard. David is not there in the top uh, nine that were displayed here. We can see that South Africa are not well presented at the top ten. We have got about a three, which is not good because they were given enough time to know that that race of offering one million train before it you have got the full 11 months but unfortunately i'm not seeing any of them really chasing it well uh, mabatile lobopo who was up there earlier on it doesn't seem to be in the top 10 at least at that at that stage but let's take nothing away whatsoever from Kertes. He wants to win this race. You know, he's been in the lead for a while. Now he's powering down into, into Hout Bay Down. It's a long, steady, beautiful downhill. But, Tulani, you know from your experience in the, in the two oceans that charging down this part of the course can damage your legs. It does it a lot. Especially if one, you are not running with a very good running shoes because the roads are very combat. But secondly, know exactly that now you have to take the liquid because if you are not taking enough liquid in your body and you are not electronizing your body it's going to punish you which always is a downfall of her days he keeps looking back. I don't know why. Well, he's looking for the other runners. He can't believe they're not there. Going, Where are you guys? I mean, really, come on. Now we're out for a run today. He's looking yeah. for the other guys. You must remember it's very lonely out there. He still has got more than 20 kilometers to run all on his own in front if they are not chasing him. But if they are chasing him and they are accompanying him, they motivate you. You know, you know then there's something wrong that athletes are not doing because they don't want to go in front. And you say, if we want to make a good race, let me go. Maybe they will follow and then I will have a team to run together. And that's what Hurt is trying to do. But athletes behind him are just refusing to do that. He's not running fast at all. He runs at a pace that is good to win the race at a good time. I think it's very important to understand that the, the old mutual two oceans is very much about the last 10 k's. You know, I mean, they've got a long way to go now. They really have still got a heart bay. They've got to climb the whole of Constantia Neck. It's a long, long way to go. And Gertes is out there. But boy, I tell you what, the guys are, are thinking what's happening. Second place man um, is closing down. But once again, bad place to go chasing is down Chappies into heart bay. Bad place. I think that's the reason why he keeps looking back. He now sees that uh, a bunch of uh, other guys are coming behind him. We still have got 18 or 16 kilometers to go, and it's a long way. It's about an hour. And you can see he's, nobody's accompanied him. And I just hope guys can get in there 
and they run as a group, it motivates. But it just don't happen, and that's why he keeps on looking at the back and all that. And you must remember, this is the man who is holding the South African record in a marathon in, two, in 2006, trying to show or educate the athlete to say, guys, if you want to be a good athlete, run like this. And you must remember, he's not young. He's about 40. And the, the young boys at the back, they are just not take, what, prepared to take it over. Oh, what a spot. You know, that it's exciting really to look at this. And the heart is making it possible for us to enjoy the race. Well, if you know Cape Town, that's through the toll gate on, uh, on, on Chapman's Peak. If you're going this way, the other way to the race, you go through that toll gate, you pay and you go over. But as Gertes runs down, on his left will be a thing called the East Coast Battery, which is an old gun emplacement which sits off the road down towards the sea on Gert's left. And the cannon fires when the leader comes through. I'm not sure if we'll maybe see it today, but it is a booming noise, and it was set up in goodness knows how many hundred years ago when they were defending Hout Bay. And on the far side by the harbour is another battery. That's the West Coast battery that sits down. And those guns, believe it or not, have never been fired in anger. Now they only get fired when the two oceans goes past. So that's an interesting bit of history about the race. So there goes Gertes down the hill. Wa shetse ba sepetse di iri tsa go ba ka go dingwana ga tshe pedi ke di iri tshe pedi le motsotso te go me go itetsa gore re sana le le bakala iri e fela go bontsha ba le morago go lebeletse tabeng ya go roba record do you think that they will catch up with the time they've got they still have 5 minutes in between in getting to the record time well they've got a bit of way to go khata is now 42 and he's already run the two oceans before and uh, in 2012 he did it and he did a 309 this that year right now he's looking for a time which is quicker than that but the second place man is uh, is closing in we'll get some uh, information on him as soon as we can we must remember the race starts at constation he still has got that last about two kilometers to go here it's very exciting you just want to go and i must remind you that's where bruce blew me up on that race when I finish 11, taking away, allowing somebody to take that medal away from me for gold. But I learned from it because after three years, I was able to come and win that race. This is the area that teaches you how to run this race if you want to do well. If you get excited, Constation Egg will punish you. But if you look after yourself here, you will have strength to go up Constation Egg. After Constation Egg, let me tell, tell you, just hang on there and anything is possible. You can win the race. But if you don't look after yourself here, you will be in trouble. That water point on the downhill there out of Chappies, it's one of those on Chapman's Peak, as we said, going green this year. So there are no water sachets out there. You won't see a plastic water sachet, but those cups there on the table are, in fact, biodegradable cups. So it's, it's a little nod towards the going green and the whole eco-friendly nature of this race. And I think that's a, an important message that the old mutual two oceans are sending out. Don't just dump plastic all over our roads. That's the gun emplacement. It's just gone out of shot in the bottom <laughs> right-hand corner there. That is, uh, oh, that's the cannon. Beg your pardon. There it is, sitting there with those people standing around it. Now you may let. I'm wondering if they can actually fire the thing. You'll see a little, <laughs> a little bang and a cloud of smoke. And boy, I want to tell you, I've been there. And that is so seriously loud, you eardrums ring for about five hours afterwards. So that's the gun emplacement. It's actually kept uh, in pristine condition by a bunch of guys in Hout Bay who restore it and look after it. And I wonder if they're going to fire it. Um, hold your breath. Hold your breath. But anyway, that's the East Coast battery. They may or not fire it, but that's a little bit of history of the Cape which is full of history. Very, very interesting. But getting back to the race, it is very much all about Gertes at the moment. Gertes has made the race very, very, very exciting. As a veteran and as an international athlete, he has shown us what capable we are in South Africa if we want to change the, I mean, the athletic structure to make sure we produce athletes. I just hope after people watching this race today, they will go back and see what Hartes has done and say, we want to be like this man. Because if we can do that with these young athletes, we can go very far. 
Well, in that top ten, um, certainly not that many South Africans, so we have Ethiopians. There's the firing of the gun. Oh, there man. she goes. And uh, that is a symbolic firing of the East Coast battery as the leader goes past. It's such a lovely occasion. One of the great traditions of, uh, of, this, of this race, starting with a fish horn down in uh, the start, and now the East Coast battery. But uh, there goes Gertes, but he's under pressure. He's definitely under pressure. Somebody closing him down quite well. It's, it's one of the Ethiopians coming in. We need to get a fix on his name. Uh, we have a number of Ethiopian runners that have come in, particularly in the women's race. There's some very strong contenders. In fact, the last time we looked, they were in fact in the lead, but that was a while back. But right now, the Ethiopians, of course, are famous long-distance runners. They've got unbelievable depth. And even if you're number kind of 30 or 40 in Ethiopia, you'll be competitive in this race. Definitely you will. And you must remember that Hart is not running that fast. He's running at a pace that is possible to win the race, not at a record time, at a very respectable time. And the guy who's chasing, we must remember also that he has got an advantage because he's young and Hart is old. And it, for him, everything is still growing. Whereas in heart, everything deteriorates, but he still shows young boys that you, it's not over as long as we still live and we have got the mental strength of preparing for anything. It's possible for you to do well. So the last time we looked at the leaderboard, there were some really interesting and unusual, unexpected names in the top 10. But uh, as we see, as the race unwinds, perhaps we may get a couple of uh, the more of the favorite guys in there. Two years ago, the winner was Stephen Muzingi. Uh, Stephen, I think, will be aiming for, for the Comrades Marathon this year. And remember, because Two Oceans is quite late this year, because of the Easter weekend being relatively late, it's not long until, until Comrades. So a guy like Mozingi won't, won't play too many cards here today, I don't think. I said it earlier on. I said anybody who trains for two races, Two Oceans and Comrades, it's either you'll run a good Two, two Oceans, not a good Comrades. If you win Two Oceans, you are not going to win comrades. If you win comrades, they don't expect to do well on this one. And Mzingi tried to do that and he failed. I'd like to know if, if Kat is going to be having a go at comrades. I doubt it actually because because after this effort. But now the leaders there, Tase and the Ethiopian running from Nedbank, are coming into, into Hout Bay. Hout Bay is one of the landmarks of uh, in Cape Town. On their left will be the beach. And uh, Hout Bay, all of a sudden, you've got civilization. They're off the mountain. Restaurants, shopping blocks, parking lots, beaches, lots of people. And it is a really iconic part of Cape Town. So there they are. Good. Well, let's have a look at, uh, that's the Pink Drive, one of the charities down here. Uh, let's have a look at uh, the Hout Bay graphic. That's uh, the Nuda, no, that's, beg your pardon, that's the Hout Bay Beach. Long, flat stretch along, uh, after that downhill, suddenly you hit a flat, and that's quite, uh, quite difficult. You have been rolling and very nicely on those downhills and you start hitting this flat and you will slow, slow down and just after that flatness you are approaching the constantia neck it's hard work the whole way right up until 44 kilometers well we just passed the 39 kilometer mark in 208 call it 209 and they are something like three minutes or so behind record pace on my uh, estimation which is actually not that much what has happened is that Tase's pace coming over Chapman's and particularly down into Hart Bay has been good so he's just they're not on record pace but they're not that far off it 
Potato Jubuan Jugu Bon and Gore, Lere Lor Mutumwe, Kaba on record, a Kaba Tata Jaori, Mitsumera Royal Constation, Ekova Toyla Tata, Kukaro Constation, Gotoma on a Melena. I think it's going to take a lot of out of them uh, at Constation. Uh, it's going to be uh, very tough. They are going to be losing time at Constation if you are running the hills. So the time that they had a bit, they are going to lose it there, which is a disadvantage for them to break that record. Because if it builds up to another 30 seconds or a minute, it becomes four minutes. It becomes very difficult to go for the record. Well, with the leaders now into Hout Bay, we have the world record holder for the Marathon Wolfson Kipsang making a flash visit to, to, to Cape Town. Wilson Kipsang is in the studio with Valen Kirtley. Thank you very much, Ian Laxon. Yes, what a great privilege to have the fastest man over 42 kilometers right here in the studio who has brought out, thanks to one of the race's sponsors, Adidas. He's just completed the London Marathon, setting a new course record there of just over two hours, four minutes. His world record, however, is two hours, three minutes and 23 seconds from Kenya, 32-year-old Wilson Kipsang. It's so great to have you in South Africa. And from the moment that you arrived, you've just had a wonderful reception, haven't you? Yeah, I think uh, from the time I arrived, uh, really, I've really had a wonderful reception. And uh, I really enjoyed it because uh, coming here first time, it's really nice. I Cape Town is really it's a good city, good people, and they really uh, love the spot. Some of the guys were telling me yesterday that when you went to the international run, that you were just mobbed by people. Everybody wanted to get a photo with you. Did you imagine that there'd be that kind of reception in South Africa? Yeah, I think when I came, I really didn't imagine that uh, I would really have that kind of reception. But uh, when I woke up yesterday, the weather was really very good. And uh, going for the friendship run, it was really wonderful because uh, lots of people all over the world and they really love the sport and they really have that opportunity to to compete or to race together. It was really wonderful. All right, there we're seeing some visuals of you actually running around the VNA waterfront yesterday. Tell us, what did you think of, of the event? Yeah, I think uh, it was really nice when we ran around with, uh, with, uh, with uh, all people all over the world. And uh, it was really nice because I was really thinking of how the race, today's race could be because uh, I saw that uh, lots of people were really prepared and ready for, 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 for today. So now, Wilson, when are you going to take on 56 kilometers? Uh, I think uh, for me now, I've run very well, the 42. So I think uh, by the time I really retire, maybe in the next uh, few years, <laughs> I would love to really compete and see what I can really do in the 56 kilometers. You know, David Gatebe, who is uh, the defending champion for the ultra marathon, the 56, he said, South Africans are mentally tough. That's what makes them better at ultra marathons. Those distances over 42.2 kilometers. He says the Kenyans, they're only good at marathons. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I, I really agree with that because I think uh, marathon is really it's a long distance. And uh, for the South Africans who have really been competing in the Mutual Marathon, that is the 56, you find that uh, they must be mentally strong. <laughs> because the longer the distance, you must be really strong mentally for you to really finish. So for me, for the guys who have really run good time, I really salute them because I know it's, it's very tough. Behind us, we see so many people that are busy finishing the half marathon. The crowd is just really enjoying the morning out here at UCT. Compared to some of the other international races that you've competed at as an elite athlete, I mean, you would just come back from the London Marathon. How does this event compare to what you've seen in the rest of the world? Yeah, I think uh, this is really wonderful compared to other races which have really competed. I think this is really good because there are lots of people who really, who really love the sport and they really love to, to run. And I can see them, they really enjoy running. And uh, you find that many people in the city really come out to cheer and many of them compete. 
So I think uh, it's really good because uh, if I see clubs and people, everybody wants to finish to have his own time. I think it's really wonderful. As the fastest man over 42 kilometers, what is the secret to running a marathon? Yeah, I think uh, the, the, the best secret for a marathon is uh, for one to really finish and run good. First of all, you find that uh, you must be disciplined. Discipline in training, discipline in personal life, and love the sport. And you should really be ready for, be ready, be ready to, 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 to run a good time. Because I think a marathon, you must be mentally strong and focused very much. Wilson, do you have another world record running you? Are you going out to better your world record? Yeah, I think uh, I, I really feel that I still have the potential and the power to, 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 to run a world record. I can really still improve my own record. I, because uh, the way I ran in Bali and uh, the way I ran recently in London, I really felt strong that one time if I train and prepare very well and have the same conditions, I can still bring it down the record. Do you believe a sub two hour would be possible in our lifetimes? Uh, it can be possible, but I think uh, it will not be really very soon. It can take some time, but my main target and, or my main advice to, to, to those who are trying to, to beat the sub two hours is to try to, try to, to bring down the, the record first. Maybe come to 202, come to 201, and then now sub two hours. All right, lovely stuff. Thank you, Wilson. It's been great to have you here and uh, great for you to be in South Africa for the very first time. Thank you so much for joining us here in the studio. Thank you. Thank you. The legend Wilson Kipsang, the world record holder over the marathon. So he was brought out by Adidas and they just are not stopping when it comes to giving us great treats. At home, you can also get involved. Adidas are giving you the opportunity to also win this time a great uh, products in the way of watches and pair of shoes. It's as easy as telling us when did Adidas become the official technical sponsor of the Old Mutual Two Oceans Marathon. Was it A, the 2013 race or was it B, the 1993 race? You SMS your keyword Adidas followed by your name and your answer, whether it's A or B, to the simple number 33763. And you could be the lucky winner of a smart run watch or a pair of energy boost running shoes. Do stay with uh, SABC2. We are back with the live broadcast of the Old Mutual Two Oceans Marathon after this. Thank you very much. On Easter weekend each year, runners from around the globe gather in South Africa's mother city, Cape Town, to unite under a common goal and to celebrate the simple yet satisfying art of running. She wanted to see more of her grandkids, but not by moving into their living room. A gambling problem hurts. It doesn't have to be that way. Call our toll-free counseling line on 0800 006 008. If you have a problem with gambling too much, you can get free expert confidential help from the National Responsible Gambling Program. Winners know when to stop. All Mutual Two Oceans Marathons. We are joined by our brother. We're talking about Ross, who just ran a 21 case and finished it with a medal. How do you feel, Ross? Yeah, um, I feel suitably tired having run 21, but it's a lovely day to run. There was what felt like a tailwind from most of the race. So the athletes we see now will benefit from that, we hope, over the last uh, 14 k of this race. But really, you couldn't ask for better conditions to run today. So I think everything has come together for hopefully a good, good race and fast times. 
o se le ba le mo la peng horo ka ikhapela fela tse ding tsa di adida se tseng tle ke di eta ke di eng ho tletsetse mme o ka etsa bonnete bo ka ho refela o ne o sale morao hore se o ka se etsang ke eng taba kholo ke yona hore ke nneng mo teng o ile ngwa bona adida se e qala e tsietsa le belolena la two oceans Jonathan let's talk about what's happening now here is the in, uh, the Ethiopian guy who is actually position 2 and probably now he's leading we we actually don't know what's happening because health has been leading enos and then libenia ketama is tedas sorello has been on the second position now he's going back yeah ketama at now the fourth of him is a 13 marathon athlete and is net jerry marathon merk and um trend um 2019 of 2018 work and i had now the fourth of him van her thais yeah, this section that the athletes are on now is just as they leave Hart Bay, it's, as you can see, the crowd support is a little bit sparse. When they get onto Constantia Neck, the steeper part of this climb, they'll get a lot more crowd support. But right now, he's exposed to the sun. He's just gone through the marathon mark where you saw those blue mats. And this is the most difficult part of the race, but it's the, perhaps often the decisive part. And there you can see Gertes just in the background, maybe uh, 15, 15 seconds down on Tedesi at the moment. And so... This could well be the move that has put the Ethiopian in with a real chance of winning this race. If you look at the ladies as well, they are actually being led by the Ethiopian uh, ladies, Chalito and Shetake, and in, there's, there's a serious gap between uh, the two Ethiopian guys and two Russian girls, which are the, 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 the twins, uh, Donovan, and we're definitely going to see what's happening because there's a gap of three minutes in between the Ethiopians and the Russians, but we'll definitely give uh, the, our viewers that now. But is it three minutes a huge gap? Ja, dat is bij een groot voorsprong voor alles. Mensen kijken dat het uh, moeilijk oor die berg is en nou op pad uh, tegen die, die afdrand is naar na hout bij toe. So, dat gaat een uh, groot, groot, um, dat is een uh, um, uh, hardloopvat van die twee um, Russische tweeling om het te gaan opvangen. Drie minuten is een groot achterstand. Well, what we're seeing here really is, is for maybe the first time in the history of this race, the East Africans arriving to uh, throw down the gauntlet to the Southern African runners. And this is something we're so used to seeing on the roads. If you look at the world ranking list, for instance, in the history of the marathon, 99 out of the top 100 times have been run by African athletes, and 90 of those are by East Africans. It's an extraordinary dominance, and this may well be the first time we're seeing that dominance translated up to the ultra marathon in both the men's and women's race. So really, this could well be a watershed moment for the Two Oceans ultra marathon. Ross, I believe that the group that from after have come to better can stand, because for the now, um, for all the the climb up Constantinek here, in from the the Ethiopian dames, um, um, Annette, uh, Setaya, Jubela, and they have for in a 226 marathon hard to be for the year 235 hard to, and they look good. Yeah, it is, a, it is a big challenge, Donovan. As you said, the, the climb of Constantia Neck, not only because of the steepness of that climb, but because it comes after a marathon. And so many of these athletes are going to be in uncharted territory very shortly. And so it will certainly tell if they have bitten off a little bit more than they can chew. The, the interest payments on going too fast too soon are pretty steep. Physiology is a steep price, and we, we may see that later oh, on. So we've got some me. fascinating oh, races wait to unfold with two Ethiopians having gone out here. and set the challenge for the chasing groups. And you can see that gap. That's 3 minutes 14 on the way down Thanks, Chapman's huh? Peak. That's a big lead. And if they're going to close that gap, we're going to see either a spectacular implosion or something quite yeah. remarkable from behind. Hello, uh, Ross, can you, can, you, can you maybe say with, with, with Shatama leading this race, is it, is it being, does, does she get help from the guys that are supporting him? Does that help on a race? Well, you see this in every ultramarathon. The, the men tend to gather around the women. I, I wonder sometimes whether the men are getting more help than the women is from them because I think they, they recognize that the elite woman are so good at managing the race, they, they control the pace very well. Obviously, sometimes they fancy being on camera also. And so I think this, this is a common thing that you see. She may well take a few drinks from those men, so it will certainly help her a little bit. But I think the, the relationship is certainly mutual. Ja, hier gaan ons nou naar een gedeelte net voor die klim bij Constantia Neck. Ons is voorbij die marathonmerk en die ritme van die Ethiopiën, uh, Ketama Tadesa, lijkt nog redelijk goed. Wat ons wel zal wil weet, is hoe ver um, die andere mannen van die groter groep achterom is. 
Yeah, we got that one split between him and Gertais was 15 seconds, but you're right, Donovan. The, the really interesting gap will be the one from Tais to the chasing pack, which includes a number of highly credentialed men, East Africans, South Africans, Zimbabweans, and so that's really where one of the big challenges may emerge. There we just see a leaderboard, and uh, interesting to clearly, the, the only of the Russian twins is Elena Nagalieva in third, and, and her twin sister not yet featuring in the top five. This is the same woman that didn't take it last year because it was taken by Olesia. So are you, are you, are you, do you What's think like she will, she will come and Olesia? Well, I mean, we're so used to seeing them for the last decade. We see them running side by side. There have been times when they've crossed the line almost in a dead heat. So I'd be surprised if uh, Olesia was off the back today for any reason other than she's not having a good day today. Otherwise, she'd be, I would imagine, right up there with Elena pushing to close what is now a big, big gap. But what what um, okay. what is is that Sataya nog bezig is om die wedstrijd te geniet. Ze is bezig om te lach. Ze lijkt baie goed. Ze het 'n groot voorsprong en ons sal baie hard op pad val om dit op te vang. Hier is 'n groep wat nou begin 'n jaag. Die Lesotho manne en Hendrik Kramala wat saam met hulle sit, wat beteken dat hulle is bezig om die voorloper te vang. Hier is 'n groep wat ek glo die winner gaan uitkom. Yeah, this is the group, and, and these men will certainly help one another. It makes such a difference at this stage to have company, people to push you. You saw them handing one another a little water sachet there. And so as they go up Constantia Neck, this is, this is going to be the interesting race. And there you see Ramale is the man in the green shirt, the green vest, just at the back of this pack. That gap is beginning to open ever so slightly. I wonder if that's a, a sign that Ramale is maybe going through a little bit of a bad patch. But they've got around three kilometers or so from here to the top of this climb and then a long descent. So if he can hold on, then one of South Africa's great marathon runners is in with a shot, certainly the top five, if not better. Taba Holun se Leona ya one million rand ya record de San Saning is Jue me na ebe kan kuakimu Africa Bora, Kilitzal Lala Soto, Kapa who kabona hala muitopia afita in kana karu Africa Bora. Fella he Jolika ha rinse record ka mohol le basabeti mo Jonovan, Mohol Rosa, Kuon Tate, Hendri Kramala, Hajolechena, Recote Matakio Nayam Duhoga se Haru Mitsutu e Miraru, Leona Mitsutone Mashma Mani Limitu me ne kilometer rinse na se mashma matano mitsu silating, ya tlai ha paka paya tla in kaka pay ro be happy. One million rand, two hundred and fifty thousand. A willing hore, Uta say, I have it. Donovan, the happening. Hendrik Ramala is back. Yeah, Hendrik Ramala on the twin on says Marathon athlete, but work New York Havenet. Um, I swak the Idaho record hour for on the half marathon and ten days of the barn. Met on here as Mabotile and the Benya. Here is mana, but definitive. Um, a wijze wedloop gehaard loop het en as ons um, geld moet weet vandag zou ik sê die winner zou uit hierdie groep uitkom ras. Yeah, it makes such a massive difference if you manage the race correctly. It's, it's a race of patience and discipline and many, many athletes have fallen foul of a fast descent down into Hart Bay. Once you, once you summit Chapman's Peak, it's so tempting to really fly down the, the climb and, and into Hart Bay and you find then that you really pay on the other side when you start going up the climb as these men are doing now. And so those who are patient often pick the fruits of their patience a little later on. And these four will be hoping for something like that. It would be really fascinating to just get a split. But once we get to the top of Constantia Neck, we'll, we'll certainly be able to provide you with the, the time gaps between the Ethiopian in the lead, Tais, and then this chasing group of four. Yeah, Ross, but... Um Ook aan my bekend is, is dat Hendrik wil Boston Marathon gehaard loop het um, hierdie jaar. En toe hy nie uh, inskryving vir Boston Marathon kry nie, toe het hy besluit om na twee oceane marathon toe te kom. Ek het ook sy oefening gesien by Julek oor die afgelopen twee, drie weke en hy is baie fiks. He certainly sounded confident in the uh, press conference talking about that record. I think at this stage, having seen the leader go through in 2.19, that seems to be out of the picture at this stage um, because when that record fell, of course, Thompson went through in about 2.15. And so they're four minutes off that schedule with a more difficult finish compared to 1988. So I think this has now become a race and no longer a pursuit of that one million. Ross, I must tell you that it will be around 307, 308 as a normal year of this year, but it will be very tactical. Groot verskil maak in waar jy was in die wedloop op hierdie stadium. 
e molle mo ngotla batla ba karolo ya 1 million rand ho ba rwetsana Fritz van der Merve ke yena ya ile nga yetsa ka selemo sa 1989 hane ya matha di kilometer ra tsena ka metu ho ga tse tharo metsotso e mashume a mararo le metsotso ana e mashume a mararo le metsotso e tsiletseng ho ba nna teng ka 1988 ene ile moena Thompson Mahawani ya ile nga e matha jalo ka di ho ra tse tharo metsotso e mararo le metsotso ana e mashume le metsotso e mene se o re shebileng ha jalo ko bona e be ba rwetsana ba ntse ba etsang let us see what women are doing ja, hier die groep is nou een beetje groter, daar is nog een atleet wat bij hulle kom aansluit het. So, hier die groep het nou voorbij die voorloper gegaan, Ketana Tadesa. So, wat ons duidelijk sien, is hier die vier atleete, hy het die potentiaal om hier die wetloop te wen, en dis nou die begin klim van Constantia Nek. Hier gaan het wees wat die atleet is die sterkste, en as hulle oor die Constantia Nek is, dan gaan het wees wat die atleet die vinnigste is, en ek sal my geld op Hendrik Ramala sit. Well, you've just seen how much damage a steep hill like Constantia Nek can do, because we saw a gap at the bottom of this climb of 15 seconds, and that was from Tedese to Tace, who was himself ahead of the chasing group, and they've now bridged all those gaps. And we have a new set of leaders going up the climb. And this is one of the first times we've seen such a pedigreed large group going up Constantia Nek. So we really can expect some fireworks once they get down the other side. Een van die meest ervaren atleten in hierdie groep is Mabotile van Lesotho. En hy het al voorheen gewen en hy het sy Hueto Marathon verskrikkelijk goed gehaard op en ook een vorige wenner. Lebeng yang kongka ya sanjalo le soto ulana bona le monsa ne se fitileng u ila fella maemong abu robo mote ngai lengai mata kana ko ya di horatse tharo le metsotso le shumela metsotso me raro jalo tsa tsinaka jeno re bona ihle a mata hantse re bona ba rwetsa neng o ntse a mata pele shetage ya ntseng a tsheditse jalo ke ba hlankana ba reng ha re ye me di hora se le tsepedi le metsotso e mashume a mararo ha jwale a ileng hore o ntse a mata pele Jonathan is she shetage is is she is she keeping with the pace Ya se tay a hartop a baie goeie wyse reis en dis en nou gesien het, sy het op haar loos gekyk en in 2008 het sy 226 marathon gehaard loop so, vir my is het baie kenmerkend dat sy meer as 3 minuten voorsprong het Well, she really does look good. You can see she's got very relaxed arm carry still. It's a classic Ethiopian running style, that actually. Um, very slightly built. And she's now also leaving Hart Bay, coming up to that marathon mark. And what will be interesting is we've just seen her compatriot in the men's race pay the price on Constantia Nek. I wonder whether she will also start to pay that price. But she has this three-minute advantage, and so she really is looking in a good position if she can just get over this big challenge. Sy het die voordeel nou ras dat sy a drie minuten voorsprong het, so sy hoef nie so hard op Constantia Nek te werk nie. En dit kan een groot voordeel wees aan die einde van die wetloop. It would be interesting to know whether she's getting that feedback about her lead. I mean, we obviously have seen those time gaps, but it would be interesting to know whether she herself knows that. Because certainly, if she knows it, then she's in a luxury position where she can actually take it pretty easy and then really consolidate over the final 10. Do you think probably she's still going to meet some challenges like the guys? Because we never thought that uh, Tadesa will, will, will be bitten by yes. or passed by the Lesotho group. No, I think once you get past 42K, especially when you get uh, thrown a challenge like Constantia Nek, you know you're going to meet challenges. And so this is the unknown territory for all these athletes who are stepping up in distance. And so we can certainly expect this. Plus then once you've got the long ben the benefit of that long descent and then you get to Kirstenbosch where it's up and down, up and down, that can really be rhythm sapping and take a lot out of your legs. So she is by no means home and dry, but certainly she's done an enormous amount of work to get into this position and it'll be fascinating to see if she can finish the job. Well, Gemetu Debelu has a PB of uh, 2.26.10 from the uh, 2008 Paris Marathon, her most recent marathon coming earlier this year in the very hot and humid Hong Kong Marathon where she was third in 2.35.18. But uh, she's an Ethiopian uh, nationality and uh, she's represented Ethiopia before in three uh, world championship marathons. So definitely the uh, East Africans coming here to Two Oceans today really to prove a point that uh, the East Africans can, at this stage, in run ultras. Well, I think there's so much depth, Q, in, in, in their running. Um, you know, that, that, that to be in the top 50 in Kenya or Ethiopia means that you're top five in pretty much any other country. So, so they have so much depth. And uh, now the battle is on really for, for, for the podium positions in the men's race. And this is becoming very interesting. 
really interesting race that we're seeing now. The uh, two Max Elite athletes in front on the left of your screen, Lebenia and Korka, who was ninth here last year, his first gold medal in the race. And uh, on his left, the athlete uh, Helen with the glasses, Mabutile Levopo, the 2010 Two Oceans winner, the fifth fastest time ever and third fastest time ever on this course when he ran that 306 victory back in 2010. But in the middle of the screen, Helen, in the net bank kit, Hendrik Romala, 206 marathon and a winner of the uh, New York Marathon back in 2004. Well, it's fantastic to see Hendrik up there because we didn't see very much of him in the earlier stages of the race, which Josie's uh, run quite a smart event, come through, through. We all know he's got great speed, so this is setting us up for a fantastic finish. Well, Hendrik Romala, of course, has had a wonderful career as a marathon runner. He's also a sub 60 minute half marathon runner, very quick marathon. And he's had a wonderful, wonderful career over the last 15 years or so. But now I'm quite frankly a little surprised to see him up here. Not that it's a matter of class because he's got it, but I'm not sure if he's been training that hard. And, but clearly this is what he's been aiming for. Definitely, Ian, and it's really interesting to see that uh, although Hendrik has won many SA titles in South Africa, he hasn't won any of the big SA races, but that is because due to the fact that he hasn't uh, competed in them. But when you have the likes of Labenia and Mabutile, we're talking of winners, Helen, of the Johannesburg Marathon, multiple Soweto Marathon victories, and Mabutile with that victory coming in two oceans. They know how to do it. Yes, I think so, but so does Hendrik. Hendrik's raced against world-class fields. He's, he's won the New York marathon he's got everything it takes in his head and physically to uh, turn it on race against the best and and be a victor very hard part of the course still climbing up to the top of uh, Constantinek it's a it's a wonderful milestone for the runners to, to reach in the race because not only is it psychologically important to be at the top of, of, of the biggest hill but also the atmosphere and the crowds and the whole support you get and uh, the realization that you've gone past the standard marathon and it's it's not it's kind of sort of all downhill but there are still plenty of ups and downs as you wind your way down towards Kirstenbosch but uh, these three guys working together is it's very important for them to stay together right now definitely in and uh, i must actually make a correction the athlete with the glasses on is not actually Mahutile Lebopo, Helen, but his younger brother, Warren Yane, who was sixth last year. His brother is in the race as well, and both of them have former top ten finishes. So, Warren Yane with the glasses, sixth last year, looking for a victory today. Yeah, well, it could come from any one of these three if they, they can hold it um, together. But I must say that... Hendrik actually looks really comfortable. He doesn't look like he's running with any stress, etc., or any pain whatsoever, and he's got a turn of speed. I think, uh, you know, Hendrik, it's, it's very interesting to see what he's going to do here because the other guys in Coca and Lebopo are seasoned two oceans runners. They run 56, they've all done well before. For Hendrik, this is a kind of a virgin territory, I suppose. Definitely, but uh, if you had to look at the marathon times, Helen, Waranyane with the 218 PB and Labenia with the 217, it's a huge difference with uh, Hendrik behind them with that 206. 11 minutes quicker, although it was a few years ago, he still got it in the legs. Yes, he is, and he's, in, and he's running smart. He's just sitting behind these guys, letting them do the work, feeding off them and saving himself and hoping that when it gets sort of the last few kilometers, that nice downhill stretch, he can uh, stick with them, if not overtake them but we'll wait and see it's early days yet in this race that's position number four at the stage the ethiopian who led coming down uh, chapman's peak into heart bay and uh, the guys behind them and there we have in the max elite colors the older brother mabutile lebopo so his brother's up in front leading mabutile bringing the rear up still in the top 10 and as we see henry moyo the second place finisher from 2012 from malawi coming up he's a really really strong runner in and i wouldn't be surprised if he would be in the top three henry runs like that well henry moyo is uh, is a seasoned uh, two oceans campaigner he's been around and he knows how to pace himself but these are the guys that are all looking for top 10 places and uh, as we can expect lots of changes over the last uh, last uh, 12 k's 
some more athletes coming up the hill. We see in the uh, Max Elite colors the Zimbabwean Olympian who was 11th in the Beijing Olympics, Mark Focaroni. He was 10th here last year in two oceans and uh, hanging on for, on for a top 10 at the moment, but uh, looking a little bit worse for wear. And just behind him in was the uh, local Cape Town athlete, Intandazo Klina, who was second here last year. Yeah, I think a lot of hopes are riding on Klina to, to come up and, uh, and uh, maybe even improve on second place. It was a wonderful run by him last year. But, you know, there's so much class in this race and, and you've just got to have it perfect on the day. He had a fantastic run last year. He was, he was spectacular, very strong at the end. But uh, we haven't seen David Khatebe at all. But, uh, there were some questions over his fitness. It's now coming up for 2.38. Um, around about probably 25 minutes still to go in the race or, or so. But uh, I think the record is not possible. So the guy's now running for places. Definitely, and you can see that uh, these athletes, as they come on up the top of uh, Constantia Neck, we see they Mark Focaroni and uh, Kina. They are really, really looking like they've had a really hard battle out there. And uh, as you see the bike on the left there, indicating that Mark is the 10th uh, athlete. He's got the pedigree to hang on for that uh, top 10, although there is a lot of 10, um, 10 kilometers to go. So 10th place, and that's where the, the gold uh, medals finish, and that's where the... Uh, where the prize money ends uh, for in the, in the individual. Well, there's our leader in the women's race. Now, this is becoming really interesting. That's Shatai de Bellu running in the Nedbank colors all the way down from, uh, from Ethiopia. And she has just arrived here with a great deal of success coming up for two hours and 40. And she's running very strongly going up the hill. And uh, we, de we need to get some splits to see if she possibly is going to get the record. Well, she certainly is the pedigree to do so. She's got a 226 marathon behind her name, um, albeit it was uh, in Paris in 2008. She did run a um, come third in Hong Kong last year. That's quite an it's a v impressive performance. And, and if she has the p ability to come through and win this race. So at 39 kilometers, to Bello and Asafa, the two Ethiopians, then the Megaliava twins, Elena and Alessia, and then in fifth place, Mamarola Chalka from, uh, from uh, Lesotho. So that's the top five. We haven't seen anyone run away uh, from the Megaliava twins for a long while. They've, they've been beaten, but this looks like a very impressive run. Definitely. Uh, Debulu, a 2.26 marathon runner. If I'm not mistaken, I think she's still just on the bit of a climb up to the 42k mark, um, Ian. So if that is correct, she wouldn't be on the uh, record schedule as uh, to go through for the very tough women's record of 3.30, you'd need to be around uh, 2.36, 2.37. That was the target, 2.36. Yeah, the standard marathon mark is, is ahead of her. It's quite difficult to tell on, on, on Constantinic. The road winds, lots of trees. Um, and so you, it's difficult to tell where the, where, the, where the marks are, and it goes on for a long, long time. But I'm quite sure that uh, De Bellu will be quite happy with her performance today. That's, that's the 42-kilometer mark, so another minute or two. So she will get to the standard marathon mark somewhere around about 2.42, which is around about six minutes off the target time. So once again, I think the record is not going to happen. Well, it's actually an interesting uh, scenario with the woman's record because... That has been well within the capabilities of the women that are in the minor places. And uh, here we have Q in a little bit of a changing of uh, pace in the men's race. Definitely. We've seen the athletes just passed uh, on their left, uh, Southern Cross Drive, with uh, under 10 k's to go. And Labenya and Waranyane are really, really stringing things out here with Hendrik hanging in there. As we see the uh, fourth athlete, uh, also from Lesotho, the Toyota athlete, coming through there. Um, Ian, they must be close to 50 k's now, maybe about uh, 49 or so. Yeah, I would say 49, 48 k's. So, and w what, what Valen was telling us is a very deceptive part of the course because you can't really see very far ahead. There's lots of twisting and turning generally down, but a couple of little uphills. But now, now it's the surging and we've seen this so many times. Who's the king of the last five k's? And this is where we see the strength of the Lesotho athletes. They've been here. They've done it before. La Benya in front. To me, Helen may be pushing a bit too much. Uh, it still is quite a while to go. Warren Yane, perhaps the more clever one, biding his time. But uh, Hendrik looking like uh, the distance might be getting to him. Well, I think he's just maintaining his pace. And the, and the two athletes in the front are surging. We've seen 
the, the, the leaderboard in this race changed just in this area on previous years when a guy sort of gets that excited, but it's a beautiful bit of running, steady downhill, and you can pick up the pace, but you have to be patient. Big surge coming in there from Labenia and Korka. He really is he really is pushing the pace. And if you look at Warren Yanni Lebopo in, 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 in the second place, he's also going hard, but he's not making up that ground. These guys are running probably at around about three minutes a kilometer down these hills. And Henrik Ramallo now a distant third, maybe 30, 40 meters off the pace. Well, at the top of Constantia Neck, there was a three-minute gap between the first man and the tenth man. It'll be interesting now, as we get closer to the finish, just if that stretches out. Well, Lavinia and Korka in the colors of Max Elite really, really stringing things out with his uh, countryman and training partner, Warren Yane, just behind him. And uh, if you look at Lavinia's two oceans history, he was 30th both in 2010 and 2011. He was 11th in 2012 and last year finally cracked ninth spot uh, for that uh, coveted gold medal for top 10 finish. Ian, he's leading the race with about uh, six Ks to go, seven, six, seven Ks to go. Could this be his year? Well, it certainly could be his year, but you know what? It, it's, it's never quite over. There's, there's lots of downhill to go, but the last little kicker, the last couple of Ks out of Kirstenbosch onto the M3, there's, it's not a massive climb, but it's definitely a climb. So um, it's not all over yet, but what a beautiful scene. I mean, this is really Cape Town at its best, coming down from, from the neck down towards Kirstenbosch, Lots of trees, beautiful view off to the right uh, of the runner. And there's Nkolka, 31 years old now. now, And his best time, 3.13, in fact. So, so I think he's going to go a lot better than that today. Definitely. They went through the uh, marathon mark just a shade under 2.20, around about 2.19.50. So at this stage, Helen still on pace for around about 3.08, 3.09. Definitely a sub-3.10 finish, but uh, a long way out from that 3.03 and uh, no million rand for them this no, year. No, no million rand this year, but I think every year they gain experience and a little bit knowledge of, a better knowledge of, of how to approach this race. And uh, one just hopes that they haven't pushed too hard. And I think yesterday, we, with 49 k's to go, there's another, what, seven kilometers left in this race. And we heard the marathon champion, um, Wilson, yesterday talking about when you run a race, it's all about patience, having the mental ability and the patience to wait, A, for your goal and the patience in a race. And we just hope that these athletes have, got, have not gone off too early. So with seven kilometers to go, two hours and 46 minutes, you add on 22 minutes roughly. So we're looking at around about a 3.07, which is pretty much part of the course for the last uh, seven or eight years. Definitely, and uh, 3.07 in today's conditions, uh, really great. Ian, as you can see, the, the, the banners there really, really blowing. But uh, there we have uh, a nice graphic of the leading man versus race record speed. And uh, you can see where that race record is right up there, Ian, compared to the uh, leading man. Quite a big difference. Yeah, well, they, they not, they've never really reached it. And in fact, they've got, uh, they've got closer to it. Um, so that race record <laughs> up in the stratosphere, if you like, and that yellow line, it was kind of trying to get there. But oops, in the last couple of Ks, it just dipped away. So it, there's, it's, it's not by accident that those records are still there. They were phenomenal performances, I and mean, it's not just some fluke, you know. Well, we were talking about that earlier, that um, both Thompson and Frith, if, if we could have run, run internationally, would have been making their mark on serious international marathons at that point in time, but they were, were restricted to running in South Africa, and that's why these performances, their performances are so good, and the, the athletes coming through don't have that marathon time that they had when they were running those records. One thing that I picked up from Wilson Kipsang is he said to me, this race is not just a long marathon. It is another class of race. And I don't think we should so lump it with marathons. Oh, it's an add-on 14 Ks. It's a class of its own. And, and that came through to me very clearly from what Wilson Kipsang said. So let's uh, get a couple of Twitters. I'm running from the bedroom to get a cup of tea in the kitchen. Well, I hope you do a PB, whoever you are all the way from your bedroom to the kitchen. But getting back to that, and, and to my mind, Frith van der Merwe was without a shadow of a doubt the best women's ultramarathon runner that has ever lived in the world. 
I don't think that anybody's ever been better than her. Look at her performance over 50, 56 and 89 Ks. She was in a class of her own completely, just like Bruce Fordyce was in the, in the very big ultras. Well, I think the year that Frith ran this um, fantastic two oceans, she'd run a 2.30 marathon, and then she went on a few months later to run a 2.27, which in those days would have been enough to win a major city marathon. So I think that just demonstrates the caliber of athlete that she was. And that was also the same year that uh, Frith ran that phenomenal 554, 15th place comrades finish, Ian. But um, Labenia and Korka is still in this stage leading the race. They gap uh, around about, eight, um, about 100 meters, 80 to 100 meters, Ian, but uh, really hard to distinguish as there's a lot of twists and turns now. Yeah, a picture breaking up under the trees, that's what, uh, that's what happens. We'll get back to that action. Looks like Labenia and Korka is doing very, very well and on his way to victory. But getting back to our competition, the Adidas competition, there are 10 winners. Five of them will get to that uh, smart run watch. All that technology in there, amazing bit of equipment. And uh, five further winners, a pair of energy boost Adidas running shoes. So when did Adidas join the, the old neutral two oceans marathon as the technical sponsor in 2013 or in 1993? SMS the keyword, which is Adidas. Don't forget that. Followed by your name and the answer to the race to 33763 three, SMS now, and you could be the winner of the shoes or the watch. What a sunny day that is here in uh, the beautiful Cape, and uh, it doesn't really show quite how windy it is, but that's the view from the helicopter, and if you want to do on my bucket list that I want to do one day is ride around the peninsula in a helicopter. Maybe when I retire from broadcasting, they'll let me do that. I don't know. I thought you were going to say on a bike. <laughs> Anyway, but it is a beautiful day out there. Nice conditions. It hasn't got as hot as what one may have thought it was going to get, um, which is great for the athletes. Well, let's just uh, change pace for just a minute. We talked about the TOMI, the Tr uh, Two Oceans Marathon Initiative. One of the charities that uh, is on their list this year is Sankob, where they rehabilitate uh, coastal birds and we had a wonderful afternoon the other day we went out to Milnerton to see what they did with the penguins Sankop stands for Southern African Foundation for the conservation of coastal birds Hello, a mouthful. <laughs> yeah, and uh, what we do is we uh, primarily rehabilitate um, African penguins. They used to be called jackass penguins, they're now Africans, and uh, a bunch of other seabirds. So your petrels, your gulls, um, albatrosses, um, all those good birds. And uh, over the last nearly a half a century, we have been uh, working at, at this. So uh, we've done over 90,000 seabirds in that time. How much of a problem is there with these, these polluted birds? There's a huge problem. Um, they've been faced with every possible um, bad thing that can happen. I mean, a little bit like Cody, who's such a toughie, um, but he's overcome everything and he will surf. Well, our African penguins are like little tanks. Um, so firstly, there was the historic guano harvesting, the gua harvesting of the eggs. Um, there's uh, overfishing, so every bit of fish that gets eaten is less for the penguins. Um, there's been habitat degradation, climate change. You know, you just throw it at them. And, and how many volunteers are involved in this whole thing, apart from that massive one years ago? We have uh, a staff of about 24 across the two facilities, the one here in Tableview in Cape Town and the other one in St. Francis in uh, the Eastern Cape. And then we have hundreds of volunteers that help us. Some come from uh, places like Germany, Japan. We just had somebody from Mexico. Um, we have an internship program where people stay with us for more than three months. So they really, really learn the ropes. Um, and so there's hundreds of people involved um, in this operation. Um, the one thing I haven't mentioned is we have a very, very strong education department and uh, they see about between eight and 9,000 uh, kids and adults over the year. What is your relationship with the Old Mutual Two Oceans Marathon? Well, we have been very blessed this year. We are one of the TOM initiatives, so that means that we will be receiving funding from this event. We're going to go to the preschools and we've, uh, we've actually isolated four from the poorer communities and we're going to teach them some lessons because we like working with the little kids. We like working with everyone, of course, but it's very important that they catch it 
really, really early, and they get inspired by penguins. At that very, very early age, penguin, which is this beautiful creature that they see in all their comics and all their uh, little videos, and the fact that they can actually make a difference and tell their mums and dads, no, don't do that. Well, if you're in the Western Cape and you want to see something interesting, go out to the Flay near Tableview and go and visit St. Cobb. It's a fantastic experience. So is watching the winner or the leader right now, which is Lebenia and Kolka, as he heads down towards the finish. Is it game over, Kieran? I think so. There's around about four and a half to five k's. He's running on that long downhill past the Kirstenbosch Gardens on his left. And, uh, you know, Ian, he came ninth last year. He's run the race four times before Helen, and he's got the experience in two oceans. And uh, perhaps I think that winning move was the, the one that uh, maybe sealed it for him. But as we see the, the immense leaderboard at 50 kilometers, Lebenian Korka leading through the 249.02 with uh, Warren Yane Lebopo 249.23 back in second, and Hendrik uh, another 30 seconds back, 249.35. But uh, Looking like there could be a lot of uh, changes going through towards the, the end there. And uh, some of the Kenyans now coming through. Uh, Arnold Kibet there in eighth. But nice to see that there are still some South Africans in, in top ten. And hopefully it can stay that way all the way through to the finish. Well, Tina is in ninth place. He's the Western Province man. Mazubuku in, uh, in the frame there, as is Henry Moyo. Uh, this is the man that everybody's watching. And uh, Lebenia and Korka really has been very, very strong. Second place, a uh, man going through. So that's uh, the second place, Hendrik Ramala. Well, you can just see him uh, coming into frame on the right-hand side, so he's not that far behind. Definitely, we've seen the picture of coming through, the younger brother of Mabutile, the 2010 winner, still holding on to that second place. But uh, Hendrik is still still doing it. He's right there in the third position, and you also see that uh, bike on the side indicating that he's also the first veteran at uh, he's 42 years old. So Hendrik coming through in third, and uh, Matijane from uh, Toyota, the uh, Lesotho athlete, Helen, coming through behind him. Kieran, you're quite involved with the um, team that the, the front guys are running with. Just a bit of their build-up and their training for, for the two oceans? Yeah, well, um, the athletes who run in the colours of Max Delete, the Lesotho contingent, uh, as we see La Pena, one of them leading the race, is a group of five to six of them who train uh, up in Maseru and really high, high up in the mountains in Lesotho. They all train together. And uh, interestingly, in the 2010 Two Oceans, when uh, five of them came to run it for the first time, they had first, second, fourth, sixth, and Labenia that you're coming 30th. So four out of a group of five finishing in the top 10 in such a highly competitive race like Two Oceans. They prepare extensively for this race and uh, the training is showing right now. Just under four kilometers to go. So they've got 252 Ks in uh, sub 256. So if you can add on around about uh, 12, 13 minutes. So it's going to be about a 309 race this year. And right now it's not about records. That's, that's history. It's all about the top 10. And shuffling in the pack behind the top three is still going to uh, give some interest, I think. Yeah, I think that we're going to see a few people coming through, some others dropping back. And um, I think a favorite with the crowd will be Hendrik Ramala. And everybody will be just hoping that he can sort of at least hang on to a top five. There is the, you know, the, we can see the guys coming for fifth and fourth. And he's in position, the third position. He is sort of going back slightly. But... Let's hope that he doesn't slow down. He can just retain form because he has got this whole running up to the university now. Well, if you ask me, my, my big surprises today, and, and, and pleasant surprises, I think, is the way Hendrik is running. I think it's a, an extremely good performance by him after you know, being a little bit in the wilderness recently with his running. He's got admin duties and all sorts of things. And also, of course, uh, Diana Leva-Palula in the, in the Women's Half Marathon, the winner this morning. That was a big surprise and, and, and really good for them. And also a, a double uh, winning session there for coach uh, Michael Seme, former coach of Casa Semenya, the coach of both Stephen Mokoka and uh, Diana Lebo Palula. And really, Palula's running has really leapt uh, increasingly this year. She won the uh, Cape Town Spa Ladies Race, and now she's backed it up with a victory in the uh, Two Oceans Half Marathon. But back to Constantia Neck and the uh, lead lady, Helen uh, Gemetru Bekelu from uh, Ethiopia, still, still hanging in there. Yes, and I think we can see that um, she's finding Constantia Neck quite a difficult climb, which it is. It's, it's very, very steep, and she'll be just wanting to get up to the top of this where she can have a, a nice, gentle sort of 
break down for down towards Kirsten Bosch. She's looking quite strong and in control, and it would be quite new territory for her. We're not aware of her having ever run a distance over 42 kilometers. So behind her is the second Ethiopian, although we can't see her. Well, that was the case a while back, Agali Asefa. And then behind them, the two of them, are the Nagaliova twins. So we don't have really any splits at the stage, but that was the, the situation. And I don't think we should necessarily write off the Nagaliovas. Possibly they're going to struggle to catch the winner. But they may dip into second and third, possibly. Well, this is the first time that we're seeing uh, an East African Helen in an ultra marathon rally uh, coming through there. She's at this stage the furthest she's ever run in her life. Uh, 42k, the standard marathon. She's won the uh, Paris. Uh, she's come fourth in the Paris marathon back in 2008 when she ran that PB of 2:26. Uh, she won the Amsterdam marathon in 2001. But uh, at the moment, she's in no man's land. It's uh, gonna take a lot of uh, serious uh, head talking to get her through to the finish and on the same pace I don't think we've seen the end of this ladies race she's not looking as comfortable as what she she may do and we know that there are some very experienced campaigners uh, coming through from behind I did have a, a glimpse at a, a sheet just earlier and Alicia Nagalieva was not in the top five, and I know that Q and you did mention yesterday that she was feeling she was a little bit fluey, so she might have actually dropped out of the race. We'll be waiting to to pick up on that. I had a chat with the Nagalievas uh, yesterday, day before yesterday, and the first thing they said to me was that they're feeling a little bit fluey, fluey, my head cold. They're not feeling great, and that came from their their long trip back uh, from from Turkey. I think it was where they were training, so they weren't coming in here feeling particularly strong. Um, but, uh, you know, that's that's life. I mean, that's that's the way it goes. But but this lady is has been up front for a long time, and uh, she looks like uh, well set to win. But you never know. She will be nearing the 46-kilometer uh, mark, which is, marks the uh, top of Constantia Nick. And going through the uh, 39k mark, just a few kilometers back, uh, both Nogalieva twins were still at that stage, Helen, in the, the top five. So maybe experience might be able to get them through, but uh, a three-minute lead at that stage still, still very far. Well, yesterday, when we were chatting with the Ethiopian team or the, the group of athletes that have come down, they, they fund themselves down. They get um, supported by the club, Nedbank Club, once they're here. So there was big motivation for them to get out there and run. And they were very non-committal. It was quite difficult to get any information about their, their, how they were looking forward to it, what pace they were wanting to run, other than the, the, that one million rand was quite an incentive. Where you can see the uh, pictures of our race leader in the 56-kilometer, uh, Lebenian Corker from Lesotho. Ian, his, uh, the, the knee lift there, not too high as it was when he was flying on those downhills, so really taking strain, but uh, he's got less than three kilometers to go now. Well, they're coming up now on, on the freeway up back towards the, the University of Cape Town. We've mentioned this earlier, is that when Magawana and Fanamova set their records, the finish was significantly lower in altitude than, than this finish is. And uh, I think on any given day that would make it more difficult, but certainly today. So instead of dropping down to Brookside and the Villagers Rugby Club, you start climbing up. Okay, now, this is Constantia Neck. This is the second-placed woman, and I do believe it's Podnes Novak, the Russian. And uh, Helen might know a little bit more about her, but uh, I'm not sure her first name. It might be an arena, possibly, but that's Podnes Novak. She's also run before. But, uh, it's certainly uh, a turn-up for the books in the women's race. Yeah, Nina is... Um She's run two oceans, or she's got two gold medals before in two oceans. She's run a 3.43 in um, 2011, and then a 3.45. She's, um, the Nergali Ava sisters were most fearful of her when they were coming into this race. They felt that she was um, the biggest threat uh, because she had run a 2.31.37 in the Russian Marathon Championships in 2010, which is quite recent if one compares the performances of the other athletes. Let's have a look at the gap now between the top woman. There is the first lady, Shtai De Bellu, coming through. This is second place, Irina Podnesnova of the Russian. Now, she's chasing hard. She looks really, really tired, but I don't think there's a big gap. Nina Podnesnova, bit of a mouthful, but there she goes, second place. We've really got a race on our hands now, Kieran. 
definitely, and we've got a really exciting race coming up. At the uh, 39k mark, we had uh, word that the Belu was three minutes ahead, but uh, Nina, she's a 2.31 marathon uh, runner, Helen, her best time from Russia. She was fifth last year, so she's been here. She knows how to handle the distance, and it's showing now that uh, with the Belu, the uh, distance is getting to her. We're really, really going to have a cracking finish to the women's race. And she came off a 2.38 marathon last year, which is... Um sets you up nicely to run a race like the Two Oceans. She ran that 3.43 in 2011, which was probably the um, most competitive field we've ever had in a race, even though it wasn't when the reckoned record wasn't set. And here we've got the third position, lady. So in third place now, coming up for Konstantin Hecke, Lena Megalieva, looking very, very tired. Um, uh, as I said, in the interview prior to the race, she said she was struggling with a bit of a... Uh, a bit under the weather with a bit of a cold, a bit of a flu, a bit of sniffles. So, so maybe that's getting to her. But uh, ahead of her is one Ethiopian, the Belu, and another Russian, Podnes Banova. So unusual to see Elena back in third place. Well, it's been quite interesting, Ian. We've seen the, the twin sisters dominating both the Two Oceans and Comrades Marathons. But last year in Two Oceans, we had Elena finishing third and her sister Alessia only 11th. And there were warning signs that maybe their time is, is up, but they backed that up with a first and second place finish in Comrades. So perhaps, um, Helen, with the marathon distance runners now coming into Two Oceans, Two Oceans might be getting a little bit too fast for them. Well, I think you've also got to look at the history. I mean, we're looking at Elena. She's, she's got 10 golds. I mean, that's actually phenomenal. I don't know if there's any other athlete, male or female, who's got 10 golds in the two oceans. She saw, she's, got, she's won the race four times. She's come second four times, and um, she's come third twice. So, at 45 kilometers, the Belu, Ethiopia, Podnebisnova, Russia, Nagalieva, Russia, Chalka, Mamarilla Chalka, Lesotho, and Alessia Nagalieva from Russia. That's the top five at 45 k's uh, into the race. Now, Elena Nagalieva going over the top of Constantia Neck. Well, we believe the gap between the first and the third athlete who we're seeing on the screen now is two and a half minutes, and then 40 seconds between the first and the second athlete. So, I think we're going to see a few changes in, in the women's race. Coming up now to the finish, right up uh, towards the University of Cape Town, 3.05, and uh, Labenia and Corker pretty soon, Kuhn will be hitting the grass. Definitely, this has been the race of his life. Labenia and Corker, former Soweto Marathon winner. He's finished second in Cape Town. He's got a 2.15 marathon best. And today he's going to be pulling off Helen the biggest victory of his life and taking 250,000 rands for his hard efforts too. Yeah, an excellent performance. He really put uh, his foot down, coming down past Kirsten, Kirsten Bosch, took advantage of that fantastic downhill um, to break the rest of the field. He's managed to hold on and uh, looking very happy. He certainly is looking happy, looking quite relaxed, his arms are up. But you know what, I think when you get into the last one and a half, two kilometers of a race like this, the crowd build you and you know you're going to win. And it's just the most amazing feeling. I remember Bruce telling me when he used to win Comrades, he used to say, he wants this to go on forever. He doesn't want this moment to pass because it is such a special moment. This was a huge race. The guys trained for a year for it. And as Wilson kept saying, said, it's all about the preparation and the tactics, patience and tactics. And that's what it is. And I think Lebanon and Cork has done remarkably well today. Well, less than a kilometre to go for Labenia and Corker. He's on that final little climb up into uh, UCT where he'll have a little bit of a downhill into the grass and across two rugby fields. And we're going to see around about a 3.09 time. But uh, Helen Labenia, as he got to the top of Constantia, just after 46 k's, really pushed the pace. And we thought uh, perhaps he's really going too early. But uh, it was, at that point, the decisive move. And uh, he is going to win this year's Two Oceans, barring any... Uh, cramp or anything yeah well we can hear the helicopter hovering above us which is indicative of um, him just sort of approaching the downhill bit towards into the the finish area but really an exceptional performance little uphill stretch coming up the hill he should be running pretty soon into the whole precinct once he gets the grass on the UCD rugby fields it's a long way it's a couple of hundred meters two four rugby fields uh, but there is an absolutely huge crowd here. It's a beautiful day. And, of course, the iconic University of Cape Town building sitting on the side of Table Mountain. 
looking out uh, eastwards towards the Hottentot Hollands Mountain and the rugby field sits just below it and they've got amazing branding great big grandstand thousands of people club tents you name it here at the finish and uh, it is one of the great sights in South African sport one of the great moments when the winners come into the to the finish of the, of the two oceans marathon and as Nkoka comes up over a little rise he'll run right past our OB vans is going to run outside of our window if you look over our shoulders we'll see him coming in onto that white concrete and then he'll make a little zigzag past our television point and onto the grass and the chairs in the background what a feeling this must be definitely i've got goosebumps just looking at this uh, beautiful picture of lebenian coca coming through we can hear the crowd outside they're getting a little bit crazy bringing him through to the uh, finish in the uct grounds and uh, really really fantastic you ooh, ooh. A bit of cramping coming there on the downhill, Ian. But uh, if he can just hold on, he will be the champion of the 2014 Old Mutual Two Oceans Marathon. Yeah, every every athlete's nightmare. And, and uh, it brings you back saying it's not over till you cross the finish line. And he's just on the grass now. He'll swing a right hand uh, round this corner and then he'll be able to see that finish line. Well, what a sight it is, and there are little flags fluttering with that southeaster, which is still blowing. But right now, he's got the wind behind him, and he is feeling like a million, not a million rand, certainly 250,000 rand. And I think right now, I don't think he cares too much about the record. The win, but Benyon Koko taking his, uh, his first old neutral two oceans marathon victory and here he comes and this massive crowd will bring him home and it has been a great run he's going to get very very close to 3010 not the quickest two oceans we've seen in many a year but very exciting as always so the winner of uh, this year's race the benyon Koka of max delete and lesotho well done to you 309.52 unofficially the uh, athlete the Lebenian Corker from Max Elite your winner of the uh, Old Mutual Two Oceans Marathon Ian records can be taken away but titles will forever stay and Lebenia will forever be the winner of this year's race of course he will and uh, he's obviously got a camping that's Wilson Kipsang there on the left a taller guy um, helping him up in his Adidas outfit and uh, he's being offered everything from towels to drinks to Pretty girls to Wilson Kipsang. And uh, that looks like Hendra Kramal in second place, unless we've missed something. Well, uh, we haven't seen um, a, the, the second place or the, the guy who was in the second place before. So Hendrik's actually come through the field to pick up. And this is going to be a popular uh, place gold medalist coming across the, the line. The athletics uh, fanatics here in UCT will definitely know who this man is, Hendrik Romala, in the colors of Netbank. Great, great run, Ian, 42 years old, and coming to run his first ultra and finishing second. A ph phenomenal performance today by the, by the great man, Romala. I must admit, I, I, I didn't would have ever placed him in that. I think that, that he's out, out done himself. I think he's done remarkably well. And he's made, remember, this is his first ultra marathon. He's made the transition. The other guys around him have run 56 and a couple of them comrades but there is Henrik Ramala one of the the most well known of South Africa's road runners over the last decade he's won all sorts of things around the world a fantastic performance by him uh, he picks up second position and first bet first 40 plus so that's going to be a nice payday for Henrik and uh, Wilson Kipsang will know Ramallah very well himself as they have gone head to head before in the uh, London Marathon. But uh, the third athlete here, Matijane from uh, Lesotho in the Toyota colors, also coming through Ian. So uh, Waranyane Lebopo, as we see him there in the background, really struggling over that last uh, three or four Ks. But uh, Matijane from the Toyota Club, three hours, 12 minutes for third position. What a great run. As we see the uh, Max Elite athlete coming through, Warren Yane Lebopo, the younger brother of the 2010 winner Mabutile. Great performance today by him. Three hours, 12 minutes for fourth position. An improvement from his sixth last year. So four men home now. Two of them from Lesotho and uh, two of them in the colors of uh, Max Elite. And uh, that's position number five. That's Tedesa from uh, Ethiopia second hand bank man home he led for quite a while it has faded back to fifth position but i'm sure that the ethiopian will be happy with his run for Temer to desa so there's five uh, top five and five more gold medals to go 
and uh, there's Nick Bester, the team manager of Nedbank, position number six. Michael Papi Mazibuko, third in last year's Gauteng Marathon in a brilliant time of 2.17. This will be his first gold in two oceans. Two years ago, or three years ago, if I'm not mistaken, he led over the top of uh, Constantia, but fizzled at, at the end. But uh, sixth position for him, 3.13, great run. And the second South African after Ramallah. So uh, a mixture. We had quite a number of uh, non-South Africans in the first ten. Uh, at the last leaderboard, but we'll just see how that changes. So now we have five men home, and uh, outside that crowd of media tent to finish. Uh, I guess we'll get a couple of words with our winners just uh, in a while. Number six. Well, the next athlete coming through here, the uh, seventh athlete in uh, 313. So very close uh, together there at the end, and uh, we'll have to get a um, number on this athlete, but uh, probably one of the uh, East Africans here. 313. It's pretty good running, but remember that's now 10 minutes outside the course record. And let's look at those crowds. They are lining the, the side of this uh, field here. There's a great big grandstand off to the left of the picture with another couple of thousand people in. But uh, that's the name we just need to fish out uh, from our records. Kiptaya, that's it. That's one of the Kenyans. We thought it was a foreign runner. Arnold Kibet Kiptaya. And I wonder if Kiptaya will be uh, there on hand to welcome him. Well, Arnold ran his uh, debut marathon last year in the uh, Nairobi Marathon Inn at a very, very high altitude, at 2.17, so it just shows the class. And uh, perhaps with Kipsang coming here this year, there might be more interest uh, in next year's race from, from the Kenyans and uh, Ethiopians. A riot of colour there on the UCT fields. It's just such a beautiful place. That's the University of Cape Town's faculties up against the mountains. Rhodes Memorial up behind it, and there's huge flashes of colour uh, all the club tents and uh, the runners coming in now not thick and fast but still in the top ten well the eighth place coming through Henry Moyo from uh, Netbank uh, he's actually from Malawi second here in, in uh, 2012 and uh, sixth last year on debut in Comrade so just showing that uh, every year he's a man that you you can put your your winning bucks on uh, very very good performance by Moyo today and uh, perhaps we'll see him on the first of June again well, yes, he's having a go at, at the Comrades Marathon, but yet another medal for the man from Malawi, Henry Moyo, who's uh, made something of a, a career, if you like, or speciality of coming down to Cape Town. And, you know, he's, he's pretty much, you can bank, put him in your bank for, for, a, um, for a gold medal here. Henry Moyo, all the way from Malawi. I have, haven't had any Zimbabweans in yet. A couple of Lesotho guys, a Kenyan, Ethiopian, a couple of South Africans, Malawian. Henry Moyo. Eight position there for Moyo. Helen, quite on the slow time, 3.15, just under 3.16, and uh, still two gold medals to go. Um, it hasn't been quite a while since, since we've had a, an athlete run 3.16 and still get gold. It, it, is a, it is a slow, the times in the top 10 are quite slow, and it's, it's amazing, partly to do perhaps with the um, going out too fast at the beginning to try and capture that one million rand incentive. Or Mtandato Kina from uh, the Netbank Club here in the Western Province, the first local athlete from Cape Town coming through. And uh, he might be a little bit disappointed with this run, Ian, after finishing second last year. But a uh, great run by him coming in ninth. And uh, the gold's now finishing in 316 with the uh, Toyota athlete of Daniel Patlane finishing 10th. Yes, I think Kina will be a little disappointed, but you know what? It's so hard to get uh, a top three placing here on the podium. But now we're outside the golds, and uh, 3.16, as we said, it was uh, pretty brutal two oceans out there, and I think the wind played its role. And pretty brutal for the uh, Max Elite athlete here, Mabutile Labopo, 11th position. Ian, you know, it's the worst position on the day, so close to gold, but uh, Helen Alista's brother made it. So Absolutely. happiness in the family. Well, we're out of the top ten now, and uh, all these guys are going to get silver medals all the way through to four hours. And, of course, we will see several, maybe even ten, possibly, women getting silver medals, but that's still to come. But right now, we are in uh, the next ten out of the top ten, and uh, a wonderful, wonderful two oceans. And uh, we will be back with the women after this break. is a celebration of running as this international friendship run also represents part of the 33,000 people from 74 nations 
who are here for a weekend of running in the world's most beautiful city, the world's most beautiful marathon, the Old Mutual Two Oceans Marathon. I'm back in South Africa because Czechs claim their butchery is even better. And I can see the cricket and it's a fluke name. Steakhouse Classic. Right, what's new then? This is whole Macania steak. It's Brazil's most popular cut. This is prime South African beef, perfectly matured and perfect marbling to enhance the flavor. Cook it whole, fat side down. I tiny lasers is too paramount. Brilliant. Now, this is not what I expect to find in the supermarket. It's a premium pork rump, one of the trickiest cuts for any butcher. Honestly, I'm impressed. Now, mm. it's still a butcher I'd buy from. It's still not so bad. Could there be a better way to retire? For the neighbors are friendly, the sun is my alarm clock. Old Mutual let me experience what my dream retirement would look like. Owning my own game lodge. 40 years before it happens. Everybody has dreams. Let us help you plan for yours from today. Welcome back. The winners in the top 10, top 20 are in. Just remember that if you're out there and you want to take part in our exclusive race day competition sponsored by Adidas, 10 winners, five of them picking up a smart run watch and a further five with a pair of energy boost running shoes. We need to go for, uh, you need to know which uh, year Adidas first became the technical sponsor of this race. Was it 2013 or was it 19, 1993? If you know the answer, SMS the keyword Adidas, followed by your name and the answer to 33763. Well, we need to go down to the finish line where we have uh, our winner. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ian Kenali Mofeni Fano, Meke Lebenya, Ngoka Kene Mofeni Waruna, Lebenya, Maikutuaho, Offensele Belo, Le Molatin La Compiano, Mefela, Hawafenia, Nako, Ene, Bay Report, Hauka Fenia, Ponela, Milono, Adiranta, Fellow Fentele Belo, Maikutuaho Jaffe. I get a Yuda Holo, Haholo, get a Yuda Hog Sativin, Karen, get a Yuda Holo, Kalebelo. Hoja <laughs> Fela <laughs> Competition a beam. Maraca on how you push a hard door, maybe three or three or four or three or five. Gelebrezena, Guajaro, Lebenia, Mehonte Felajano, Lebenia, Rito Menete Horowa, Bole Muemo, SBC, Tome, Felajano, Hona, Rapel, Hendrik Ramala, Mongue, Waban Nababa, Sabon, Hotaboha, Melemul, Satila Humpiano, and Nile Leseabe, Hendrik, Lebelola, Satila Humpiano, Maikutua, Haro, Kiafin, Tavida Raul, Ki. I hold the top three. I give a marathon overseas. 
and then they got me to throw my fellow look at it. Maybe I got to be a couple of people who are going to be a little bit. And then the only option is to have two oceans. Because the marathon is going to be a marathon. I pray that we have two oceans. So, you know, you can say, Mara, you know, I give you a training like I was saying. I give you a training to marathon, 42 kilometers. Eh, eh, 14 k's. I give you a face. Eh, my daughter is a wee ma. Eh, let's all give you a face. Very good. Eh, Mara, the question number two, 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 what's the face? Eh, receive the money. Do you want to make a little bit of a fellow? Get the bogus chava. Says you learn to make a keep town. Eh, make a little bit of a bajam mobile. Eh, bapa mfon ni cium bapa bapa kunci bapa kamu ka kelab warga. Ingan bapa kita wina mari kiki kiki tapi dia awal lagi kanam kanam orang awal beri kiki kreilai. Eh, kau kau mengawal tangan kita apa kita jaya tay telilenna. Eh, ibu ibu amat tamu. So kotor fiji. Kelab warga bapa kunci bapa kafe family aga bote bapa terhi dengan kamu ka. Eh. Pana bokle Hendrik me rekwele zama sikuwa kape muna kwenye tangu mo ma belonga kutoa nalia me kape kwenye kina le matabu kiumo mo kutoa kwa lisoto warini yana le belola le sasi la kumpiano li pa kwenye kama kuhunzi jana kutoa kuto le beji ampole la kuri pa kanya lona ine simu na timu mo kuka lo fela kifaa uboni mai mabra. Aya shina kutoa kalo kani tiki neji mwe tu mpaizi hat kata kutoa la fete tu kama nika mahahe. Kila kaya kutoa omo nuno, kila kaya kita fellow jema. Kila kaya hati kita mui pao nuno, kaya fortu, fortu kilometers. Kila kaya kutoa kila mata kani te, kila kaya kutoa kila mata. Mega fifty six, kala mata fifty six kilometers. Je, je alraga pele, mega le bo. Kala fifty six, kila kila le bo amga na mudi mo. Kala uwe ni nini kifumani positioni na yake kifumani, je kala mata alra. Wari jana le bo kile nchini. Kima silo majia, kima silo na tuangi ya, kima silo kile bo kile, kile bo. Dia tahu tu, ibu lelaki sedih tak tahu lah di kilometer. Kita orang tu masih memang masih nak lebih cerita tentang ribuan jual lo aingka lebih yang kau kau selaku lah haja le hubar rasa na refman awal re hunsau sila hufut mesi moting haja le cina mui waru na SABC tu unsur sila mata pele mui rasa na warga Russia kibu jual kena Nina Ross Nina is leading now. Things have changed. Changed in a big way, actually. Um, the last we saw of this race was at the top of Constantia Neck, and she was in second place. The gap to the leader from Ethiopia was at that stage 40 seconds, having been reported as three minutes when they were at the top of Chapman's Peak. So it was clear then that there was a change happening in this women's race, and she has continued that and come through very strongly. I think combined, the, the Ethiopian certainly has slowed down drastically from the top of Constantia Neck. And so now we have a, once again, a Russian leading the two Russians marathon. It's not the normal Russian, but it seems like we're just going to see a, another Eastern victory in the two Russians ultramarathon on the women's side. Hori mwane so sana sile sae ta hala jilimonze kabanze pedite fitile mote ni na ila saha asente a asaya a hapa lebelo. Kapasa ile jalo ho barueta na baba raro baka utimu. Miki ena hape ntune ya eta hala mote ni akadileng asile ale mkutwa nyane kapa akalaka mnyebe. Kuwa na hona jwale umataka pele meha utilo lekula ya na nina ponne besnova usile ana lesekhe upa kenta hae. Leo mshomu ale mbwe mbabu pedi ubane rekeke rare kishe tange ya mbwe mbwe pedi di petro segile nga. Utla kupula kore Elena le ole shavile watalo shagore kiena atloka ro avoni shagore agatla topa le vilole eva veva choka yena mi ba veva choka yena kwa umotiva vialoka mara mara vuvu na kore una lama atla kai atla kai romu avoni shagore una lama atla lekam fa waki di maroka kona avana kore usa na le wite po usa tleje matla romu akafele cha tupile le vilole she she looks quite confident. She does. She's certainly managed her race a little bit better than uh, the Ethiopian did. This is an Ina Podnebis Nova, and she is no stranger to two oceans. I think experience has counted for her today. She was fifth in 2011, fifth in 2013, both in mid 340s, and it's about the same time she's going to do today. So she is doing exactly what she's done before, but today the chips have fallen in her favor, and she looks like a likely winner of this race, barring some major changes over the last part. There we see Zola Bud, Zola Peterson. Now, of course, this is at Constantia Neck. This is, uh, of course, the iconic South African runner from the 1980s, Barefoot Zola, many people remember her as. 
and she has since run a few of these ultra marathons now and certainly having a solid run today not barefoot but uh, running in the in the shoes that company that she now works for and running under hooters now <laughs> Ross, the other thing is, do you think experience will help Nina? Because if you look at Shetange, this is this is her first ultra. So, do you probably think the the, the, the twins might even pass Shetange because of the of the experience? Yes, of course. Shetaya de Belu was the Ethiopian who we saw open a three-minute lead coming down Chapman's Peak, and she has now lost that and then some to the more experienced Podnebers Nova. And I think certainly the experience helps in that regard. The, the translation from a marathon to an ultramarathon is a difficult thing to do. And that's one of the reasons why Hendrik's performance, Peter, was so impressive today. It's, it's easy to say that an athlete who's a pedigreed marathon runner should be able to step up. But these final 14 kilometers, they are very telling. And I think that's what's told in both the men's and women's races today. Well, the leaderboard we saw there gave Pod Nevers Nova a minute lead over the chasing group, which included now a team that Elena Nagalieva had actually joined up with Debelu. So Debelu, having led over Konstantinek, is now probably under threat for even third position, if not fourth. And a uh, one minute lead with three kilometers to go, that's a big advantage, and I can't see the Russian being caught. This little climb that she's on now, it sneaks up on you. It's not even named, but in most marathons around the world, this would be one of their challenging climbs. It's short, it's difficult, but luckily for her, it comes within sight, really, of the finish line, and she seems to be working well enough over it for me to say with reasonable certainty that we're now looking at the athlete who will win the 2014 Two Oceans Ultramarathon. Ross, like you've run, uh, as you've run this morning, what, can I, what, what, can I, what comes into your mind when there's plus or minus four Ks, four Ks to go? Well, for me, having run a half marathon, I think it's different thoughts having run 52 k's up to that point when you make that left turn. Uh, at this stage, she's probably just thinking to herself, one foot in front of the other. She's, you can see she's working hard. You can see that she's really uh, looking over her shoulder because she's taking strain. It hurts. And what we've seen in both races is how attritional these ultramarathons are. You, you see in the men's race, the attacks came on the descent, and suddenly a group was split and there were minutes at the finish line and the same thing has happened on the women's race and so she's probably counting the seconds to the time when she makes the finish line but when she looks over her shoulder peter she will see nothing which is the most wonderful sight for an ultra marathon runner to see most definitely. How level the Mara Ora when the motor room Uyo Tsuba Ora Ora get like you want to give you for the leg like you are high about it. If I am motor level it's already level only level la fasinya na gar level it did now go. The race has become too slow for both uh, men and women. Uh, maybe there are a variety of factors that might have affected the race. I think so. I think we've seen today there was much talk about records with obviously that million rand incentive. But neither race was ever on pace. And that's really interesting because having spoken so much about their intention, neither the men's nor the women's race went out at that schedule. And I think it's a combination of the wind, which, is, which for the first half of the ultra would have been into their faces, as well as the temperatures. Because it may not be a hot summer's day, but with the sun out and the temperature in the low 20s, this is a tough day to be running at record paces. Kiana yanze ngamata kapele ni na ushara Russia me reactive au re kama sha hara ribibang hamna u S A B C two Twitter Leona Bala Jolie Diva are rooting for my friend Sizo Dube Leona hamla galete mashono le hai kudume le hore be na ota sha tole tu meka Ramosizi agadaro scrolling ubuajalo ashebile ba inembanka karolo kaje no usiam buajalo kabole siko Zulu James Murake kapa James underscore Murake are Hendrik Ramala is second what a distinguished I was about to ask you that, Ross. 
surprise, surprise, Henry Kroma. It's especially because he said by his own admission that his preparation was actually gold towards running the Boston Marathon, which happens on Monday in the United States. And he didn't get into Boston, so he decided, let me have a crack at this 56, which I believe has always been an intention. And to come out and run second, that's a, that's a solid debut, and I hope that he comes back and, and continues to put his efforts behind this race in a, in a focused way. Because I think that's, it's good for South Africa to have these iconic athletes who young athletes can aspire to emulate. It's clean and she's done the work, but you can see how much it's taken out of her. You, she's, she's almost limping. She's holding it together well, but every time the road goes down, you can see that she's on the verge of cramping. Those quads, the long descent from Constantia Neck has really taken it out of her. And in the men's race, we saw the, the race win in Corker. There's a steep little descent as you drop down onto the grass at UCT, and it hurt him. And I expect to see the same with her. She's really going to struggle, but she's done so much work to build a, now a 1 minute 54 lead that she can afford to even walk that descent. The I irony here at this point is that you'd prefer an uphill than a downhill, hey Donovan? Yeah, that like tijdelijk of haar rechter kijkt begin een kramp. Zij heeft van jullie haar 238 hart voor die marathon. Zo is niet verbazend dat zij uh, vandaag zo goed hart mee allemaal heeft gezegd. Zij is bij een fox. Zij is foxer als ik die Russische tweeling. Maar zoals je kunt zien, als zij haar rechtervoet neerzet, het lijkt of zij gaan kramp. A space of plus or minus 30 seconds in, in two case. Is that a serious threat for the second place? I, I don't think so. I think she's looking she's looking good enough that uh, with two k's to go, she has the experience. And when you're in the lead like this, this you can find something extra. And I think uh, I think she she's obviously the, the athletes behind are chasing, but I think the gap is too large. She's done all the work has really been done now. So as much as she's hurting, I expect that she'll hold on. There in the small screen on the squeeze back, you can see the Ethiopian Debelu looking still fairly relaxed and comfortable her pace has clearly dropped from what we saw uh, when we wa when we saw earlier in Hart Bay but uh, doing a good debut as well we may have a couple of novices in the top three of both the men's and women's race here today I think Nina's face is not sending a good message like you said Ross there's something happening on the thighs because of the road but he, she's looking forward, Donovan. She want to finish this race. Yeah, definitely. That's that's very clear that she an ongemak in in an pain is. But here is 56 kilometers, and on my way to say that a hard way to go hard to go. And this what we spread from um, rechter on the rechter geestelijk een gesteldheid te eten. She is bezig om vast te bij. And that is amper by the end point. She is a voorsprong. So all that she must do is fast bij. But it's clear that she will cramp. In a, in a 56k race like this one, there, people must really appreciate there are so many things that can go wrong. You have to get absolutely everything right on the day. The pacing, the hydration, the energy requirements, making sure that you don't run out of, uh, out of energy on the, over the course of the race. And, and what we're seeing with uh, Podnevis Nova at the moment is, is one of those things. It's just those little muscle fatigues that start to cause the cramps. She's 55k's through this race, and she is probably now, she can hear the finish line. And she's going to improve on fifth place that she achieved last year. This is the little last climb that comes in the final kilometers. There you can see the off-ramp to UCT, which she will shortly take. Drops down steeply, and then the relief of the grass at UCT awaits. Donovan, I think at, at this stage for anybody, one million rand is never important. It's not important. 
Ja, t, uh, vandaag was het al, uh, ik denk al van het begin met die wind, was het al klaar uitgemaakt de zaak dat um, geen van die, van die dames atleten die marathon record zou kunnen hardloop nie. Alles moet 236, 235 tegen die marathon meer hardloop en ook rondom a, a 50 kilometer in 308 hardloop wat de wereldrecord was. Wat heel onmondelijk was en wat ons hier gezien het hier vandaag niet, is hoe hard zij moest hardloop om die voorsprong te gaan, te gaan opmaak en natuurlijk um, zij is um, minder een kilometer weg om uh, twee oceanen marathon te and she keeps looking behind her she's obviously not receiving any splits because we can assure her that the gap is now large enough that she needn't look behind her anymore and she's now approaching the finish she'll soon veer off to the left hand side then she'll drop down that steep little descent and i expect that this will take a little bit out of her if you watch her face and then she'll be welcomed to the finish by the huge crowds that await here at uct this is the concrete section she's shortly about to drop down She's going to improve on her PB at this race, which currently stands at 3.43. She's going to improve on her best finish, which currently is a fifth place, which she's achieved twice. And this is going to be another Russian win, Donovan, at the Two Oceans Ultramarathon. Here's this steep little descent where we saw in Korka pull up. A little bit lame. You can see the grimace on her face. It's like the legs are exploding, a boom every time she lands. But she's made it down, and the finish line now. Next stop for Podnebus Nova. Ja, hier is een gras oomlik. Um, dit is die eerste keer wat sy op die gras kom en dit is een groot oomlik om in te hart by twee oceane en om as wenner gekroon te wees na dat jy een paar keer probeer het. Sy gaan vinnig raad loop as wat sy ooit gehaard loop het. En hier verwelkom um, twee oceane in Kapstad, die nieuwe wenner, uh, nog een ris wat vir ons wees dat internationaal word hierdie wetloop gedomineer die Russische vrouwe Nina Podnaskaya wat hier vandaag die winner gaan wees van twee oceanen marathon. Nee, dat ligt al heel lang aan Mata Two Oceans Marathon. Je naam Nina Me ligt al aan Pelinelli Kaslimo. Zat 2011. Moeten we jullie aan kamer gaan? Maar 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 and a victory in the 2014 Two Oceans Ultra Marathon there. Wilson Kipsang gives her the, the towel. Nick Bester there to welcome her to the finish line. A fantastic performance. Testament, Donovan, to managing your race well. We saw De Bellu went out fast, opened up a three-minute lead, but the patience, the tortoise against the hare, has today won the race with a well-managed, well-controlled, patient effort. Ross, that gebeur year na year. Die een wat wacht is die een wat uiteindelijk in ultramarathone die beste vaar op die dag. Sansa ni mbwa tao vuna ure. Jalo kwa haja le chenga rile rabona bantu ba late lana. Ibe na ba sansa ni mbalo kwa ba rutsa na ba nuga liyeva. Unza le chenga liyena yanzing ali lisakuri la hai shenta eki na sere mushebila jalo ure. Ibe na na kwa hai itasi ibe kai. Because it was one one minute forty five seconds. Do you think it's more than that now? The the, the gap that was between the, the leader and the second place. Uh, I think I think since the top of Chapman's Peak, which is with about twenty one kilometers to go, I think that gap first came down and then it got bigger and bigger and bigger. And I think. De Bellu has run a gutsy run, make no mistake, to, to go out and take the race to the rest of the field as she did on your debut. That's, that takes some serious courage. But unfortunately, she's paid a little bit, but is still hung in there to the point where we expect to see her. And there we see her. She is now approaching UCT for a second place on her debut, just as Hendrik Romala achieved on the men's side. Yeah, she said, I have a good rhythm in the good rhythm. She has a lot of good things on the path. As we look at the first poging of the two oceans, and the second place of the two oceans. She has a lot of good things on the path. She has a lot of good things on the path. Lebi lola hai lelo ho lo kibu ajole kena shita ye debelu ye ugamu lebi lezi ni nani murusa ni akana ngasa ya sha ngajole chena yanzi ngasete ni namrau kilo ngore kilo na la Paris Paris Marathon la 2008 moja ngai lenga sha ala hapa ajole kadi horat e pedi limitu tuzi mashuma pedi limitu tuzi lezi kuo wa kena Ross she's approaching. We just saw at the top of the screen as debelu started the descent into UCT we saw Elena Nagalieva in third place and so the gap between second and third is not large but i think the belu has run a gutsy enough race that she will probably finish this she's about to hit the grass at uct she'll be welcomed as as was partner was by the large crowds 
and that should pull her through. We should be able to see Nagalieva in the back of shot. Unfortunately, we're just going to be obscured by the, the fence and the screening there. But you'll see Nagalieva chasing Debelu down this home straight. But it's going to be an Ethiopian second place. I think I stand corrected, but first time an Ethiopian has come in the top 10 on the women's side also. Ja, beslist Ross. En as ons hier kyk, um, sy het een goeie ritme, daar is geen manier wat die Rissa gaan in haar loopie. Sy het wel verdiende tweede plek hier vandag. Um, sy sal leer uit hierdie ervaring en volgende jaar een bykie meer verzichtiger haar loopie en dalkie wenner wees. Yeah, hopefully she decides to come back because she's certainly shown she's got the credentials and the ability to run this route and the guts. I think that's what this, this race has been about today for Debelu. And she's also not finished the way we thought she would be because we were actually looking at the Constantia route that she, after that she would be finished. But here she is. Yeah, the lady has said that it's long she had to go wrong, but she had to go wrong. But there is no time to go the rest that now is after her in the 3.43. Fantastic time for the first time. And she looks good. So that's three and a half minutes between the Russian athlete who won the race, Podnebis Nova, and Debelu in second. And that's a three-minute gap that was opened entirely in the final 10 kilometers, which shows you just how much time can be lost or gained when you manage a race correctly. Here's Nagalieva, no stranger to South African viewers, no stranger to the podium, perhaps a stranger to finishing third, because we're so accustomed to seeing this athlete winning the race. Today was not her day. I'm sure she'll be back at Comrades. Ja, maar Ross, het wat duidelijk het uh, nodig het vir die wetloop is dat ander atlete ook beginne domineer en uh, ons is so gewoond geraak aan die twee Russische tweeling dat uh, dit algemeen was dat ons gedink het hulle so wen. Vandag was het anders, het was een ander Rus en dan een uh, Ethiopische vrou tweede plek. Ho hang han, tafata na kwa hai haka lo, jena Elena Nogoleva, jang kilenjo la maimua ya burraro. Les limon se fitilenga 2013, wilan nang kao na maimua na a burraro. Kan na koyo na ena, ya di horan se etaro mitu tue mi. Not, 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 not good time or improved at all. It's the same time with Elena, same as last year. Yeah, Elena's time today was similar to what it was previously. Here we see Mamarella Chorka, who's going to finish fourth. A good effort once again from her. Mamarella Chorka had constant begin haar to pour you after a few years. We can clearly see she is top five. Um, elke jaar en uh, een van die daar moendlik sal sy a geleentheid kry om eerst oor die lijn te gaan. Yeah, I mean an amazingly consistent sequence from Chalker. She was third in 2011, fourth in 2012, fourth in 2013. She will be unfortunately fourth again today but certainly an athlete you can bank on to finish among the top five of the women's race based on what you've seen in previous years. So another solid performance for Chalker. Previously she's run 342, 48 and 44 and today she's going to finish in about 3.46. Good effort from the athlete from Lesotho. And comparing to all those three past years, she looks more fresher because usually when she approaches the finish, her muscles will tell that I'm not, I'm not, I can't push anymore, try to do something. Sometimes she will come crawling, but this year she still looks okay. It means her training was, went well for, 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 this, for this marathon. En ernstige lady gaan Mama Rolla Chokka begin het dink aan een langer afstand en soos ons weet is Comrades in Zuid-Afrika wel bekend ook een groot aansporing vir atlete en vandag het sy weer bewys dat sy constant kan hardloop, sy is top, top 5 atleet, sy vierde is haar hoogste plek in, in, in twee oceane voorheen en 346, fantastisch, ek haal my hoed vir haar af. How like all our Simons and I even now we do it to see the Juan and I'm Amrala Choco, Tahona, Horace, Simons and I will uncle Bilola, La Pita Mariswek half marathon, Moting, Ilinga, so my monga Pili, Alor, Unasa Matia, Mang Amararo, and Inga Lukisa, Horea Tafite, Nebilon Lena, Lani Lazulan district in El Dikilometer, Tamas Mama Sano Lumetu, it's let's in Jolo Camona, Moholo Dumbe half marathon, Moting Lena, Ilinga, Pumanela Jolo, my mo, a Pili, Chair on Ashley, I took his seat, Pagansa, Nebilon Lana, two oceans, La 2014. We've got uh, Nina Podnevisnova, the woman's winner, who is going to be interviewed by Ian Laxton down at the finish line now. Well, with me today is the winner of the Two Oceans Marathon this year, Nina Podnevisnova. We have a translator with us. We're going to do our best here. I just want to know, how did the race go? Чувствую себя отлично. Я думаю, так чувствуют все победители марафона, тем более два океана. She said, "Oh, everybody are running today perfectly, but she she ran well and tried to win. But 
she before asked us, uh, she not ro looking for the record. She just running. You beat Elena Nogalieva. She's won the race. Was that a surprise that you were in front by yourself? Io te pabidiva Elena, a no kak ti dla ciebie i to novina ili ti skazała, što dla ciebie kak čustvuješ after, kak ti pabidiva Elena sića. В этом году я специально готовилась Дума океаном. Я готовилась 4 месяца и была готова на победу и настраивалась только на победу. Не, он спрашивал тебя, как ты победила Лену для тебя, то новость. Конечно, девчонки очень сильные, но в этом году я прошла очень большую подготовку и была готова к тому, чтобы девчонок победить. Last four months she 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 prepared for the winning and a lot of running, a lot of preparation, and she was ready to win today. Tell her well done from the whole of South Africa. All the best. Again, для тебя всего хорошего. Out from South Africa, all the best for you. Speak English. Try. Small speak English. Спасибо. Thank you. South Africa. Next year, тоже марафон. Победи же веку. Будем готовиться, будем надеяться. She she say maybe she have um, the, the knows probably next year he will be winning and uh, going for the record. Thank you very much. That was Nina Podnevisnova, and back to commentary. We don't know if he, she, she'll be able, because remember last year she took position, position 11 on, on, on this marathon. We, we're, still, we're still looking who will take the position five, as we were actually thinking that Polina is the one who's taking position five, and uh, Olesia is nowhere to be found. Yeah, Olesia, of course, apparently suffering from a little bit of flu ahead of this race, so perhaps not surprising that she is she is not here. But this this athlete here is uh, Helen Polina and Jaya, I believe. Yeah, she'll be our first South African woman home in fifth position, so... She, she will have had a, come, a good run. She's come through from the field. She hasn't featured in any of the um, crossovers to the top athletes before. So big effort from Pauline and Jaya, 36 years old. She's shown a very consistent improvement over the last few years. 28th in 2010, improved to 14th in 2011, 10th in 2012. Last year, not as good. She didn't finish. But today, fifth place and an excellent run to be the first South African home. And then here we see Alessia Nogalieva, the other half of the Nogalieva twins, Helen, who, as you mentioned earlier in commentary, not perhaps at her best today health-wise, but has still shown her credentials by hanging in there to come a credible sixth place. Yeah, and I mean, uh, a, a sub four hour marathon in the, or sub four hours at Two Oceans is a very good time. And I think it shows what a talented athlete the Nugalieva sisters are to be feeling not that great. And she's still coming in in about three, it'll be about 3.52 when she crosses the finish line. Yeah, and, and last year, of course, as well, they, 3.54 was the Alessia's time last year, and she finished actually in 11th outside the medal. So I think she'll probably be quite satisfied with that performance because even that performance last year was still a springboard to go on and come top two at Comrades. And so I think they will still have their eyes on that particular goal later this year. But you can see that this has taken a lot out of her. She doesn't look particularly happy right now. <laughs>
Why not? I'm proud of South Africa. I'm voting for my community. You must vote, Blue. I'm on would vote. I'm on would vote for Ilan. Come here, let's vote. It's my duty to this great country. I'm going to vote because it's the least I can do. Because I know my vote counts. This is my country, it's my future, and that's why I'm going to vote. IEC. I vote South Africa. Pauline Anjay, I can Wabutsilela, <laughs> Yes. Well, I've got the second place finisher with me, Shatai Gumetu from Ethiopia, together with a translator. This is her first run. I want to know how hard she found the race today. Was it tough? We did run, then the bar again. Sure, I'm a jammer, as you know, but I'm tough. No way, the Kalan bar. Manet, dag, yo, dag esulone ni le le record selirk. Yo, six kilometers seder se yo tenish. Dag esulwa zabrin tough esulone yo le tenish kanas. Okay. Uh, uh, my point is not to win, to go for record. That's what I did. And I know there will be sacrifice on the end. Uh, anyway, uh, the last yields they make me a little bit tired. And that's, uh, I'm happy for that. How did she feel when the leader came past? Because she was leading and then the lady from Russia came past. Uh, okay. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, when she came in and passed me, I didn't see her uh, when she's closer to me, uh, but uh, there is nothing I can do on that when she passed and then it's passed because I know someone coming at the back slowly and pass me and that's the target. The target, I am focusing on my target and then I lose my target and that's it. Now, I can see your feet are a big mess. They really look very, very sore. What happened to your feet and your toes? Uh, yeah. uh, in fact, it's my leg that make me to slow down because it was bleeding and uh, blaster. There's a lot of blasters on my leg. Uh, it's, it, I think it is because of the downhills, she said. Tello, thank you very much, and we'll see you next year. Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, back to the uh, pictures of the 2014 Two Oceans Marathon. The next athlete coming through, three hours, 56 minutes, the seventh place. Helen, another East African, Ethiopian in the uh, colors of uh, Netbank. Yeah, we saw this athlete, uh, Kakisa, I think it is, that she, she went out hard with her... Um, the, the lady who we've just seen interview, Shatire, uh, wrote, ran a brave race. We chatted to them yesterday. They were coming in here. They wanted to, to take the money. They wanted to break the record. That didn't happen today, but they've both, they've both performed well. They've got silver medals and uh, will pick up some consolation money in the prizes. Well, three hours, 56 minutes just shows you how tough this uh, race was today when uh, last year... Helen 351 was the 10th uh, place finisher in the women's race. Helen, you've been here, you've done it, you've won it. What was your um, thing of the women's race today? It's been interesting, and I think even in the, with the men's race, that incentive for the million rand purse if you broke the record just put another dimension on the race, and I think it actually mentally impacted on the athletes. It was always in the back of the mind maybe if I could if everything went right today maybe I could but in previous discussions I don't believe any athletes had the credentials to really really go out and race for that record today you had to be in such fine marathon con shape as a female you had to be able to run a 236 and some more and likewise the men and I don't really know if any of these 
athletes that would like to have done that were in, in the right condition, in the right shape to break that record. Well, this is not something you see every day. Running a silver medal in the under four hours is a really hard achievement, but doing it as Batman, as we see Nick De Beer there from the New Balance Batman Club doing it, that's a really, really great run. A the silver medal in a Batman too. suit. That's a superhero indeed. Those are the characters that we usually see on our marathons or when her marathons happens. With, we, 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 uh, we just passed three hours, 57 minutes. And Helen, after seeing the, uh, the bulla's feet, you, 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 you ask yourself what went through her just pushing after that pain. Well, she's a tough competitor. She's a seasoned campaigner. She's run extensively overseas. She's a 226 marathoner, so I think she really knows what pain is all about and can push herself. And that's, that's just one of the things that happens when you are an athlete. Sometimes you just forget about your toes or something's bleeding and you, and you just keep on running. You don't let little things irritate you like that. But I think one of the interesting things with today's race is that we have had had two Ethiopians, we've had two Russians, um, we've had South Africans coming in, so we've had a really truly international field in the women's marathon. I think that the word's going to get out there that there's big money to be made at the Two Oceans Marathon. They're going to retain keeping that million rand record incentive, and we will start to see more top marathon runners coming, doing a little bit more and possibly having a closer go at that, those records. Yeah, the eighth place finisher running next to uh, Ludwig Mamabolo, the uh, 2012 comrades winner. That's in Tombe Sintu Mfunzi. Helen, she's going to miss the silver medal cutoff, but uh, consolation of still getting a gold for finishing in the top 10 for women. Yeah, it's quite amazing that we haven't, uh, we're not going to see 10 ladies get uh, silver medals. That has not happened in a long time. And I don't know, I don't know if the, there's a bit of a wind, but we've had far worse conditions. So it's just interesting how every year you get the time to slow or fast. It's just the way of the race. Well, there's the signal of the gun. This uh, gentleman here, the uh, last official uh, silver medal athlete from the Bonneville Club, and a uh, really, really tough uh, finish to, to run under four hours, Helen. That's uh, averaging around 4.17, 4.18 per K. You have to go through the marathon mark in under three hours and uh, keep it going. Yeah, it's a good athletic challenge and uh, one that many people try, but yes, you do have to have run a sub three hour marathon to really feel quite comfortable at getting a silver medal here. Lodric Mamabolo, Kyo Liena, Ashile, Afita, Le House, Hona, Leona, Cadoff, Tine, Rego, who puts a tetra at Musanga Kajan with Kilometer and Tema, Shumama Bedi, Mosulumong, Serenza, Hala, Motem, Robin, Stephen, Lissiko, Mokoka, Anka Mamahai, Apil, Camera Hora, Limitsu, Mine, Mamonga Bedi, Kisuel, Moni, Mamonga Braro, Gisbaba, Ramzazi, Mamonga Buneki, Benedict, Moying, Asefa, Negewo, K, Mamabosano, Abusilla, Kosi Totani, Mamonga Busupa, Ki William, Captain, Abrobedi, Anthony, Kodawani, Abro. Yeah, brilliant performance there we saw earlier in the half marathon with the nine South African men in the top ten. A little bit different in the uh, half marathon, but a brilliant run there by Diana Lebo Palula taking the victory from an a Brilliant time as well, 74 minutes, a PB for, for Lebo and uh, Ethiopia coming there in third. But uh, Mapaseka Makanya also making her half marathon uh, expertise felt today. And uh, really, Helen, a very fast women's race, 78-51, 10th position. It is, and if we compare the 56 with the 21 and the woman, the women's 21 times are actually faster than they have been. The top 10 are faster than they have been in previous years, unlike the 56K race. As, as a third time runner for two oceans and winning this race helen how how do you feel or how what does that make you well 
watching it, I'm pleased I'm sitting here. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, it's interesting just to see the, the, the quality of the woman coming through, particularly in the 21-kilometer race. And I think we, a lot of people sit here and they're quite a little bit critical about um, the standard of running. But I think with the caliber of the performances that we saw in the um, 21, it augurs well for our long-distance runner. Those girls coming off good track backgrounds, running good 10Ks, 21s, they stay in that space, they will produce the good marathons in a few years' time. Well, here we have the ninth place woman coming through, another Ethiopian, Alemsahe Kakisa, who's actually based herself in South Africa and been cleaning up up in the uh, Johannesburg region, winning both the uh, Johnson Crane Marathon and Pick and Pay Marathon, if I'm not mistaken. So a good performance by her. She uh, had earlier in the month run the Nongoma Zululand Ultra 56K, where she finished fourth. So perhaps Helen a little bit too much over racing, and uh, she's also down to run comrades later this, this year. So a lot of over racing, but uh, the East Africans are now moving it up into the ultras. Well, it was... It be good to see and I think it'd be interesting to see how she performs over the comrades distance but yesterday we were discussing things with Renee Karma and how she, if she was tempted to not run the 21 and run the 56 because she's in 229 sub 230 marathon shape at the moment and it was actually good to hear her say that it would be irresponsible of her to run the 56 because she was focusing on trying to train and qualify for the Olympic marathon and as much as I love watching the two oceans and seeing the athletes run it I will get a lot of pleasure watching Renee stick and focus on running the Olympic marathon and in the end it was good she's being as she said she's being a responsible athlete of course especially with the Olympics coming in and the Commonwealth you don't want to damage yourself or break bring some in unnecessary injuries with running so so um, too much uh, kilos but Renee Mapaseka Palula they're all becoming they, they're improving in every race that they run very much so and I think it as we've said earlier once again in the 80s the early 90s when some good performances were um, produced over the 56 those athletes could not go and compete in the Olympics and the Commonwealth Games like the younger people today so it's good that they're focusing on it they can come back and run these ultras when they've achieved the best that they can do at the real global events we can see it's a really tough day today. The athlete in the Bedford View uh, colors, Samuel Bolo, he's a top 20 two oceans finisher. So today you can see with all those uh, banners with the wind hectically blowing them, it's been tough out there and uh, a lot of the runners have suffered today. But hats off for finishing. Everybody has done their bit. By the way, we're going to talk about the fact that 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 we're going to talk about I think this is the 10th uh, athlete now, so Summer Kalisa Moyo clinching the final gold and Helen, she's run the 3.47 here, if I'm not mistaken, her best time. So today, really showing how tough those conditions were, way over four hours. Well, she's picked up her fifth gold, it's her fifth gold at Two Oceans, and uh, yeah, she's broken 3.50 on this race before, so it has been a very, very unusual Two Oceans as far as the results go with the woman. We have not had... Uh, the tenth gold medal out of the silver, or the four-hour cutoff for many a year. And we still haven't seen any uh, visuals of uh, last year's uh, winner, Tabita Tatsa, a uh, fellow countrywoman of Summer Kaliso. So it be interesting to see where she is, and hopefully she can finish today. But hats off for Summer Kaliso in these tough conditions for just sticking it there and uh, hanging in for, for clinching the final gold medal for tenth. 2012, gold medal, then 10th woman to finish the ultra race, which is 56 Ks today. Well, we can hear quite a bit of... Um shouting and encouragement in the in the background and not only is it for uh, Samuel 
Kaliso Moyo, but uh, Zola Bud is fast approaching the finish, and that's it's quite a great performance for Zola because nobody really was expecting her to sort of come near the four hour mark, and she's actually just missed out on a gold medal. Definitely, Helen, with Summer Kaliso finishing 10th. There we can see Zola in the uh, white and orange vest just in the background. A brilliant performance by her and a really good run going into Comrades where she'll be running later this month. But this is a really great run. There's, as we see, Zola famous for running barefoot. Uh, today she does have her running shoes on, but a great performance. Unfortunately, 11th place today. Yeah, I think, I think she's going to be thrilled. She actually looks very comfortable. And... Um, Maybe starting to get back some of the fantastic form that she's had in her earlier years. She's a talent. She's got really very good pedigree. So wait and see what will happen next year. Let's go to Ed break. Another highlight is the trail running event starting on the hallowed steps of the University of Cape Town. The 22 kilometer and 10 kilometer routes take in some of the trails around the iconic Table Mountain whilst looking down on the mother city below. At Wonga.com, we're 100% transparent. Choose any amount from 100 to 2,500 Rand, decide when to pay it back, and we'll show you how much it costs, all before you apply. Visit Wonga.com and see with your own eyes. <gasps> they do work. X-ray glasses. More like X-ray tech glasses. Wonga.com. Fast little loans. Where does inspiration take flight? Where do dreams become reality? where every day spent takes you a step closer to your destiny. And dreamers turn to doers. Nelson Mandela Metropolitan University for tomorrow. Could there be a better way to retire? For the neighbors are friendly, the sun is my alarm clock. Old Mutual let me experience what my dream retirement would look like. Owning my own game lodge. 40 years before it happens. Everybody has dreams. Let us help you plan for yours from today. pictures of the 2014 Old Mutual Two Oceans Marathon, the beautiful shot there of the UCT campus and uh, at the finish grounds here in the UCT grounds. We had a really, really great race uh, today, Dicky Lady, with uh, Lebenia and Corker taking the men's race uh, in the colors of Max Delete and in the colors of Netbank in the women's race, Nina Potnevsnova from Russia. Great victories by the two athletes. Not forgetting the surprises, Hendrik Ramala surprising many of us so that uh, she, 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 he actually came on top 10, second position for yes. that meta. And with girls, Shitai Debelu taking second position as well after doing the ultra marathon for the first time with this time. But with all surprises that happened, we enjoyed the race. Definitely. We <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Sick Lady. Yes, it is a beautifully warm day here in the Western Cape. But our studio is right on this finish line straight here at the UCT grounds. And inside the studio, I have sports scientist, a man who's also a runner, Ross Tucker. You've been on the commentary team. Now, there was a lot of talk. One million rand up for grabs for anybody that could break the course record in both the men's race and the women's race. It it attracted a lot of Ethiopians, a lot of Kenyans, many people actually saying, that's what I'm going for. I'm going for that one million rand. It attracted a great field, but we didn't see anybody get close. No, the, the carrot was dangled, but no one nibbled it. And, and in fact, not from the start, they weren't on it. A 10K, not a 20, not a 40, not at the finish line. And I think there were two things really. The one is the wind. You can see probably just behind us, this is the finish straight. You can see how these banners are being tugged. And, that would have been a headwind from the start for those runners. So I think that was part of it. And then the temperature. And, it, you know, we look out and we see blue sky. We think, what a lovely day. Well, if you're running an ultramarathon at that pace, it's not, it's not ideal. And it probably needed to be a few degrees cooler and without the sun. And then maybe it would have been in play. So we saw some gutsy attempts, but no one, no one was able to challenge that record. And in the end, we got two tactical races, which were really very interesting. Also, the fact that we had in the women's race, especially something that we don't often see, is that is the times of the ladies being really slow. Yeah. Especially of the rest of the field. Right, and so with the exception of the Ethiopian Debelu, she took the race hard and she ran a really gutsy race. Everyone else seemed to hold back, and in the end, Debelu unfortunately paid, and we saw Podnevers Nova come through and win. But from there onwards, I mean, the, I think you said earlier that only the top eight women broke that four hour barrier, and that's unusual. And I think testament to the sun and the temperature, it just wasn't the ideal day today. Wonderful day to be a tourist, not a great day to be an ultramarathon runner. Well, in contrast, the half marathon was run for the elite men, mainly in the dark, so they enjoyed really cool temperatures. So let's take a look at what happened in the half marathon. This is how the results panned out. Stephen McCorker winning his third half marathon, albeit his slowest time as well, for a win. Yeah, and, and having run the half marathon nowhere near that level, I can say that the, that the conditions were good. We didn't have the wind. I think the half marathon race is largely sheltered, whereas the ultra is a little bit more exposed. But I think McCorker today did what was necessary. He won it in the end, 13 seconds is a comfortable margin. Yeah. And he's obviously the pedigreed man in the field, certainly the best South African runner that we have at this stage. So an expected one, I think, for McCorker. All right. Who else would you pick out there that had a really good performance in the half marathon? Well, there's a few young athletes who are, who are potentials for the future. William Captain down in seventh when I was one of the athletes that was scouted by Lana Mayer's program. So he's someone perhaps to look at in the future. The rest, I mean, a two-minute gap between first and tenth, it's congested, but I think McCorker, the class of the field. All right, and it was a class field when it comes to the women's race. And Lebo Palula, I don't think many people put their money behind her to take it when everybody was backing Renee Kalma and then saying that Mapaseka Makanya was actually the dark horse. Well, Palula's a name that most people who follow running know, but she's also a name on the rise. She won these women's 10K races earlier this year. Uh, I was told earlier that she's got a new coach, and so that seems to be paying off for her. And Renee Kalma is a name who is synonymous with this race. She's won it so many times, she's always there and thereabouts. But today, it was Palula's day, and so a good victory for Palula. All right, and uh, Lebo Palula also setting a personal best and taking her very first victory here at uh, the Two Oceans Half Marathon. There was also a, a debut win for the winner in the women's ultra race. Nina Podnebisnova will be coming back to you after the short break with the results of the men's and women's race in the 56-kilometer event. The following party election broadcast is brought to you in terms of the ICASA regulations governing the election period. The views expressed in this party election broadcast are those of the political party and not those of the SABC. A lot has changed since 1994. 20 years after democracy, I'm proud. I'm grateful to be part of that change, you know. Kaslam has changed infrastructure, schools. UK, I'm a park, housing, and your name was the petty ama tablet eski. A bad man of Kurumati, like nothing has changed. I just look around me and I see impilo I find you know. 
is what this country is all about. You know, we overcame apartheid, so we can overcome anything. One reason why I will vote for the ANC is they've delivered. I mean, they've given me the Soweto that I've always dreamed of. I'm a young black businessman. I run a concept store in the middle of Soweto. I will vote for the ANC. With all they've done so far, imagine what they will do in the future. This party election broadcast was brought to you in terms of the ICASA regulations governing the election period. The views expressed in this party election broadcast are those of the political party and not those of the SABC. Welcome back to our live broadcast of the Two Oceans Marathon. This is what happened in the Altro, 56 kilometers. Lavinia and Corker taking his very first win in three hours, nine minutes, 52. And then an absolutely fantastic run from South Africa's very own Henrik Romale. It was his first Two Oceans, his first Ultra, and he comes in second place in three hours, 11 minutes. A great run from him. Let's take a look at what happened in the women's race. There was also a debut win here at the Two Oceans for a Russian, Nina Podnebisnova, also running a personal best here at this race. She's ended fifth two previous years, and this year she finally takes the win. The first South African coming in fifth place, Paulina Njea. Let's cross over now to Ian Laxon, who is standing by to take us through the formalities of the prize giving. Well, we're ready now for the uh, mini prize giving in the men, the top three men. The final uh, proper prize giving will happen a little bit later. But uh, over on my right, we have uh, Mr. Ralph Mopita of uh, Old Mutual is going to be handing out the medals. Let's go straight to third place. And uh, from the Toyota Club running for Lesotho, his time today, three hours and 12 minutes. Well done to Masilo Machiani, third place. And he gets a special, uh, beautiful gold medal in that Africa shape in the second place. The top South African, the first veteran, a man has been around running for a long time. Delighted to see him finishing. Colors of Nedbank, 3 hours 11.33. Big welcome to Hendrik Ramala. And everybody, our winner today, a brilliant run, his first win in the old Mutual Two Oceans Marathon, another runner from Lesotho, also in the Max Delete International Running Colours, three hours, nine minutes and 52. The winner today, La Peña Nkoka. So those are our top three men across the line today. There will be a big prize giving later on. From now, it's back to the studio. All right, thank you very much to Ian Lax. And still in studio, I've got Ross Tucker. And I'd like to know, Ross, who would you say has been the standout performer in both of today's races, the ultra as well as the half? Well, you never want to back against the winner. And I was so impressed by him because it's unusual to attack on the descent. And that's exactly what he did. We had three men get to the top of Constantia Neck. And then he put the hammer down. And within the next five kilometers, that, that lead was over a minute. And he held it really well to the finish. So, and Corker was exceptional today. But it's so important for us to have a guy like Hendrik Romala do well at this race. And when he, when he hit the grass here at UCT, the crowd responded to him because they know the man. They know, he's an iconic name in South African running. And for him to be here coming second is so important for our young athletes to say, that's what we need to emulate. It's absolutely vital. So he's the best performance for the, for the South African population. But Nkorka gets the hat for tip for the best run today. Yeah, Labinia and Nkorka, what a fantastic run from him. And you guys also were saying, oh, perhaps he's actually pushed a little too early. And he certainly didn't. Debelu, on the other hand, may have pushed a little bit early. Or maybe she gave it too much because she was really going for the record by her own admittance. That, that was gutsy. To be three minutes ahead at Chapman's Peak means that she was really going hard. And... She paid for it because in the end she was three minutes down. So there was a six-minute swing between the top of Chapman's and the finish, which is only 21 kilometers. So, but she hung on, and I think that's what's really important. So we had two novices. Where Hendrik ran a patient race, she ran an aggressive race. Both of them can be equally proud. But so can Podman Nevers Nova because that was a patient run. She showed her experience in her class, and so well done to her. All right, well, we were chatting a little bit about uh, the ultra winners and uh, those performers in the event over 56 kilometers. Time now to cross back to Ian Laxon to go through the formalities of the women's prize giving. 
Well, here we are with a mini prize giving for the first three women across the line in the 2014 Old Mutual Two Oceans Marathon. Once again, Ralph Mapita to hand out the medals. In the third place, adding to her substantial collection of gold medals here in the Old Mutual Two Oceans Marathon from Russia and the Toyota Club, running three hours 43.59, Elena Nagalieva. And now a novice this year, she had a fantastic run. She led the race for a long way, but had to sacrifice first place, ended up in second place in the Nedbank International team from Ethiopia in two, three hours, 43.37, Shitai Dabelu. And to our audience, we've had gold medals from her before, but never a win. It is yet another Russian winner, also in the Nedbank International Colors, 3 hours 40.07, the winner of the Old Mutual Two Oceans Marathon 2014 in the ladies' division, Nina Podnevisnova. Big smile from Nina. She was absolutely delighted to win. That is a fantastic performance. Nina, Shitai, and Elena, our first three women, back to Valen Kirtley. Thank you very much, Ian. Ross Hack is still here in the studio. Ross, do you think in the next couple of years, maybe two, three years, we will be able to see somebody break that course record? It has been standing since the late 80s in both the men's and women's race. I hope so. I think it'll take a generation or two now that this incentive exists. And we've seen for the first time the Ethiopians are here, the Kenyans are here. I hope in the future we get perhaps even more pedigreed athletes in, in, from those countries and our athletes respond because I think that's really important. Is what we don't want is for the prize money to cause this influx of foreigners who then win the money and leave. What we want is the South African athletes to respond and say, three hours and two minutes, that's the target. Let's work towards that. I think it's possible, but it needs a few things to change first. Uh, a little earlier on, one of the, uh, one of the um, viewers on Twitter was actually saying, I saw those two course record runs in my lifetime. I hope I'll get to see it again. And something that we've also been running on the show, as much as we've asked for you to tweet Omtom 2014 and Instagram, we've also asked you to get involved in our competition. And we have our winners fantastic prize for them coming to courtesy of Adidas. The winners, there they are, their names coming to you on the screen. Jane Wright, Yvette Perry, Eugene Victor, Akona Divoashi. The running shoes winners. So those were the winners of the watches. These are those that are going to be winning the shoes. Mokhali Moleka, Edwin Basson, Patrick Chauke, Belia Scott, Helene Hendricks. Congratulations to all of our prize winners winning those wonderful hampers from Adidas. Really great from them to be putting up those kind of prizes for our winners. Those winners will be contacted by Adidas and SABC Sport to get your prizes to you. Something else that Adidas did through their sponsorship was bring Wilson Kipsang and what a reception he got here, Ross. Yeah, but what, a, what a lovely man, so humble, having just come off winning London, breaking a world record last year in October, but the most exceptional, just genuine guy who I think appreciates exactly what every single person is doing in this race. And, and when you see that and when you see the camaraderie that the running community have, when the world record holder is as humble as the guy finishing in seven hours, it's just a wonderful testament to our sport. Absolutely. He really is a fantastic advert. And also proud to say that he's from Africa, from the continent that yeah. we are the south of. You know, I, something that I find so amazing about um, Wilson and his record, and something that's kind of become a little bit of a catchphrase today is patience. When it comes to running distance, yeah. you have to have patience and you have to know what you are capable of. Absolutely. 56k, 42, even 21. If you get it wrong, the, you always say in physiology, the interest payments are steep. And if you spend early, you pay later a lot more. And that's what today showed. I mean, we saw it in, in the women's race as well. We, when we see it every year, is those who are patient and manage themselves just right. And it takes such confidence to do that because it's such a strong temptation to push early, push early, put time in the bank. 
but unfortunately it always catches up to you and and so they're right I mean patience is the name of the game and discipline patience and discipline and one thing is for sure that each and every single human being was designed to run that was the theme for this year's old mutual two oceans marathon and we have seen that in the most glorious way right here today with our winners in both the half marathon as well as the ultra marathon it's been great having you a part of our broadcast perhaps it's something that you would like to get involved with next year I'd urge you to take up the challenge Ross has done and I did my 56 it really is a worthy goal for absolutely any athlete until we meet again on the road enjoy your running and be safe goodbye simple act of running is the purest expression of movement a time to calm the mind but energize the soul catch your multi-sport magazine show sports view where we get up close and personal we travel countrywide and spend time with your favorite sporting personalities. So that's Sports View every Sunday, 12 to 12.30 at SABC2, where you belong. Hello? Suspend all disbelief. into a wonderland with Alice. Is it Alice? I believe it is. Find Alice! Stain! Find her! An adventure fraught with danger. Alice has returned to Underland. Where is she now? It's you. No, it's not! Oh, no! I... <laughs> Where is Alice? I wouldn't know. What if I take off your head? <laughs> Hold your breath for the adventure of a lifetime. Have I gone mad? You're entirely bonkers. Stay! Alice in Wonderland, Saturday, Home Theatre. Let's go.